Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Testing, testing. I think we should be good. Uh, welcome, guys. Welcome to another video. Not just any video. This is the finale of this playlist. Sort of. I mean, I've titled the, this as the finale for now. I've done this several times in the past, like with the Super Adventure Book series and stuff. It's the finale until there's updates. And then we will continue with it. Um, but for now, this is everything in the Guild Wars 2 story. You are at the beginning of the very end. And so what we're going to be playing here today <clears throat> is the second half and the final half of the most recent season, the Ice Brood Saga. Uh, the end of which, this last box here, Champions, this actually represents five, four individual releases. This is like four boxes in one. But they're a very weird kind of release, we'll get to soon. But the very last bit of Champions, the very end of the chain, is actually about a year old. Isn't it? I mean, I've actually I've put it in the thumbnail for this video. To tell you the truth, I can't remember if it's exactly a year. I think it might be like 10 months or something. Um, but it was about a year ago that this stuff happened. We've had a, a year of nothing since since this. Um, and, and here we are basically at the end of the story. The year since this all concluded, the devs have been working on an expansion. And um, we've had this uh, this big achievement going on. If you look at current events for me right now. Now, anyone playing the game and watching this in the future, you won't see this in your current events because time would have moved forwards. But if I go to general... Wait, what, where are current events? I swear, I, I've, I've de-learned how to navigate the standard UI. Have they moved things? Um, like, where is... Oh, I think it's in side stories. It's at the top of side stories. I thought it was his own tab. You see here, we've had Seasons of the Dragon. So literally, this is just replay everything. So you return to dry top, starting from season two. So expansions weren't in it. Um, the core game wasn't in it. I've played all of that on this playlist too. But it's all of the stuff, all of it. And as you progress, you get these rewards. You actually saw me get this backpack um, on like two videos ago. You saw me get this. And you see we've got green ticks on everything now, except this last one, Dragonstorm, which we'll be going through. As I play through, I'm going to get that last green tick, and it's actually going to give me a legendary amulet. So throughout this playlist, you're actually going to watch me unlock this, um, and we'll get this uh, this title. This is basically what the content has been for Guild Wars for the past year. That and a returning Living World Season 1 event, the marionette. Um, so yeah, uh, I, let's just get stuck in now. We've got a new build, new outfit, new everything, but let's just begin with the story straight away, I say. Um, so let's kick up no quarter. Uh, so what have we heard that the rest of the chart... Now, they've really hand-waved this already. But basically, the rest of the chart has heard about Bangar's, like, new legion. Um, where he's got a bunch of renegades together and a bunch from all the other high legions. He's built them all up. And, um, he's taking them to fight Jormag. And he's gonna try and cow Jormag. He's gonna threaten it with Bram's bow. And, and he wants to get the dragon on his side. And in the previous part, he actually took credit for a, a substantial kill against Drakkar. He took credit. Um, so Char really believe in him. So between this patch and the last patch, a lot of Char have started rallying to his side. Another big moment, by the way, and I love this about Bangar, and it's very, very quickly moved on from. But Bangar shot us with that bow, and it looked like we were going to die. Like, we pass out and wake up at the Eye of the North. I love that. Like, he... He's not just a bad guy that stands around chatting, blah, 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 blah. He takes a shot at us. He, like, he, we'd be down and out. But then Bram went um, wolf mode and savaged him. It's kind of interesting that there's this whole story with Bram, like, learning to use his totem and stuff. But um, what's going to happen now is the Ice Food Saga funding is going to get cut and they're going to start working on the expansion. And Bram isn't in the next expansion. As far as we know, I mean, it's not out yet, but he's not in any of the press and stuff. So, we're not going to really get to see... At least, wait, I'm not forgetting that. My Bram's not in the next one. So, we get a little bit of it, but then it'll come back again in Champions, and then it's kind of over. Anyway, the, the, the point here is, there's a war now. Suddenly. It's just going to kick off. It's going to feel like it's out of nowhere. And it's just this huge story, but here we go. Mass defections to Bangar's army have resulted in a char civil war that will destabilize the legions and thwart efforts to contain the Ice Dragon's awakening, head to Drizzlewood Coast and quell the insurgency before all is lost. Now, a really important thing about this patch is this is in COVID times, and it will be clear why uh, very soon. Oh, we get a message first? Okay, well, I, I thought I was going to get interrupted by uh, NPC dialogue there. Um, 
This had no voice acting when it first came in. Two patches had no voice acting. The devs still had everything else. They still went and worked on it, and they they worked from home, and they sorted everything out. But the voice acting came in just a little bit later. I guess the voice acting is this extra challenging thing at the end of the production or whatever. Um, but so, funnily enough, not only have I never done this on a human male, actually, one of these instances I've never done at all with voice acting. So it's going to be new for me. All right, let's read this mail. And they'll probably interrupt me, so hold on. I'll wait before I actually read it. Ridlock, got a message from Cretia. Ryland's called for a parley? Yeah, his warband's been leading Bangar's army for a while now. This war's taking too long, and Bangar's managed to throw too many bodies between us and him. Maybe Ryland will be reasonable. Give us a chance to move some of those bodies out of the line of fire. We'll see. I'm your ride. Meet me at the Eye of the North. Okay, so Kreisha had said to us, Commander, the civil war among the Char has cost us dearly, and it's costing us more every day, but we may have an opportunity to turn the tide. Ryland's proposed a parley with the Imperators and me. We can't afford to turn it down. Reach out to Ritlock, he can bring you to the front. You've got just as much at stake in this as we do. Uh, there were a couple of these other little mails that I missed as well, by the way, like Jarvi telling us that the other side of the map was open. I didn't read in the previous part. Um, but it was nothing ma major. I'm actually more gutted that I forgot to put the music on on the previous part for good chunks of the previous part. But hey, um, alright, oh, Ritlock's over here. I wonder if Aureen has some extra dialogue for us around now, but she's not standing there, so I guess not. Um, it's weird that she's flickering in and out of existence out there, because I remember her just always being there through these patches. Um, but yeah, so we have a new build. We're back to Daredevil. I did Dead Eye yesterday. We'll do Daredevil today. Ritlock, how long since you've been on the front? Yeah, not for a couple weeks. Cretia's had me doing some recon through the homelands. Better get a move on. Parleys mean politicians. I'd rather be close enough to have Kree's back. Um, and with that, I thought, yeah, some of you guys have noticed in the live chat already. I thought I'd do the fishing rods as, uh, as our staff. It's a good idea, isn't it? Because we got the floppy fish. It's a nice way to sort of end things out. Um, and we're the wandering weapon master outfit as well, by the way, which we haven't seen yet. But I think it's quite cool. And it's the right mix of, you know, we're still going to be in kind of cold areas. But we're in a battlefield now and it's a bit warmer. So I feel like this is just the right set. And I'm keeping the same cape. It's just another new color. I love how versatile this cape is. You just dye it a different color and it's a totally different vibe every time. All right. So, um, yeah, pointed ballet. Like, let's get on in there. So this is amazing because it's a Char War map, which I would have insanely high hopes for, would want an expansion around this premise. And it's taking us to Drizzlewood Coast. It's taking us to the Verdant Cascades, which is kind of a Guild Wars 1 Eye of the North area. A tiny little area of it was available in Guild Wars 1. And you could go underneath it in one of the raid wings. But generally speaking, this has been one of the most captivating, fascinating, exciting areas of Tyria I've ever wanted to go. Ever. Like dating back to Guild Wars 1, where you saw the two lakes, the Giant's Base and the Lesser Giant's Base, and you knew it was just north of Kryer. This place, and particularly the Delta, and obviously all this, there was just something so big and expansive and magical and exciting about exploring here. And now we're here. And they do add new assets and stuff around. But I, I don't... For, somehow it feels like maybe it was impossible to ever pay off. But I feel like it doesn't really pay off on what I wanted from all that wide-eyed excitement and enthusiasm and dreaminess I've had about this place for like a decade. Um, and it kind of... It, it was a really weird moment for me before when Drizzlewood came in. Where I realised this was like one of my top excitements of places to go. And now it was here, like a tiny chunk or something. And it was like, I, I, I don't know, it was like something about my excitement for Tyria and the future of exploration stuff like died or something when we got to Drizzlewood. Or ex specifically that feeling when it's delivered in Living World. And I don't know, I'd have to really sit down and think and talk for a long time about and, and anal analyze why Living World doesn't captivate, captivate me with the expansions. But it, I've been getting that vague, vague sensation for a long time. And um, so I've got to be honest, guys, these patches, I love the first half of the Iceman Saga. I really don't like a lot of, of this half. Um, and the whole Drizzlewood Coast exploration thing is one of them. I hate to start this video on a bit of a downer, a bit of a bummer, but that's honestly how I felt. Um, I don't think I was very impacted by the no voice acting. I think that was fine. But the characterization, 
the, a sudden how sudden and enormous the war was, and the delivery of this region of the world kind of crushed me. Uh, you know, I'd want this in an expansion. You might say, well, WP can't do a whole expansion here. So, like, but something between an expansion and a Living World episode, I, I don't know. And thankfully, it's only a little chunk of it that they give us. So there's still space. There's still magic a bit. But faith that... I, I, I don't know. I don't know. They will really come out. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, um, the new expansion, End of Dragons, has really rekindled a lot of stuff in me that had kind of died away right around this episode. So the community at this point did not know about the new expansion either, by the way. So we had a patch with no voice acting. Um... That was kind of hard to buy the story stuff we're going to go through here. And there was still absolutely no sense there was ever going to be an expansion for Guild Wars 2. Even now at this point. Internally, at this point, they have okayed End of Dragons. And I believe it's shortly after this patch we will get the first teaser trailer for End of Dragons. But right around this patch on my channel... Um... I, I was doing this big announcement about moving to Elder Scrolls and kicking up other LPs and moving on from Guild Wars because, you know, making this whole thing, my career, is kind of like crazy. And I was looking at the clock and I was like, look, you've spent seven, eight years doing this. You're not going anywhere. Far. You've got to do other stuff. And Guild Wars is just kind of spinning. Um, so I made all these big plans and then literally a month after I made all these big plans and announced them to you all, they announced End of Dragons. So that's all around this era, okay? And this is about two years ago. So anyway, uh, hello Ephraim. Commander? I love Ephraim. Rock. Good to have you here. Steel Catcher arrived already, and the talk's underway. I expected to see more troops. Did you clear our base camp for the parley? Unfortunately, our alliance has been bleeding defectors day and night. Defectors? Still? Worse since you left. Steel Catcher's forces are impressive, and they've come at us with a propaganda assault too. Well, that can't be good for morale, or your forward momentum. It's not. We've lost ground as well as troops to the enemy. Where's the new front line? You're walking through it. Ryland holds both lanes? And everything in between. What's going on? Any last words? Smoder. He said they'd stop these until the outcome of the parley. Mercy! Char of all fire! What the hell? Smoter's standard operating procedure for dealing with his Iron Legion defectors. Yeah. He knows the point of this war is to save the Char, right? Apparently he's big on battlefield justice. But that's iron business. Killing him in a fair fight's one thing. They made a choice to change sides. But this... It's a waste. It's slaughter. Let's work for a swift end to this war, then. Immediately, I'm getting alarm bells here and things I don't like. You know, this is what the char are, and the, ga the game just... Okay. Well, well. Our terms are simple. Announce your surrender and proclaim your support of Bangar's campaign. You've had some luck, but the tides of war are fickle. You can't expect to keep what you've taken. Leave and live. Don't know how much plainer I can make it. To you or your packed friends. Centurion. Tribute, Steelcatcher. He's earned it. Yeah, I can see the scars. I'm here to save lives, Tribune. How many Char have died already? Then tell the Imperators to accept this all. You forget you're up against the greatest military leaders of the Legions. <sighs> Most of Iron now marches with Dominion forces under my command. Bangar's Dominion forces. The Tribune's power is but a taste of Bangar's reach. Next, an Elder Dragon. This is Bangar's war. He'll lead our people to ruin, but he can't without Rylan. Move aside so we can stop him. Take the territory and hold it. I've accomplished my mission and more. I'm offering you mercy at my own discretion. If you let Bangar wake Jormak, he will destroy us all. Be smart. Excuse us, Imperators. Is this a bad time? I offered a parlay out of respect, but it's clear your allegiances are askew. Tribune Steel. Offer rescinded. See you on the battlefield. Damn it. 
Who the hell are you? Uh, Cretia, this is Logan Thackeray. Logan, Tribune Cretia Stoneblow. This is a good moment. Great to finally meet an old friend of Redlock's. Not the time. Commander, take a seat. We need to strategize. I already did take what a seat. What are you doing here, Logan? The Queen sent us with a troop of Seraph to repay Crida's debt to the Blood Legion. Your memorable arrival aside, I speak for the Imperators when I say we are grateful to have you and Lady Casimir with us. Could you give the politicking a rest? You didn't complain when I brokered our treaty with Ebonhawk. This is a good smoder oh, moment. I do like to tell that story repeatedly. Your point? Well, hold on. I mean, that was a huge thing. It broke a thou th thousand year long war. That's a huge thing to broker that piece. I don't like how the sort of the subtext there is the devs want us to get over that side of Smoda because they're going to totally recharacterize him. So in the live chat, someone said, you know, his shoot on sight thing is consistent. I think it's consistent with all char. That's the thing. What aggravates me about that scene with char with Ritlock taking such an issue is it's like you watch him in the personal story and in the novel very comfortably talking about killing his superiors because that's how they act. That's what they do. And then, like, I get that his character might have changed after all this time, spending a lot of time with us. But, like, to act like it's some despicable thing and just all the char are wrong. And so I, I really, really can't stand the viewpoint that they take. You know, it's like what Ritlock says and what the commander says there is like an authority and what should be. And they're not an authority. And it's like the devs are trying to completely warp and change this. And they do this the whole way through Champions as well. Oh, it's the new char, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like that just makes a lame world. That just makes a less interesting setting, you know. Um, you know, what's your reward for doing all of that? For taking all of that drama and all that difference away? What's your reward for just homogenizing everything? It sucks. And I, 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 it seems completely lost on them. And they do that constantly here. But yeah, Smoder is just like... You can immediately feel that they want to, like, do different and new things with Smoder. And it's because they kind of want to make him the big bastard. The problem is they don't have the Blood Legion to be in that role now. You know, Bangar would be in that role, but now because he's on the other side of the line, who's in that role here? Now, they could have had another character that gets promoted as the true Blood Legion now that Bangar's gone, blah, 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 and he... But they don't have time for any of that, so they just dump it all into Smoda, essentially. Because they don't want to do it with Kreisha, and they don't do it, want to do it with Ephraim, and they don't want to do it with Malice. Um, so anyway, things are getting tense. This, this bit with Logan jumping in is, is pretty cool here. Uh, things are getting tense. Um, let's stay on topic. The Civil War is a smokescreen for Bangar. This is great as well. I can intervene on it. We'll never make it to Bangar if we don't regain the territory. We've got to get past Ryland's forces. Take a subtler approach. Gather intel. Find their weak spots. Ash. You move in the shadows, collecting secrets you share when you feel like it. Head on and face to face. That's how you win wars. Dominion's weakest spot is they're wrong and we're right. Um, someone says, I swear, Ritlock in the Icebreed Saga seems like another character and you don't like it. Look, there, we've been going endlessly on this discussion. I started engaging in this discussion at the end of Season 4 when they did that hideous short story that really did some weird stuff with Ritlock. And they said openly, out, when that short story came out, that it's because the voice actor thought it'd be cool to have had Ritlock be bullied and stuff and had all this. So they, they openly, you know, acknowledge that these are new ideas and stuff. And I can buy that Ritlock has changed. I can buy that Ritlock's always been an oddball. I made this point a couple of months ago in a, in a previous discussion. The thing is, they never actually show that, right? They don't show his progression. They never look it in the eye. We just have to assume the progression's happened and assume for ourselves it makes sense. And we have to... It's like we're making an excuse for the game when we say, oh, Ritlock's different and he spent so long with all these other races, so he's a different guy now. It's not like there was ever a moment in the story where they were really emphasized or looked at that in a great way. And it's very jarring when you get to the Ice Breed Saga, therefore, and it's just taken as a given. That's 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 what's actually going on there, in my opinion. Uh, decide which side to take. Um, we can be direct. Dominion can't hold the line indefinitely. We need to be smart and learn about them. Or just defer to Creature. I'm not going to defer. I'm the commander. I'm going to say, let's be direct. They can't... No, no, no. Let's, let's be smart and learn about them. We shouldn't abandon our strengths entirely, no matter our numbers. The right war machines worth 50 bodies any day. 
No matter how good your machines are, we'll never retake the beach. Not without infantry in the trenches. Then who's going to build them? Hmm? You keep shooting your defectors. So let's abandon the forest and focus on retaking the beach. Cossage says Edge of Destiny pointed out Ritlock was bullied. No, it didn't. If it did, give me the quote. I'm pretty sure Edge of Destiny did not say that. It made it clear that he was a weirdo. You know, he's alone. Just the entire context of the first scene where you meet him and he's hanging out with Logan. It, it, immediately, Ritlock's definitely strange. And he's got a weird backstory. And they hint that the Sahothin stuff is tied into that. But you get the sense that he's a weirdo. He's like jovial and jokey. He's like a proper jokester. He's not like other char. That's always been true. But the idea that he's been bullied and he's got all these weird chips on his shoulder and he views family exactly how he... Like, he actually feels like he owes anything to his kids and all that kind of stuff. And suddenly, you know, all, all the killing and brutalistic sides of the char, like, are disgusting to him. It's not like he's in the middle space, right? It's not like he can see both sides. We never even get that. He's just completely the opposite direction now. You know, and again, it's like he's being a mouthpiece. And that's what I don't really like. You give me a quote from Destiny's Edge that has that earlier, fine. But I'm pretty sure it's not in there. Uh, talk to Imperators about the battlefield conditions. I'd rather ask questions and just facilitate discussion rather than decide things. Um, do you have any other resources? Anything to give our ground forces on an edge? My legion's mostly intact. We can add our magics to Smoter's munitions. Should give an edge. Seraph regulars could easily add to iron and flame forces on the beach, right? A smaller, mobile force would use the forest terrain to our advantage. Ryland won't expect a change in tactics. Some of the Seraphs share mesmer abilities. Malice could factor us in. Maybe it's time to teach the cubs a few new tricks. Okay, so the quotes he's got are from chapter 15. I was the youngest or smallest. They called me Runtlock. Runtlock, Runtlock Logan snorted. I made them stop Ritlock growled ominously. I did, and the other uh, striplings did. We banded together, and I was their leader. We taught the bullies a few lessons. Still can't stand bullies. So the word bullies in there, but if you actually look at the context of that conversation, it's not that he's gone through some, like... There's a difference between, like, boisterous, rowdy teasing and, like, conflict between kids through which someone learns to fight back and be strong and being bullied and being traumatized and carrying that with you. That, that quote does not substantiate what the devs later did with Ritlock. That does not, like, you've, you've typed it there yourself. That does not mean that Ritlock forever had, like, this big problem and stuff. It literally says the opposite. It says that he found strength in, in the teasing and the hazing experience because he was young, because he was smaller than the rest when he was younger. And he came out of that a strong char. I, I don't, I don't, I, I get, I kind of get why you could warp that if you wanted into something else. But to me, the whole point of that paragraph is that as a chart, like we see a little bit of, about the conflict at the heart of chart society and how they rise through it and how it forges them. Surely. Please change the title. You're about to play the Icebrood Saga and you didn't know this. Dude, it's been over a year and you're watching the Guild Wars channel. I'm not changing the title. You gotta, ke you gotta keep up, man. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, we must focus our forces. Concentrated firepower will retake the beach. Guerrilla warfare sounds like the change we need, or our best strategy is to use every tactic and every resource everywhere. <laughs> That's such nonsense, that bottom one. Let's say guerrilla warfare. And just what kind of damage will hit and hide tactics really do? Do you want to get to Bangar or not? We're calling ourselves the United Legions. We need to walk the walk. Blood, ash, and mesmers in the forest. And flame, iron, and seraph regulars on the beach. It's a good plan. Seems reasonable. Reasonable. Go. Waste your time in the trees. I'll take my forces and wipe out this Dominion cancer for good. We've got a mission and a strategy. Commander, I'll meet you in Ritlock at the Blood Legion bivouac. Look, this, this video is meant to be a playthrough of the story, and we're going to keep going. It's not meant to be a specific place where I have one argument with one person in chat about their interpretation of a tiny bit of lore. But the idea that, yeah, he could have carried that weight with the rest of him is fine. I, I accept that there's space for that. But that's clearly not the intent of that paragraph. It's clearly the intent to show he did rise above it. He's talking about becoming their leader and put, uh, teaching them a few lessons. It's, it's definitely a recharacterization of Ritlock. It's definitely a retroactive decision to go another way with that information. 
Like, you literally have something in the novel that, that specifically puts him one way, and then they've corrupted it later because they have a new ambition. Uh, I suppose that's fine as well. I'm just saying I don't like Say what that you decision. want about his politics, but that Rylan Steelcatcher is fine. Meh. Great fighter. Not really my type. Ah, suit yourself. I chase that tail behind enemy lines. Huh? Oh, a lot of the little dialogue here is really good. They're doing a thing just like we have in Jahai as well, where you walk near the golems and stuff. Well, not golems, just any any characters at the pack camp, and that will f uh, actually fire their dialogue. Okay, so we're going to the Umbral Grotto. We're already at the Umbral Grotto, right? We're just going upstairs. So this was where the United Legion's way station um, mastery came in, which is an interesting one. Uh, it kind of power crept the break bars for people that want to use it. It's still in the game. I don't know if it will last forever. Um... But yeah, it's been a thing for a long time. And you see these base stations all over Tyria now. Which I suppose is pretty cool. That's what Masteries are supposed to be about, right? You get a tool and you can fly it anywhere and everywhere. He keeps staring at me. Seriously. Everywhere I go, he's there. It's really creeping me out. Oh my god. You think he's a double agent? That's what I said. He might be collecting intel for Dominion. We should keep an eye on him. Who knows what kind of info he's got on us already. Spy on the spy. I like it. It's really weird to see, like, Char fighting alongside Seraph here. Those Imperator types. It's like weird in a good way, I think. Devourers. Don't love mixing politics with warfare. If that's what Kreesh has been dealing with all this time, I don't envy her. Good to see you again, Commander. Hopefully this goes smoothly. But when has that ever been the case? You never know. It could be our lucky day. How are things holding up? Ha, I, I make my own luck and I make bangers too. I haven't talked to Kreisha just yet. I figured you want to be here for that. Uh, but I'm ready for anything, long as I get to do something. We'll be in the thick of it soon enough already. Commander, Ritlock. How'd we lose so much ground, Kree? <sighs> we were so focused on Bangar. Ryland and his warband took us by surprise. I underestimated him. Every time Steel gains an inch, one of ours wonders if they chose the wrong side. No way you could predict how many idiots would buy their crap. How are you holding up? I've got full command of the infantry here. Malice is employing her share of ash tactics in the forest. Where do you want us? Troops need to see you out there. Morale is low. We can't afford any more deserters. Centurions, Edge Crusher, and Backdraft are handling support. They'll tell we'll you where you can do the most good. Small we're on shock a cuts until they think we're an army of thousands. That's our mission. We Mesmers can confuse the enemy senses as well. Turns out he wasn't They'll a see spy. and hear things that aren't there. The Let us know when to rejoin you. Uh, Legions, sure we stay focused and keep your wits well, about you. Don't have to worry about this won't be easy. Anymore. Jesus so Christ. The amount of talking, all I was trying to do there was see where Kazmir was. I couldn't see her. It was quite funny, actually, because she was talking about being an unseen mesmer. Got a problem with the food? Make it yourself. Maybe I will. Can't do worse than this quaggin turd. Everyone, Legions, calm down. Do whatever you have to. We're all on edge here. Let's just be glad we have food. Even if it is terrible. So ungrateful. Quaggin turd. <laughs> um... Man, it looks like we just loaded in. Is this a totally dead map? Because, like, there's absolutely nothing going on, right? Maybe it just got spun up. Hey, Snarl. Nice partnering up like this. All that working in the open was making my skin crawl. That's huh. just allergies. Ah, Tribune Brimstone. Anything we can help you with, sir? <sighs> Actually, we're supposed to help you, Galena. Where can we lend a hand? All over, really. Legion forces are pretty thin on the ground, and... Damn, Minister of Morale's got recording spinning Dominion propaganda all over the place. Her voice already makes me want to punch something. Smash a few speakers. Problem solved. Our scouts have been hitting Dominion supply Strike caravans two. just beyond camp. They could use some help with that. Plus, the supplies we'll need to get to the Quartermaster. And our sentries have been pulling triple shifts. Be good if you could check on them. We'll take care of it. Eyes on your sister's And, uh, we'll be waiting here when you're done. So Think we'll cover more ground if we split up. See you soon, Commander. 
So, uh, yeah, these guys from the personal story. One thing I haven't talked about that is pretty cool about the Icebreed Saga is they're very consistent at using old personal story characters and just like littering them around. They basically never have super prominent roles Maintain or do very much, but they are around. Um, these guys are even in the Golden Path, which is really awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can uh, keep your eye out. And on this map, as we learned in a previous part, the Cash Keepers as a part of the meta are your other Warband mates, which is super cool. Um, but does canonically mean you kill them off, which is uh, pretty rough. Okay, so Feed the Hungry Sentry. Um, destroy the propaganda speaker. Optionally, destroy a speaker with an EMP. And obtain war supplies from any stolen supplies. Okay. So he wants food. Um, the chef will give it to us. Meatloaf again. What are you I'm not your nanny, but fine. I suppose a snack wouldn't hurt, given this. Make it yourself. Jesus Christ, Maybe look at that it's huge well. shank here. It's just a whole leg of a dolly act, that right there. <laughs> you want something? There you go, you just eat this. Just my luck. Pulled a double watch. I haven't had a hot meal in days. My stomach is growing louder than a trihorn with a hangnail. Damn, just damn thanks. I can't thank you enough. Dude, there's nothing better than giving someone food who's really hungry, right? Um, so now let's see. I should have tons of currency in this map, I do. Um... So we'll grab an EMP, and sorry by the way if my voice is hard to pick out with all the conversation. This map's got a lot of it, so either I can't talk at all, or we'll be—I'll be interrupting myself a lot, or we'll just power through. Okay, so um, let's come over and special action. And then we want to obtain some war supplies from right over here. Man, I remember this map feeling really chaotic when it first came out. I wanted it to be day really badly, because no matter all my disappointment with Jizzlewood that I mentioned earlier, I do think this place is really cool looking in the day. There's something about it. I don't know what exactly. I actually think this looks prettier during the day than some of the End of Dragons environments. Seriously. And by the way, some of the new assets and things are like these big trees and things. Which is when it's day, it will become very, very clear. Once again, like Bureau, this is a half and half map as well, where you get the first half now and then the next patch will be the second half. And there's actually quite a lot that changed in this one. Like they had a giant ice wall here and stuff, and then it all melted away. Uh, make a quick scrapper in the middle of a wall. Well, look, I've got some supplies. Nice, I underestimated you. Get out there and give us some more beans and bullets, especially if it's from the traitors. Um, grub tastes sweeter that way. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this map's got really good meta on it. Like, you remember the shootout we did in Grothmar and... Just a ton of the weird little mechanics they've been showing off. They appear all over the place. I can't remember how integrated the meta is into the main story. It's not at all, right? It really does feel like if you're going to do a story playthrough of Guild Wars, metas have to be a part of it. Like, think about all the stuff. Death Branded Shatterer. Like, I think if my full LP gets here, it has to be showing the meta events. It has to be. There's just too much value in all of them, right? It needs to be personal story and episode, and then like a meta episode, and then a personal story episode, and then a meta episode. Like someone said in the live chat earlier, with the char tank, you get to fight here on this map. It's so awesome. All of it's really good, but we just miss it completely. All right, hello, Snow. Thanks, Commander. You beat Tribune Brimstone, but I'm sure he'll be swaggering in any minute. Part of the mission's to collect more intel, but the bugs we planted have been glitchy. We'll take any edge we can get. I'll see what I can do. Keep your eyes open, Commander. We're spread too thin. Dominion keeps slipping past our sentries. They make it hard for our agents to courier sensitive messages to camp. Critical intel on enemy troop movements. Take a smaller version of his cipher key. Translate any coded messages they've left and relay the intel back to us. I'll report whatever I find. Do I have any plans to continue the full LP? You re oh, well, first of all, someone asked, do, do I prefer this to the bit of Frost Forest? Actually, I prefer the Bitterfrost Forest. The Bitterfrost Forest is amazing. I don't know what it is about it. Bitterfrost is one of my all-time favorite releases and most connected I've ever felt with the game. Just enthusiastic happiness. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, this place is great. And I mean, like, objectively speaking, this place probably looks better. And, and, and objectively speaking, is more dense with content and has more stuff. Don't get me wrong. But my personal affection it goes to Bitterfrost. Um, right, yeah, now someone else asking, will I continue the full LP? I don't know what my plan is right now. I'd much rather do 12 and Elder Scrolls and Endwalker and all that other stuff. 
Um, but I also would... Uh, it also... Okay, it depends on a few things. If End of Dragons is amazing, I'm really... And uh, not just End of Dragons, but after End of Dragons, if ArenaNet really gets their shit together and does amazing stuff with Guild Wars and all my passion and love for this franchise comes back, I'll probably be really apt to do the full LP and continue along with it. But especially if End of Dragons ends the Elder Dragon part of the story well, I think I'll be really excited. The other thing I would love is if they ever put in a patch that, uh, it's nice to be back on staff now. If they ever put on a patch that, like, has camera, co you know how, like, in Final Fantasy, when you right-click an NPC, it snaps the camera to them, it, like, it locks them? And you can really look at the NPC's animations and stuff as they're talking to you, and, you know, everything I've been saying over and over and over again in this series. If ArenaNet ever actually adds that to Guild Wars 2, I think I'll continue the, um, the main LP in a heartbeat. Because just the quality of the footage and stuff would just go up so much. And the level of immersion and so on. And then there's a question of viewership, you know. If the views were there. So I don't know, if Guild Wars becomes a bigger game, there's a bigger community, there's more people interested. Um, you know, there's one thing to do it as a hobby, there's another thing to do it as a career or whatever, you know. And it's like, you might, there's probably something smart to do. So I don't know, that's kind of my thoughts with it right now. I do want to continue it. It's, I, I wouldn't say it's cancelled. I would just say it's definitely low on the back burner right now. There's so much more stuff I'm excited about. And this series I do, do view as a very, very adequate replacement for the meantime. Um, okay, so this we got a little taste of in Grothmar with the markings on the trees. We could have gone to the Hidden Ash Legion base. So we see a, strange, a, pe uh, a pair of strange symbols carved into the tree. We can examine it more closely. And we examine the scratches. The first is a long vertical, and the second is two sets of wavy horizontal lines. Okay, consi consult the guide. Legions. Nothing left of you but a bunch so of what are we being told fools. here? This is it. Steady a long vertical Stand scratch down. and two sets of wavy Get lines. Up, Seven symbols to represent set values. One is a straight vertical Stand line. Strong. Five is horizontal. Ten is diagonal. So we see a long longer. vertical line. So one and then two wavy horizontal, but wavy. What, what's a wavy line mean? Locations. Two sets of wavy scratches refers to the ocean. So one ocean? Agent one direction south. You're confident in your choice. I guess I messed up the cardinal bit of it there. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Then we, we found the match. <laughs> I'm a good translator. There's a brilliant thing in Guild Wars 1 Eye of the North that was to do with that as well. By the way, a little bit of war claw here. Um, which I guess is what they're alluding to. This is so Eye of the North feely, you know, the Icebreed Saga. But it's weird how the Eye of the North in Guild Wars 1 did, like... Uh, let's, let's stop being a grump, shall we? Let's stop being a grunt. Commander, our strategy is working. We're regaining ground bit by bit. Nothing helps morale like winning. True, but we're still outnumbered. And we've got soldiers who've been alone out there too long. You've made an impact across camp. Now I need you further afield. And watch your back out there, Commander. If I had to guess, will End of Dragons be as long as POF or Hearththorns? It'd best be at least POF, I hope. I think the dream for Guild Wars that's actually in the world of reality for right now is if it's a, if it's POF, but with the Vabi and the Awakened arc fully in there. So basically, a third longer than POF, I think, is, is pretty good. That would still leave like an equivalent to Am Noon as a bit thin, but that would be really good. And that might sound crazy. You're saying, oh, WP, POF was already a lot longer than Heart of Thorns, so you're asking for another third on top, aren't you being greedy? Aren't you asking for too much? That's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is to look at their competitors in the industry, like Final Fantasy, and like, look at the length of those. Say what you want about his politics, but that Ryland Steelcatcher is fine. For me. Eh, great fighter. Not really my type. Right ah, before- suit yourself. I chase that tail behind enemy lines. We already heard that huh? as well. Uh, right before this project, I did a Final Fantasy project that was the same thing, exact same thing, just playing through the story. Not all the side sto stuff, just the story. And in Guild Wars, it was like Heart of Thorns was one video. 
in Final Fantasy, it's like 13 videos. Just to get through, like, there's just a huge difference. Genuinely, it's like 13 videos for each of their expansions. And in Guild Wars, it took me one video for Heart of Thorns and two for POF. There is a very big difference between what Guild Wars does and what its successful competitors do. So yeah, me asking for a third of extra length on POF, I don't think it's that crazy. Uh, what are we looking for here? Assist with task and events in the west side to aid the warlock at war effort. What are these guys going to tell me to do then? Oh, they're just giving me information in general. Okay, so hold on. If I just play the meta now, am I alright? We've just got a progress bar, right? Please be day. How long is it going to be till day? What is it right now? It's one in the morning, Tyrion time? Does that mean the sun's not going to come up for ages? No, that's not how it works, right? Um, let's just go to the camp that just flipped the Vlox and mine and see uh, see how things go. We might also just escort this, this, this supply caravan. So, by the way, we're finally in patches where there's achievements for me to get. Um, not in the south, but in the north, there's a couple of little achievements. One of the achievements I need that I think I might be able to get in the south is I need to intercept one supply caravan. The thing is, I don't know when those events ever trigger on this map. You need to, like, go out ahead of the meta and find one and interfere with it. But, yeah, I'm actually not going to be 100% complete with the Icebridge Saga because I don't have a couple of achievements on this map. And then with... Uh, I mentioned this on yesterday's commentary. And um, uh, I need some... Um, uh, on the final patch as well, champions. Anyway, if I rebuild this with supply, will, it, will they be happy with that? Oh, they will a bit. But it cost me 200. That's quite expensive. Yeah, got it. So, so there was a lot of discussion. Um, I handed to our soldiers who stuck around. Tough not to cave out here. Oh, that was very short from real look. Nice. Um, there was a lot of discussion when this patch was coming out about how this was going to be PVE, PVE's version of World vs. World. And I do think that there's some things that go on here that World vs. World can be inspired by. You guys all know I have really big, crazy, dramatic ideas about what World vs. World should really be like with the whole re-leveling and stuff. But, um, oh, I like how we're getting ruined all here. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, I, I really do think that this map did a lot of great stuff as a grind map. This was, since Dragon Fall, the end of Season 4, this was the next gr truly great meta. Neither of the, bu well, actually, Drakkar was a good meta too. I don't know, that's the problem with Guild Wars, you know, just the main story does not tell the whole s the whole patch. Any of them. Bangar was the only one doing anything for us. You think Bangar gives a damn what happens to us? Go. See how much he cares about the char when he gets Jormag on his side. WP, are you fine with us only witnessing the end of the Char Civil War? Would you have rather see the beginning? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not happy with it at all. It's just one of those things, it's like we've suddenly leapt into this huge war, you know. And by the way, the way they'll frame this in the story is that, like, the char on the brink of destruction and all this kind of stuff. Like, they go really crazy and really big with it. And it's just not earned, you know. It's not earned. If you don't show the start of this stuff... You know, I don't want to... I'm, I really don't want to be a downer. Yesterday's video was really fun because it's my favourite part of the Icebreed Saga. This bit of the Icebreed Saga I just generally don't like much. But, you know, and I don't want to be too much of a downer. But, like, if you look, again, at the Final Fantasy comparison... If they were doing this, they would have been hinting at this story and things would have been moving like two expansions ago now. Guild Wars is just like a conga line. It's, it's this thing and then suddenly we're in this thing and then suddenly we're in this thing. There's never any breadcrumbing off into future stories. Nothing feels like it's been coherently building and building. It just suddenly happens. And the Char Civil War is just right, another one of those experiences. In command out here. What's her name? Vyshen. She's done some damage. So... You read the new Snargle Golglaw novel yet? Why would I read that trash? It's a good distraction. Plus, that scene in the hot springs is pretty... steamy. What, uh, the, the what now? Um, this is a really gorgeous place, by the way. I really like that, uh, Vista. Also, you get a nice moment here in Jizzlewood. I'll compliment the hell out of this. With Vaishan and stuff, we actually get to fight that warband now as a part of the meta and maybe even a bit in the story. That warband we were dealing with before in Forging Steel, and they were our friends, they're our enemies now, and we will actually be doing battle with them. And, um... And there's just a really cool, like, extra mu touch and moment there. And again, that's one of those things where they took a bit of time and they really built up some stuff, and it really pays off in a big way here, so... 
All right, let's go do that dynamic event up there, I guess. I, I like how we can press this bit of the story just by upgrading things. It's quite cool and rebuilding stuff here. <clears throat> can fix this tent. We'll probably get a good something. I've been ready to fight since I was a cub. Couldn't wait to take out enemies on the battlefield. Is it what you thought it'd be? The battle part, yeah. The enemy's part, no. No? I never pictured them being Ash, I guess. Everyone else, sure. <sighs> but not Ash. Guild Wars 2 is very episodic. 14 is actually a saga. 14 is just properly plotted because they think long term about it. You know, Guild Wars has always been in this thing where it's like they're trying to cancel expansions and they're for years. Guild Wars has just been thrown all over the place. Square Enix have stayed the course, and it's meant that their story team can actually write stuff way off in the future. Like, they, they just did a, a live letter for their community talking about the next 10 years of the game. They're happy to do that. They're comfortable to do that. ArenaNet's never been comfortable to do that, ever. And so Guild Wars has suffered. It's not that the writers are bad, necessarily. It's not that the intent isn't there. It's just that the actual business and the studio itself has kept them on their toes and on the edge of extinction for so long that they can't do stuff that Final Fantasy did. It's not that Guild Wars fundamentally has to be so episodic. But yeah, someone in the live chat says, uh, I wish 14 could emulate the Guild Wars 2 open world and Guild Wars 2 could take some of the story stuff. Yeah, I mean, some kind of hybrid between the two games would be perfect, wouldn't it? It would be like the ultimate MMO. Believe it or not, my like fan MMO, the, the game I'm designing, air quotes, you know, that I spent, I spent a ton of time last night working on that. Um, actually doesn't look anything like Guild Wars or Final Fantasy. It looks like neither of them. So I do believe there's other formats of MMOs out there. But my kind of dream game is sort of like a budgetary thing that a small team could make, um, but would be amazing. So it's kind of different. But yeah, a hybrid between the two would be awesome. Stay sharp and keep your weapons in Rit, look, want to speak? Kazma, no? We missed the event position. to the north, but hey, that's fine. We built some stuff up. This is really cool. Should we go to the other camp? I think part of my dissatisfaction with Drizzlewood is is the Guild Wars 1 overlap thing. Maybe too. I don't know. I think it's just not dense enough. You know what I think? I think it's not a fault with the map. I think it's not a fault with Living World maybe even. I think it's just what maps feel like now that mounts are in the game. I think more than anything else it's that. I think things need to be a lot more closed, a lot more cluttered, a lot more windy and to feel real, you know. I don't know. Maybe it's just over familiarity with how Guild Wars is built as a game. You know, and my like maybe there's not that sense of exciting exploration stuff because I know what map completion feels like and ultimately a map is just going to be map completion. I know what dynamic events feel like. I know what you know, I get most excited in these maps. Like, Lake Doric is a great thing to look at. Lake Doric got us a little bit close to this region. And I remember being this here, the Harvest Cascades unlocking. And I remember the town here. This is when I was super excited. And I remember being excited. It's this kind of feeling I wanted constantly. But I sort of know what a map is. Especially when it's in Living World and especially when it's got mounts. And I think that enthusiasm's just gone, you know? That's why... It doesn't matter what they do graphically with it at, at a certain point. It's just hollowed out. I think that's what it is. I think. And I don't know what practical use there is to this observation. But. Sweep the whole base. Check every shadow. So there's really not much going on here for us to progress our story. The mastery insight here. Oh! An adventure spawn here. Actually, no, the event's really far away, but for some reason, one of the enemies for the event is here. Oh, nice! We actually stole away. Oh, it's good to be back on Daredevil. We get uh, regular stolen skills back. That feels quite fresh. I've been using the Deadeye ones for so long. Okay, the thing is, I can't solo that. I can't take a whole camp solo. So we'll have to see if any players are here. I'll probably get my Springer killed, even trying to jump through here. Let's see. Are there players around? Oh, there is. There's a little group. Okay, cool. Now, what would I rather do to contribute here? Oh, my God. His break bar broke, and he just spam blocks. Man. So you'll see that a lot of the char in the Civil War have... 
So here's one thing I don't quite understand, right? I genuinely, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask people in the live chat. Maybe they can help me out here. The previous patch showed that the Aberrant, the Fallen, and all that, right? They were the corrupted spirits of the wild, right? But didn't Bram sort of like... Resolve that? Maybe we didn't resolve that in the previous patch, I guess. I guess we didn't. By the way, yeah, they're called the Dominion. Bangar's Char, which is a great name. I think any Deep Space Nine fans going to agree with that. <laughs> At least that's what they, they make me think of. But yeah, you can see they're under their influence. Ritlock's dialogue's cut out, unfortunately. Um, it looks like he's being whispered to by Jaw Mag right now. Um, oh, we can actually open the chest here as well. They're called the Dominion here. The big reveal at the end of one of these patches, by the way, is um, we're going to see just how much of Jaw Mag's influence they are accepting. And they're going to be like the Sons of Svarnir. And as soon as the Dominion decides to be like the Sons of Svarnir, they get a whole new name. So we had the Flame Legion with Geheron. Can you guess what the new name is? I remember speculating that they might do this as well. And it is cool. I do like the idea of the, the new Legion. The spirits say that Jormag's bile is still in their head and they can never be whole. So they can only regain their sanity for short periods of time to help us. Oh, there you go. There you go. Where's that information come from? Is that later when we're with Bram? Upcoming? The so, attack incoming. Don't read any of that trash. Keep in theory, I should just be able to repair some of this. And the story the step will be done. There we go. I was crawling through roots and bushes for those centurions of yours. Came across a couple of Ryland's officers. Before I shut them up, I heard them talking about diving deep for the Dominion. Mean anything to you? Sounds like some sort of code. Should we take it back to Snarl? Diving deep? That's it! The basin! Share, Cree. Malice intercepted a communique. Seems Steel Warband has a hidden headquarters. It must be somewhere in the basin. If we can find and strike at Steel's central command... It'd be like digging our claws back into the territory. I need you to find that base. On it. I'm not too far from the basin, Gritlock. I'll meet you there. Oh, someone in... There you go. Look, I just got this achievement once more. It's because I've never I've never finished this story step here uh, with voice acting ever. <laughs> so there you go. We got it. I think I have with feeling done already, though. I, the next patch I did do. Yeah, I, I did listen to all that voice acting. There you go. So you get a little achievement there. Like, a, a, not even a Season of the Dragon achievement. Just a straight-up achievement we got there. Okay. Um, so... Yeah, let's just move on over. Someone's got a great theory in the uh, the live chat that maybe Drizzlewood fe doesn't evoke that feeling of mystical exploration and curiosity and, like, magic and, you know, just all that stuff that we felt, or I felt, I guess, and maybe it resonates with other people, looking at the world map when Eye of the North came out. Um, because it's in a war, and everything's defined by the war here. You're either in open fields and clambering around cliffs, or you're doing war-based stuff, and that's it. Maybe you're right. Maybe that's the idea. Maybe it needs to be at peacetime. But because this is frozen in a war... And it, again, that's not the fault of the map, necessarily. And that would mean that you can be really excited about exploring all these areas of the Woodland Cascades. So maybe you're right. Maybe I need to just sort of get over it. And maybe I can still look at this Delta and be like, oh man, I want to go there. <sighs> Think about the Massart ruins and all the sneaky little things. Maybe you're right. Cree, we're at the edge of the basin. Nothing here. <laughs> you were expecting flashing signs? Ryland's craftier than that. <laughs> Must have gotten it from you. If I recall, I didn't make a cub all on my own. Look around, Commander. Even a secret base has direction markers. Likely hiding in plain sight. Report back when you've got coordinates. People criticizing they never talk about sex in the uh, previous part, remember? There's a little bit. Okay, so... In, in a tasteful way, I'd say as well. So, I liked this story step here as well a lot, by the way. 
It's actually one of my favorite things. I think I like these bits, the environment inspection moments. Yes, sometimes a rock is just a rock. A lot more than um, a mushroom, it doesn't look ed edible. Uh, a lot more than like the combat and <laughs> adrenaline bits. You know, it's kind of like RuneScape questing, which is some of my favorite questing I've ever played in an MMO. Ryland's proving himself quite the strategist. A note Seeing the leader he's turned out to be. Not sure if I should be proud or terrified. A night read still supports rock. So we start to get a sense in this patch, by the way, that, that Ryland is probably not going to be someone we can turn around and change their mind. That maybe Kreisha was right all along. Tough. Smart. Hate that he's letting Bangar use him like this. Like you have to let him live with his own decisions, Redlock. Maybe someday. Not today. Well, Ridlock's not going to give up on that. South cuts, twist deep. Perhaps this uh, along the southern part of the base there. Wait, hold on. Do I need to collect all of these? Or do? Yeah, I think I do. I, can I just skip to the entrance? Because I know where the entrance is. I think I know how to get to the hidden entrance. Finally, if Ryland's there, I'll tie him down and talk some sense into his thick head. You've still got hope then? Got no choice. Even at night, this place is really quite beautiful, to be honest. This kind of gives me Blood Tide vibes. So it's not quite behind the waterfall, but it's still pretty good. Grisha, we've located the entrance. I have your position, Commander. Malice and I will meet you there shortly. As will I. Sounds like a mission for Imperators, huh? Oh, wait, wait. Meet with them at the end. Sorry. Yeah, here we go. So we head on in. Fishing here would be sweet. Yeah, it would. It really would. It's going to be nice right before End of Dragons comes out, playing a whole part here with the fishing rod, and we'll all be thinking about fishing the whole time. <laughs> Maybe. I disagree with your strategy. Again. A direct attack will take this base in half the time. And give them warning to destroy whatever intel they've got in there. What's the plan? We have to assume we'll be outnumbered inside. If you'd consulted me beforehand, I could have brought a war machine or two. Regardless, Malice is right. We need to take this base quickly and quietly. With a party this big? I can cloak a few of us so we won't be seen. But lumber around like a tank, and they will hear you. Why don't Ridlock and I stay out here? Cover your tail. Schmoder, we could use some extra hands. Iron God. Yes, sir. I've got your back, Commander. Keep Someone in the live chat open. pointing out that this is kind of a terrible idea, Bangor, getting all of our leaders. Their next strategies, whatever you find, we can use it. Here in one place, and it could be a trap. You're totally right, actually. <laughs> You're totally right. It's not very sophisticated, is it? Um, Matt says, I remember, I recall the drama from Heart of Thorns with time gated story steps in the community. How do you feel about them now? And do you think you want to see them in a dragon? Okay, this isn't really about. I mean, this is a story playthrough, so I won't linger on that question very long. There were never time gated story steps, ever. There were mastery gated story steps that said, hey, how about you actually go and explore the world and get some experience from the meta events and all the other stuff, and then unlock a mastery, and then you can go ahead. Personally, I think it was fine and totally tolerable. But what ArenaNet had done is they'd conditioned a very particular kind of audience over the years. Um, so I don't think they could get away with it again. Not unless they were very careful. You've got to remember, in the Heart of Thorns 2.0 patch, they straight up doubled XP in the jungle. Doubled XP. I played Heart of Thorns with absolutely no boosters, and, um, and I didn't ever have a problem with it, because I was actually exploring. I was speaking to the NPCs, I was doing map comp, I was getting... Uh, you know, the meta's done and stuff, and I just always, I progressed through it. I progressed through my masteries, I think, too fast. None of the gates were that bad, but there's a certain mindset of people who just wanted to zerg through and be done in four hours, and now they were being told that they needed to actually do other stuff and value other stuff, and they couldn't handle it. I've always kind of looked down on people who had a problem with it, to be honest. But there you go. Uh -oh. oh, she's AOE. Okay, she's AoE. That's pretty good. Okay, so she can only do it four times, though. <clears throat> I have to kill all these people anyway, right? I'm pretty sure you got to kill them all. <sighs> Maybe? 
I, it's whenever I do this instance, I end up having to come backwards through it and finish everyone off. So I'll expend all the ammo. I'll try and be efficient about it. The AoE's big, but it's not... Oh, that, that. Can I get both of them? I think I can. I think they're both in range. Good luck, Malice. Ah, oh, I didn't get this guy. That's right. We can just walk around the back of him. Can we get both of those? I mean, they're definitely in, right? And I guess we can take. Step softer, Commander. We can only escape notice so many times. Oh, there you go. And then that, as long as that guy doesn't move. Oh, he did move, but I think we're still safe. <gasps> okay, good. There you go. So that's a, that's a good amount of kills. Why did they tell me to walk walk softer? I I was pretty good there, wasn't I? I didn't walk into anyone. We don't know what or who's on the other side of that door. Enemy combatants. I'd feel better if we had line of sight. Let's find a quieter way to get these doors open. Could be a key around here somewhere. Okay, search the main hall for a key. Now, the key's in the uh, pen over here, if I remember rightly. So, I'm, I'm glad I killed the guys around here. This is a good instance as well, by the way. There's a gameplay gimmick, but it's not too complicated. It's pretty readable, pretty, pretty, pretty comfortable straight away. You can do it in multiple... Ways you can just get spotted and fight if you want, or you can do it stealthy. I liked it with the Kate stuff back when, and it feels good here too. Okay, I think he's in this bag. That should do it. Let's get the whole door open. So yeah, this isn't a bad instance at all. But you'll notice this instance is not like some of those season four instances, like exploring Farriner or when we got captured by Zaim. Okay. I suggest. This is ridiculous. Damn it, Smoda! Taste the blood. So, uh, Smoda showing more of his newfound bloodlust since the start of this patch. Oh my god, I'm really enjoying Starve. I honestly thought that today I'd play Daredevil again and I'd be frustrated by it. Like, I would be dying. Like, you see, I put smoke screen and bandit's defense on at the start. And I wouldn't be doing much damage and I'd miss rifle. Um, but no, it feels good. Weakening strike, charge, no, weakening strike or charge? Weakening charge feels good. Feels real fresh, real good. It's going to be nice to add Spectre into the mix. Now, breaking the bar might be a little bit annoying. Let's see. We can hook strike him in the back. There we go. Nice. I stole stealth from him and used it to hook strike him and break his bar. That was pretty cool. That's a fun little interaction you don't often think about, but Guild Wars 2's combat is full of... I can vault in this smoke screen for it again now that his break bar's up again. Cinder, please. I've known your whole war band ever since you were come. This isn't you. Thought we knew you, too. Guess we were wrong. I gotta slow down. I'm gonna miss dialogue here. Stop. So, so obviously this is literally Cinder from the tank mission what earlier. You mean stop? She's his second. Her life is worth more than her death. To Ryland. To us. So, remember Smoder is the politicking guy. You want to use her as a bargaining chip. Taking her prisoner will bring Ryland back to the table. We don't want your cub at the table. We want him off the table. There's daylight between Ryland and Bangar. We can use it. Get Ryland to see reason and switch sides. Spare her and we look weak. Eradicate these traitors. Win the war. That's the goal. I thought the goal was the survival of the Char. Grisha, I get the impulse. But isn't this off mission? We've got to push north. Stop Bangar before he can wake Jormag. If we can bring Ryland around and steal with him, we can use their strength, their intel, against Bangar. You want to bring him to heel, send him this one's head on a pike. Ugh, the great diplomat. Krisha, the last parley with Ryland didn't end well. What makes you think this can work? It's what we do for Warband. Kree's right. He'll come. Might even listen. 
Steel doesn't answer to you anymore. And you don't know Ryland at all. Shut up, Centaurian. I want you alive, but I don't need you conscious. Ugh, this is insanity! But if it works, it could end the war without further bloodshed. Bunch of naive cubs, all of you! I can get a message to Ryland. Quietly. We need him to come alone. <sighs> I'm going back out to win the war! Good. All the noise you make will give Malice cover. Ritlock and I can help with that. Fine. Meet me at the Iron Pavilion. Rather stick an iron spike in my eye, but fine. To be honest, I like the delivery of the fine there. To be honest, I actually really dig this side of, of Smoda. It's a complicated thing that's going on here. Smoda has been like a quintessential proper char to me, right? And I love that we get that on screen. And I especially love as well that you can take a char who's meant to be like progressive and an out-of-the-box thinker and all this kind of stuff and show that he still has that brutalistic nature within him. I actually love that. And I'm really enjoying this. And I really enjoyed it when I first played it as well. It's just that knowing the only reason they're doing this is because, spoilers for in a couple of minutes, they want to kill him off and they want to bastardize him. And knowing that they're doing this so that they can specifically take a stance against him that's what kind of ruins it. So Terry the Chill, I really like Smoda there. I just sort of wish that people were on his side a little bit more or like it wasn't being done for the reason that we eventually realize why it's being done. In, in some ways, putting it on Smoda is especially cool, you know, showing that 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 side of him could be there. But, um, but yeah. Okay, so, so no, no ending dialogue here. It's funny, man. Like, these patches, they feel not just not expansion level. They're good patches. Don't get these instances and stuff, right? They're good. They're good enough, right? But they're not as good as you'd expect from an expansion. And they're not even as good as Season 4. And that, I think, can explain a lot of why people don't like the Icebreed Saga. The Icebreed Saga can be good enough. The Icebreed Saga can have hit a good enough bar. But the expectations that were foisted upon it... And just the whole vibe Say around the game want. and during this era. Because you got to look. This thing's competing with Shadowbringers, man. This thing, and even World of Warcraft, which is starting to hit its downward slump, is still on, like, a, a, a path, you know. Not to mention just the wrestling fact with the fact that it's a 10-year-old game and still no one's talking about it outside of the community. Still no one's picking it up. Ah, Commander. I've got new orders for you. Orders? Salvage and requisitions are now your specialties. That's if you want to end the war. What are we salvaging? We've crippled submarines off the port. Retrieve intact torpedoes for our ordnance cache. End any Dominion you encounter. Also, we've seized plans for an enemy weapon. This may be a challenge, but you'll need to assemble it. Once you manage that, I'll send someone to collect it. We're supposed to be creating diversions, keeping Dominion attention on us instead of Malice. You'll make plenty of noise, Brimstone. Destroy any enemy vehicles you come across and recover their parts. Materiel often has far greater value than ranks on the ground. Gears over grunts, I like to say. You say a lot. And after we're done with this salvage mission? I'll share next steps when appropriate. Keep me apprised. Um, you know, and I, I even like that he's got a lot to do, you know, because quite often these world leaders, you know, it's like I've been saying about Real and Gix from the Orders. It's like, look at Flax, right? Look at, um, look at the Captain's Council got a bit in Season 1, I suppose. Jenna's had a good amount. Look at Newt as well. I mean, this is if this is meant to be the Norn storyline, I mean, poor goddamn Newt, right? These big world leaders, quite often through most of Guild Wars' story, they haven't had enough to do. But Smoda gets a lot to do in the Icebreed Saga, and I can't fault that. That's something I've wanted. Even if he is kind of completely changed and bastardized, and they're Please doing it once again just to close the door. I can't believe she hasn't throttled him. Well, she did work beside Vanguard for years. Yeah. Let's just get this done. 
Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I am happy, and I will compliment the fact that Smoder at least gets some story here. Newt is another another thing, and, you know, maybe <laughs> the whole Norn conversation about the Icebridge Saga. Look, if the Char Civil War was not put into this, and it was more focused on the Norn and Coden, which is what I think should have been done, um, or in hindsight, you know, knowing that this is a... The thing is, when they were incepting the season and writing this stuff out, they probably expected it to be a lot longer than it is, you know? They didn't know when this was all starting that they were going to cut it halfway and all that. So maybe the idea of having more Norn and Coden and stuff was was on the table. Maybe in the original sketches for this, the next patch was going to be... In fact, didn't they say the next patch was going to be some of the Centaur human stuff? Maybe after that we were going to get to more Newt and Norn stuff. It still feels weird to me, though, that you essentially get two patches about a thing and then that's it, you know? Anyway, um... Now, something else I was going to say. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, in the previous part, we were talking about the commander doing, like, morally grey stuff. Like, genuinely dangerous stuff and, like, sophisticated things. This is probably a good beat to talk about that, by the way. Because we do something quite nasty and messed up here. I know that there's a lot of, like, salty people on the forums on Reddit who hate this story set because they're forced to do something they don't like. But I, I, I like that this story does something kind of dark here with this next bit. So, we're going to get ordnance from submarines. no pleasure in killing my no matter how wrong they are. Take whatever comfort you can from knowing you are on the right side of history. Um... Yes. Man, I just want to constantly listen to all these other characters all the time. Strip vehicles. Momentum, soldiers. What are we doing at the Overlook, though? Fix the weapon at the Overlook. So, it's funny, by the way. Here we've got Ritlock moving around with us. And this is starting to even feel old hat now, right? You might not even notice that they're doing the Blish thing, but he's with us. Uh, funnily enough, Liss was stuck on this story step. Well, not stuck, but just stalled on this story step for, like, a whole year. <laughs> so whenever I came to Drizzlewood and was doing the Drizzlewood metas and stuff on Liss, Ritlock was following her around, which I kind of liked, you know. It sort of added an extra little feel to the map. Just always to have uh, Ritlock there. Even when you... You can even take him into, like, the North meta and stuff. Have Ritlock anywhere you want. I kind of think that's quite cool. Okay, a note on top of this weapon reads that the research is down here must be half a syrup. I can't make horns or tails of this. Uh, color code or not, all these parts just look like levers. Keep reading the notes. I just remember they're saying firing means fire, elevate means to the sky. Burn me, is that code? Are they iron or ash? Those do sound like instructions, however. Well, we can attempt to fix it. There are three parts. Firing lever, elevation crank, breach slide, and three colored coded areas of the weapon. What was the note again? Firing means fire. Elevate means to the sky. Well, the sky is blue, so maybe it's one of these. Fire is red. So fire is red, sky is blue. Motor, the Dominion weapon is functional. Now that took you about as long as I thought it would. Carry on, Commander. Thanks. See, this is... We'll get it where it needs to go. See, I don't know why they have to go so far as make him, like, a personal dick there. The idea that he's really brutal and nasty in the context of the war, fine, I can buy that. But literally just having him be a twat for no reason, just taking personal jabs at us and stuff throughout this. This is over the line now. It's like, why are they doing that to Smoda? You know? That's not quintessential char. That's nothing. That's just we don't want you to like him. Um, very transparently. So I don't... I don't know. That loses me a bit. By the way, this is the patch where we get the stealth mastery. It's always funny seeing how out of touch the average Guild Wars 2 player is at this point. Because when you watch, like, End of Dragons press and stuff... Oh, in fact, most press that's come out over the past year, year and a half... People will mount. Or, like, I get this comment on my videos all the time. And they'll see the green stealth skill. And people will say, wow, what's that new button? Wow, is that an End of Dragons mastery? What is it? And it's because they haven't played this. And they, they never did the mastery. And they just don't know. They're just completely out of touch with the game. And I feel like that's a sign of lapsing players. And lapsing enthusiasm about Guild Wars at this point. We get a cool mini game with the submarines down here, by the way. I don't know whether I need to stop and fight. I'm still not very good at Thief Underwater. I don't trust those torpedoes not to explode. This is cool. They give Ritlock the uh, the bubble aqua breather. Let's just see if we can get over there without being attacked. That shark looks like it's coming for me already. It's a veteran too, so I'm a little bit scared of it. Which is a nice moment. Okay, so yeah, this is like doing the bellows in episode one. Or the prologue, I should say. Good, 
There we go, disabled. When this is all over, we're gonna have a good laugh at how pathetic you impaired. And again, I like that they reuse that there as well. They get more mileage out of it. I mean someone figured out how to code and did all the, the icon art and everything. May as well get more out of it, you know. And that little cool touch of having the screen shake it comes back and stuff you get to appreciate again. Oh shit. Do you know what happened there? I decided to look at the live chat as I was playing. And as soon as I did, I sort of thought, hold on, isn't that stupid? I probably need to pay a lot of attention here. <laughs> and I just sort of instinctively pressed 5 on my mouse. Hold on, did I fail that? No, no, no. Oh, one more sub somewhere. And 5 was the wrong button to press. What weapon does Ritlock use underwater? That's a good question. He doesn't fight with you, does he? So he's not got any. When companions are around like this with you, they're not like Guild Wars 1 heroes where you can assign them builds and they'll participate. They're not even like henchmen or anything. They're just following you. It's just for flavor. I used the word just there, but I still think it's awesome. I don't think they need to start fighting. In fact, I think that raises balance questions. Torpedoes. Good to see you can work unsupervised. We're allies. Not lackeys. You're a soldier in the field, Tribune. Do the job. Like, look at this. Take that job and we'll call you when the next task is done. I mean, it's a fun interaction, right? It's entertaining to look at, but it's like, why are you doing that to Smoda? Smoda has never shown any sign of just being a straight up dickhead for no reason, you know. By the way, speaking of equipping them and stuff, it is interesting to me that when we pop the PvP panel, you do have the whole Miss Champions thing. And maybe one day they could be inspired by this. That's the kind of thing that I would expect from End of Dragons, you know, like... But obviously the expansion doesn't do anything like that. It doesn't do anything meaty at all. It's interesting to think that maybe this could be some kind of, like, progenitor idea for an actual... I mean, the thing is, that's a lot of work and it's a lot that would go into that. I don't know how marketable a, a, a new hero system would be. I mean, it, it would be maybe cool. It's one of those things I do actually see people making suggestions about online when they talk about Guild Wars 2, new stuff they want to see Guild Wars 2 do. The thing is, Guild Wars 2's done so much now, it's going to have fishing, it's got mounts, it's got all these big MMO things that for years people have been asking for. Now when you see requests and suggestions, they become increasingly more, more and more fringe and unnecessary ideas, you know. So just because there now is a lot of conversation about them because they're the only thing that's left, it doesn't actually mean it's going to be of the greatest benefit to the MMO, you know. There's going to get to a point where the greatest benefit to Guild Wars 2 is just having decent new story, having decent new environments and stuff. You have to get to a point where you've decided, okay, this is what Guild Wars 2 is, and you either like it or you don't, you know. And that's something I think a lot of people struggle to realize when they're looking at End of Dragons, for example. When it turned out fishing was the feature and they were, oh, it's not good enough. You did it. It's like, Every sacrifice you, you know, if we imagine an expansion after End of Dragons, it doesn't necessarily need any... Or, let, imagine, like, three features after End of Dragons. How often do they have to keep reinventing the wheel and building these big new things to get your attention? Do you like the game yet or not? Do you know what I mean? At some point, it rides or dies based on the quality of the content itself. And that's not something you can be captivated by, by a bullet point on a list of features. Let's see to the wounded. Um, these things are dying real fast, which is nice. I'm used to these being elites, though. I'm gonna strip one more. I think around the back of the lighthouse, maybe. This lighthouse is one of my favorite areas of this map, by the way. Still no player housing. Uh, I mean, we're close to it. What you really mean when you say that is there's no personal decoration system. Smoter, we've finished collecting the car parts. Yes, I heard. What are you going to use all that scrap for anyway? It would take too long to explain it to you. Just worry about your mission. Can't imagine why so many iron keep jumping ship. Commander, report to base. There's more to be done. Care to elaborate? When you need to know. It's just so extra. It's so, so insane. It's, it's almost bizarre to be playing this. Especially with the voice acting here now. It, it's, it's bizarre. It's like, who's this character? 
Say what you want about his politics. It's someone we want you to hate so that we can kill him. And we want you to therefore believe all of his other opinions about child society and stuff are wrong. Because we're gonna mute everything, you'll see. Smoter. You need to be properly armed for your next assignment. Shaman, where's the crystal? Right next to you. It's not ready yet. You were given a direct order. Since you don't have a conventional Imperator, maybe you've forgotten what that means. Sir, your orders were, and I quote, to add a flame boost to iron munitions. Priority one, you said. I haven't had the time or extra energy to power the crystal as well. I need solutions, not excuses, soldier. Give them the crystal as is. A flame core could complete the charging process. Where can we find one of those? A few of our shamans join Dominion. They use the cores to fuel their burning effigies. Excellent. You have your next mission. See to it, Commander. By the way, this is um, daytime lighting. It's like this like, slight haze on it. I love it so much. I think it looks really cool. Okay, so we can ask her a little bit extra about this. Um, man, this UI overlap. Tell me more about the crystal. What exactly do you want to know? Okay, what is it? I'm forbidden by Smoda to give details. Need to know only, he said. I respect you, Commander, but I cannot ignore a direct order. Look at her face there, by the way. Alright, okay. So this ex-flame shaman, should we be thinking that they're a bit dodgy? Something a bit weird going on? Oh, by the way, the parachute mechanic on this map is really cool as well. I love so much about what they did with the open world and all the intricate details and stuff. Um, by the way, oh, I, I missed this. I'm really sorry. Uh, uh, somewhere near the start of the video, Q actually made a donation, dude. 20 Canadian dollars. Thank you very much. I can actually see that's the equivalent of 13 pounds, which is quite nice. Thank you very much. They said, I can't believe this is the end. Great series. You got me back into the game after the Winter's Day slump and playing my thief finally. I also agree with the Woodland Cascades and the Isles of Janthira. I hope we get to see the region more later. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you very much. I'm glad that I'm not the... I'm glad I'm not... It's not just me being a miser and sitting around alone, but that what I'm saying actually does run resonate with at least some other people. <laughs> so thank you, man. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. That Flame and Charmin's other dialogue references the Molten Alliance. Oh, that's cool. I have a real sense that here on Jizzlewood, there's a lot of fun little Easter eggs and small details that I, I never, like, picked up on. Or maybe I did, but I just never committed them to memory. Like, if that if something as big as the Cash Keepers being Personal Story Warband members eluded me, I can only imagine how many other cool little details there are. I think this map's probably really good and really rich on in that side of things. Um... So, like, this guy here, Rudum Wormut, is he really a personal story warband member? Uh, so, we've got to obtain one from an effigy or a uh, ritual. Well, we're near a ritual right now. Is that it down there? No, that's the cash keeper down there, right? I know some of you guys are going to be cringing because you're like, oh, you've got to do it, WP. Is this the ritual? This event here. Um... But I really don't I really don't care too much about the rewards and the mechanics here. I've got an ungodly amount of gems right now. Oh, that reminds me, kinda of weirdly. Um someone sent a guild request. I like there was I had something like seven mails when I logged in today. I was getting mails to join the guild constantly last night while I was playing World vs. World. And then I woke up today with like another seven more. Someone sent me two gold. I don't accept donations to get this bud cup anymore. It's free. I've seen that glowing rubble. And uh, I well, usually what I do in that case is I'd send hit return to sender, but I instinctively clicked accept and deleted the mail. So I took someone's two gold last night. Um, whoever you are, I even sent them a response saying, "Hey, have the money back." And I meant to click return to sender, but then I just took it and I deleted it. So I can't tell who they were anymore. So if you're out there and you want your two gold, let me know. <laughs> You want your daily back. A twisted pile of uh, metal and scrapbook for a flame core. In this wreckage sits a glowing orb. It's warm to the touch. Motor, we've got a flame core. Get it to the nearest munitions, shaman ASAP. Time's coming when we'll need that crystal at full power. You know, I really like the way that they've integrated the um, the regular dynamic events into the personal story. It all weaves together quite well, you know. And look at this. You can pick which base you want to go to. I think this all feels really good. Okay. 
Well, uh, it was definitely you. You'd like the two cards. Well, look, they also sent another item, like for funsies, along with it. So, to confirm who you are, tell me what the item was. Mail me and tell me what the item was, otherwise... Commander, yes? Uh, how may this one aid you? I need this crystal infused with the power of the core, Smoda's orders. That's unusual, but I'll look into it. I know better than to question Imperator Smoda. One moment. There it is, it's done. Got it. What does it do? Gives us back an edge. Iron Materiel fell under Dominion control. Now they have a weapon we can't afford to leave in their hands. I've got the location of their supply bunker. Make your way there and await instructions. So there's quite a lot of questing you do for an unknown purpose for Smoda here. And I think it's important that it's quite a lot because it's I think it's supposed to kind of aggravate you as the player. They want you to be aggravated by Smoda. And this is just like another way they can do it. They've got the pack commander being a lackey, right? And then, so of course, this is quite an interesting moment. And I'd love to hear in the comments of the video, um, or here in the live chat, what you guys all made of this. Because again, I, I remember a lot of people really hated this. No, not that cog. Did you hear a voice? Not sure. Thought he said this was a supply bunker. Smoter, what exactly does this crystal do again? Destroy Dominion's ability to use iron resources against us. As I said. Yeah, but how? With a really big boom. You wanted a distraction? This is it. Stop wasting time and drop the grenade. I don't like this. Something feels off. This is war, Commander. We do what's necessary or we lose. So, we gotta be the goody two-shoes? A stream of smoke pours out of a large vent. So we can drop the crystal down the vent, or we can refuse to drop it down the vent. Let's try and refuse. It's the best cover we can give Kree and Malice. So Retlock does it, if we refuse. That was more than just a grenade. The way in has got to be below us somewhere. Let's go! Why does the commander say that was more than just a grenade like that makes it any worse? Look, if you're trying to kill him, if you're trying to hurt him, if you're trying to blow up the base, then you're trying to do it. Do it properly. What do you want to do? Just maim and injure them all? You know? I don't, I don't get that line at all. Anyway, the sound effect there is really cool. So, as Smoda says, it's war. It's not pretty. All the commander's ever known is pretty, as far as I'm concerned. There's always a way out. There's always a way to be the good guy, the goody two-shoes. So the giant door, we can go in. I love that transition animation. What have we done? What have we done? This is not how we save the char. Smoter, the supply depot was fully staffed. Yes, people are a resource. <laughs> you bastard. There's no time to be squeamish. We need to get serious if we're going to win. If we become the monsters, we've already lost. I'll check the bodies. Could be survivors. So, like, most of the hate I see I've seen in the in the past for this is people don't like that they got their commander got tricked into doing something horrible. And I just look at comments like that and I'm like, well. I don't like this because it just seems so out of touch and just idiotic from both Ritlock and me. You're at war! Look outside! There's entire camps being blown up, artillery strikes, people roasting each other with flamethrowers, grenades going all over the place. Like, what do you think that meta represents? It's like arena net, like, okay, we're gonna take our, our militaristic, brutal animal race, we're gonna put them in a civil war, and then we're going to make it look like... like I, I don't understand who they're preaching to. Yeah, war is ugly. And it's like... Okay, so... Smoda... Is written really well. You know, and clearly understands... You know, you have to do nasty things. It's not pretty. So do I compliment Guild Wars for properly giving that side of the argument a voice? But the thing is... They don't really give it a voice because everything they're doing is just trying to make you hate everything about Smoda and what he thinks and how he feels and stuff. I don't understand why the commander is so uppity 
and like squeamish. Like sque and again, they use the word squeamish themselves. So do I, do I credit them for that? Like it's just really weird how I'm forced to be on this side of the conversation, you know. And it's especially weird when you look at the genesis of Guild Wars 2 where it's like, okay, you can choose to be a fero role player as a ferocious character. You can choose to be a diplomat. You can choose to be a charming character. But we're just like railroaded into this just... Like, I just don't understand how the commander can be so stupid here. I love this scene because it's... Look, we're in the, we're in the grey here. But they've written... But by having the commander be this way, by having Ritlock be this way, the whole thing feels horrible to me. I, I really don't know how to discuss or package my thoughts on this story beat at all. I'm really curious what people think in the comments. I'm really curious what people think in the live chat. All I know is I hate the way that the commander acts here and the way that Ritlock acts here and that ostensibly we're the good guys and we're the ones with our heads on our shoulders, you know. If you're going to destroy the supply depot, if a bunch of your enemies in there, then you're going to destroy it. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going in circles now. Let me know what you think. I kind of want to applaud more than anything else that this story beats in the game. And I want to applaud how intelligently they did everything from Smoda's perspective. Just it's just all the baggage that's attached to it, you know. Right. Up for an on so, so let's see what was going on here. The, the corpses look unarmed. The uniforms are military, but nothing else makes them uh, seem like soldiers. Assuming that uh, that ozone you smell... Like, are they trying to tell me that these are civilians here on the front lines? Of the char. Do you know what I mean? Like, come on. Assuming that uh, that ozone you smell didn't come from that crystal bomb, it seems that this was an active workshop, not a supply barracks. And yet, the criticism that, oh, we had to do something ugly, so it's a bad story step, is something I cannot get behind whatsoever. It's like something I'd expect a nine-year-old to critique the game about, you know? Um, the inventions scattered around the room don't look like uh, any, uh, any you've seen before. This might have been a research and development group. And what were they researching? How to make flowers or how to kill us? There's a char corpse here. The char, the corpse of a char impaled on a spike. Give me some space, Commander. I'll let you know when I've got something for you. Um, did I not investigate this turret? Oh, this cave. Cage. Supply crate. From what you can see among the chaos, a lot of the inventions look like well-structured and nearly complete. Something you there imagine no Smoda would not appreciate. Life. Uh, Ritlock master us. I like that moment of Ritlock talking to us while we're here. Everything I'm seeing says this is more than just a supply bunker. As far as I can tell, they were doing some sort of weapons R&D. Smoter wasn't lying about that, at least. Doesn't make me feel any better. This won't either. I recognize her. She's one of Malice's personal guards. And she's carrying the Ash Imperator's sigil. Is that an order to defect? Could Malice be playing both sides? She's Ash. We've got to warn Kree. Let's not... Commander, enemy tribune near your position. Be careful. Let's not jump to conclusions. That thing about Ash playing both sides is really awesome, though, by the way. So, it swings and roundabouts. Suddenly, I'm really, I love that, that. Also, I love all the animations and stuff in here. It's really cool the way that they actually delivered this. And, like... This is like uh, the corpses you see impined, impaled by all the vines in um, the uh, the earlier stories with the Mordremoth stuff. Except now, they instead of vines, they're impaling people on, you know. And I mean, it's an ugly scene. It's a gross, ugly scene. And it's cool to see a little bit of the Krakatoric influence, too. With the crystals and make you think about the searing. So a lot of that's inspired. It's just the characterization of the thing. It's like they hit everything well except sort of just how they deal with the topic itself. Okay, so uh, meet with our party somewhere out in the middle of the map. And uh, this is the end of uh, the first patch, by the way. So this is actually kind of a shorter instance. This is um, usually about two hours is the bar, and we're going into the final instance now already. And I don't think it's a particularly long one. But so we're going to have this parley with Ryland and see if we can bargain using one of his <coughs> warband members. Have a conversation about what Smoda made us do. And as we do it, there's kind of that question about malice as well, which I think is nice. Uh, sorry, I'm not... Here it is. I remember being really captivated about the entrance here. Oh, by the way, when this all first came out, there was no cut uh, voice acting. Except there's a cutscene in this instance 
where one word was voice acted. In the whole patch, they had a single word that was voice acted, which is really interesting in how they could actually turn the COVID situation into something quite creative and artistic. <coughs> Why am I coughing? Full house. Ryland should be arriving soon. Logan, Kaz, why don't you guys hang back this time? You've been valuable allies, and I am grateful for all your help. But, Ryland... We understand. There's too much at stake. We're at your service, as long as you need us, Tribune Stongla. Call me Kresha. Commander, let's collect our prisoner. <clears throat> You like Ephraim here? Yeah, I quite like Ephraim in every season. Ephraim is one of the best characters of the Icebreed Saga. Bangar and Ephraim are two absolute killers from the saga. I love them both. Though Ephraim doesn't quite... The whole... Well, we'll talk about champions when we get it. Centurion, it's time. Chain me all you want. Ryland will never kneel to you. It's not about that. It's about saving our people. Including you. <sighs> You say that now, but get a little power. Sink your teeth in. <sighs> Cub, you've got a lot to learn. Save it. I've learned plenty. Seen and done plenty. Old heads aren't the only ones fit to lead. You've proven yourselves. But choices made in the field stay with you. They never explain why Logan only appears in South and is replaced by Ember in North. It's probably because as the funding left, they had to refine the scope of the story and they start cutting things away. It's like how Marjorie has no role here either. From flame, I expected backbone. Overstep again, and you will have to worry about Bangar. I'll rip out your throat myself. As if you've got the claws. I close my eyes. You sound just like Bangar. The, this is, um, breakout. That's kind of interesting. I can't remember. What do we do? Just press F? Again, I could buy all of this. I would love all of this if in the end there's some virtue to what Smodel's all about. If he survives the saga. If, you know, there's a, like a begrudging respect at the end of it. You know, if it's not just this whole downward slope into one specific idea. I could totally buy it. And I think it would be really cool to see all this tension. But we know that's not where they're going with Smoda. So, sort of ruins it. All right, break it up. You have good reason to be angry, Ephraim. But now's not the time. We need a pact with Ryland. Do we? We've retaken the territory. No reason to negotiate with Steelcatcher. We agreed. Ryland's our best chance to get to Bangar fast and stop him for good. Kreisha will speak for us. All of us. You got him here, Kreisha. Now get him to listen. Nice use of the irons mechanic here as well. Uh, mechanic? Um, animation? Whatever. So many char, I'm in heaven. You, Rylan, leading blood. That should be our future. Hope Rylan doesn't waste it. Or your lives. Warband above self. <laughs> A warband of two. What? <gasps> what? What? You haven't heard? Your playmates are defeated and dead. That's war. That's the end of the South, Meta. Real civil. Farrar can't teach you everything. You shoot him down in the, in the, the helicopter thing of the Meta is really cool and stuff. Steel it's all badass, man. Late. Maybe he doesn't value this one as much as you people think. <laughs> Smoder the unflinching. <laughs> I fought you. And I'm damn sure you gave yourself that name. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good moment for Redlock. This is such a mixed bag, man. There's so much stuff about this that I think is so fucking good. So good. Nice little map there as well. That's the, uh, upside down, though, I'm looking at it. 
Yeah, that's the old ice wall, by the way. You can see from the original version of the patch. Where, where before Tribune it was all melted and north was open. Tribune Stone Glow, I'm here. Your war bandmates. Uh, I'm very sorry for your loss. Are you? Gives you the advantage. You were told to come alone. I'm talking to Stone Glow. So, what do you want? Rejoin the legions. Put an end to our people killing each other. My orders haven't changed. The situation has changed. Vaishan, Nicobar, Ranoa. Are those orders worth your loyalty? And what orders are you giving? I'm not giving you orders. I'm trying to bring you home. <sighs> I'm not some cub who wandered off. And your hostage isn't a toy you're holding until I fall in line. Think. Bangar's compromised. He's trying to yoke an elder dragon. This war will get so much worse. Steel could turn the tide. Our people flock to you. They're your responsibility. You're their future. Oh, this old farce is a waste of- Simoter. <laughs> I see I like this. I like how quiet the commander is here too. Cause I, I can't do anything Ryland. to convince him. Every choice has a price. You chose Bangar and it's cost you the rest of your warband. Isn't that enough? Kreesa, we've always been straight with each other. You say steel's essential? We're vital to the future? Show of faith. Let Cinder walk out of you with me. I need some assurance. Too many traitors. Dude, Efren's such a badass there, man. Oh, wait, or is it Cinder doing that? I guess it's Cinder. That should have been an Efren moment. Smoda did nothing wrong. There was no guarantee Rylan wouldn't betray them. This is all genuinely. Commander, we need him. Go. We've got this. Currently, I would say this is all really good drama. I love how these guys have the mastery on the thing as well, like showing their influence. Um, I think this is genuinely all good drama and could go, could lead in to cool places and could do cool things. Um, I guess really the fault is with Drizzlewood 2 then, more than Drizzlewood 1, I don't know. Violet, wait! He's not going to get far. Our forces have taken the bridge. Then we don't need you, Smoter. You've done more than enough. I lanced a tumor and cauterized the wound. You absolute ass! We had a chance to save them, to bring them all home! I never needed traitors to win against Bangar. It's not a compromise I was willing to make. How do we get Ryland back? Smoter's head on a pike. I am a legion imperator with no honor. Kree should have let Ryland kill you. They're getting very Klingon talking about the honor there. I don't know, man. I, the fact, it's just that they mapped this onto Smoder. I would have bought it from a lot of other characters, but Smoder, the quintessential child diplomat doing this? I mean, in a weird way, perverse way, maybe that's supposed to help the whole beat, but I think it ruins it. Could you? What the hell is that? I warned you before. The Tribune was just a taste of Bangar's power. With Bangor's true leadership and vision, the Shaw had evolved! Oh Ridlock! They look like sons of Svanir. Ryland's gone! We can't let them get beyond this valley! Face the might of the Frost Legion! So there you go. So the Dominion are actually going to be the Frost Legion. So this is a really great moment as well. This might be lost on you guys, but what they're actually doing here is this is the, the trailer moment. This is the field of ice with the portals and you look in and mods are coming out of them. In fact, we can look at the animation here. 
So this is the idea. Like there's that's like a portal into the icy waste and all these guys. So I don't really know what surviving this ambush means. Do I even have to fight these guys? Can I just wander around for a bit? I'll get my thieves up. Wow, there's quite a lot of bleed there, and I actually have zero cleansed. The one thing you usually don't invest in on a PvE build. It's like quality of life to invest in cleanse most of the time. It's like get rid of cripple or immobe, get out of combat quicker. Who is this speaking to us, by the way? You haven't made a dent to our numbers. Commander, give my tank some targets. Oh, Verena Storm Sounder. Uh, wait for some more to come in. So it's not just Char. We get Ice Breed Code in here as well. Oh yeah, we get the airstrike. So the strike missions were still coming in. I think the strike mission on this patch was really basically the worst one. It's essentially this this fight here, but like really long. And I mean, it's okay, but. It was very, I think the achievements for it were like super grindy too. It's definitely my least favorite strike. It's a strike mission that does not take the form of a boss fight, by the way. Which is an interesting concept. I don't know how much End of Dragons will, will roll with that kind of idea. I wonder if I should turn Dash off and go for Vault. I've been enjoying Dash though. Dash sort of handles my Condi cleanse as far as like quality of life Condi cleanse all on its own because it will rip cripples. Um, I don't know where to aim it best though. There. Oh, it like triple casts it. I didn't know that. I should probably stand in the field though. Oh my god, that rev mace with the days and stuff there. That's so good. I'm gonna get out. Relying a lot on the blinds here. And invigorating precision to keep me healthy. Oh, the weakness though. Oh, I'm down. I'm so down here. Uh, might rally on this. How long is it? They're not trying to forcing me to die, are they? the fourth death experience? Oh, we'll see. Yeah, I should have waited with my thing until now, right? If we use the airstrike here, these will just all die. Straight up. Right now, it's all this confusion. Oh, nice. We get past me. Very opportune moment there for that. I'm gonna die if I stay there. I'm really scared of shadow stepping because um, if I accidentally do it out of range of the map, we're screwed. Bash some more blind up on in there. With dust strike. I love the name of that skill, man. Okay, here we go. Marina Storm Sounder. What is this? Throw enchanted ice. Throw a deadly orb of ice that explodes when it lands. Allies in the blast radius gain stability and frost armor. Hey? Ten targets? Oh, wait, is she a raid boss? Is that a raid stolen ability? You can tell how little I've raided on a thief since that patch. Is that a raid stolen ability? No way! Oh, it totally is, right? <laughs> Hold on, what bosses do you steal that from then? What snowy raid bosses are there? I guess in the underworld, maybe. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, and the Cold War Strike boss gives you it as well? Or oh, only him? It's, it's exclusive to this fight in the Cold War Strike. That is awesome. That's really... I did not know that detail. That's very cool. Let's get the break bar with which shot. Do it again. 
Um, we had a donation there. Hopefully I can read this while fighting. Uh, from Tri Delta. Thank you. Five dollars. Thanks to all the great Guild Wars content. Thank you. I've been watching for years. And this full playthrough is the best preparation I can think of for End of Dragon. Thank you. I don't want to... I feel like I've been a bit miserable in some of the parts. But hopefully it's really good. I mean, it's been good for me to refresh and, you know, take stock of the whole game as it goes. I almost said franchise. But the whole game, where we've come from. The other thing that I wanted to do was... Um, Winds of Change. But, you know, I already have a Winds of Change playthrough from years ago that's pretty good. Another Winds of Change would have been nice, but... I, I'm, I'm really happy that we've done this, guys. I really am. It would have been nice to have finished it the first week back in January, right? Instead of here at the end of February, but it is what it is. My original plan was to finish it probably but before, like, January 15th. And then I would have been playing Endwalker up until End of Dragons. You remember we started this right before Christmas. I don't remember this fight being so long or her being so tanky. This is a good fight, I think. Look at that. We even get a moment where we're frozen. These propaganda balloons are a big part of the map. There's like propaganda flyers being thrown down all over the place. I didn't know if I wanted to risk that last one. It worked. So this klaxon sound is what you get in the open world when the map's resetting and everyone gets siege. It's a cool, it's a cool audio clip. With one teleport plus uh, dash, we should be fine. Uh, by the way, there's an achievement to get out really fast and catch up with Ryland when we're running out. Oh, did I get tagged there? No, I don't think I did. Oh, is there anything better than being a dash daredevil in this instance? This felt awesome. We get to be uh, Naruto, everybody. What's Naruto's thing where he loves like the snake run? What's it called? Does it even have a name? Connor. No one here will ever bow to you. We've lost the bridge, and we met the Frost Legion. Bangar. He served our people up as slaves to Jormag. They're abominations. We've got to end this. Malice, what about your agents in Dominion? Uh, how did you... You're the Ash Imperator. I sent double agents to get eyes on Bangar. They will get us the intel we need to stop him. Give him time. <sighs> we'll continue to hold the territory. We'll heal. And when a way forward opens, we'll be ready. I like the idea that Malice there was actually um, just trying to keep her options open. But now that she's been caught with her pants down, she's like, oh yeah, the double agents. Um... Uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, somebody asked me What did they ask? Someone in the live chat had a good question. Oh, uh, thanks for the content. Have you listened to the last piece of conversation with Tommy and Gorik? Actually, no. See, here's the funny thing. Um, in current events, Season the Dragons, there is, the, as this goes along, basically this year's of content is a couple of conversations with Tommy and Gorik. I haven't listened to the last one. So in today's video, when we get there in a bit, we're actually going to listen to all of those. And we're going to see how that goes. There's some good stuff here at the end of the Icebreed Saga as well. We're going to have the conversations with Bangar and we're going to have this. And I've actually never listened to their last conversation because I haven't finished it. I haven't got the achievement. But I'm going to be getting it on screen here. So stick about in the video and we'll get there. So there we go. No follow-up dialogue at the end on this one either. And there you have it. So that's the end of Drizzlewood 1. Um, the Char Civil War in full swing. I guess there's another thing about the, the, the war being in full swing that feels a bit bad when they, they're going to tell the whole story in just this one instance. And this is the, you only see it in Drizzlewood, you know. 
When I think about a Char Civil War story, I think of conflict at the Black Citadel. I think about going to the Blood Citadel and having conflict there. I feel like Ash stuff should be involved. I feel like if you're going to do it in the Icebridge Saga, we should see conflict in the mountains. Like, And we do a little bit here, obviously. But like, that's kind of what comes to my mind. Um... So anyway, so this river, we are now going to north. Now, this is a really special patch. Because after this, the decision at this point has been made to make End of Dragons. This is the last, I'm going to use the phrase fully, I'm the last created world living world patch in defected. the game to date. When did they leave? A little over a week ago. I know the legions are supposed to be in this together, but I feel... Really alone. Being out here doesn't help. Makes everything seem emptier. Just keep moving forward. That's all we can do. So let's take stock, okay? Right now, we have felt Jormag's influence. We have never seen Jormag. Heads up, Commander. Scouts saw an enemy tribute nearby. I can't believe Get it. I'm not even them. in a story step and they're interrupting me. I can't believe it. <laughs> We haven't seen Jormag. We've we've communicated vaguely with Jormag, but not very much. Um, there's basic. There's been a couple of little vague hints about Prime Orders, but essentially nothing going on with that dragon at all. And uh, we're at the start of Jormag Rising. At the end of this patch, we will finally see Jormag. Now, here's the thing. Clearly, when they were making the Icebreed Saga, they had this idea of having both dragons taken out by the end. Internally, at this point, they've decided to do a Canthan expansion. There's a huge amount of story they've got to get through before we go to Cantha. They're going to try and tell all of it, basically, in one release, champion. So this is the end of the road here. And we can talk about the Deep Freeze theory very soon. So, with the arrival of the Frost Legion, the Charles Civil War is intensifying, and the Ice Dragon has taken notice. Receive, read the message from M. I don't remember this. M. Did you just get a dumb letter from Oh, Malice, right. A little caution can't hurt, though free to venture northward isn't exactly covert language. I just spoke with Malice. Whatever's happening isn't a spring thaw. We need all of you back here, now. Why can't Malice just say that? Why does everyone in Ash talk like they're reading bad code and poetry? It's standard operating procedure. The beachhead by the river. Meet us there. You'll notice as well, by the way. Have mentioned she was standing right next to you, Cree. No way to fit that in there. We'll see you on the beachhead, Commander. <laughs> You'll notice as well, by the way. At this point, there's certain weird oddities that are going on with characters. Kanark's been missing for ages. We haven't seen Kanark at all since Thunderhead Peak. He's just not been around. Um, and there was no goodbye or no explanation for that or anything. Rox, there were some subtle suggestions about her going off to live a life with the Omicron, but there was no proper goodbye scene. We didn't see her properly say goodbye to Bram. She didn't properly say goodbye to us. There was none of that. This is all just kind of lingering in the background, and we're actually a year forward now from the end of all of that, so stuff's starting to feel a bit weird in, in that regard as well with this episode. Anyway, M, is this a hint that maybe E is an agent of the Ash Legion and, and tags their, their letters slightly differently? Uh, birds travel north in spring, or is this trying to get us to forget about E to a degree? You say that lots of people just sign letters like this. It's been an unseasonably cold winter, yet seeing the lifting of this frosty broom brings a smile to my face. Birds, like all things in spring, are finally free to venture northward. Let us learn from their example. So, yeah, there, there was an ice wall. It's now melted. We have new areas we can get to in Drizzlewood. Um, so let's do that. In fact, could we pick, uh, the lighthouse here? And fly there. I love this here. Look at this. So here's the bridge itself. Nice excuse to see some of the airborne stuff in the game, which hasn't been in the playlist enough, I don't think. But hey. Griffin's an optional mount, so you won't find it in main story. Imagine a story instance that had, like, a mount run. Like what we experienced um, at the end of POF. but Or, like, when we were in the mists with the blish bit. And uh, But it's Griffin. How cool would that be if they made one of those? There's kind of an adventure in this map that feels a bit like that, where you are the raven totem and you just fly. But it's, like, really weird adventure. It's very, like, clean and smooth and just strange. If you combine them, M plus E, maybe the identity of E all along was me. 
Hey, we had another donation. Dude, thank you guys. Anthony, thank you. Um, always been a big fan of your content, they say. And I'm super excited to see what you do with End of Dragons. Oh, and you put a dragon emote there. Uh, content coming in a week. Yeah, I still haven't fully nailed down what I'm doing with it. But believe me, you guys will be in the know. Um, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. That's very nice of you. Your agents, did they... Uh, did they see him up there? Ryland? No. Your cub's been a bit of a ghost since the, uh, peace negotiation. Commander, as I'm sure you've noticed, the giant glacier blocking our way north has disappeared. How did it melt so fast? It didn't melt. It retreated, revealing a cave at the far end of the beach. Now we have an opening. Not yet we don't. The cave isn't wide enough to accommodate Smolder's heavy artillery. We need to make our opening. So, how are we supposed to do that? Without bringing Bangar's whole army down on us. Malice? You'll be going incognito, using one of our disguise tonics. Here's the plan. Yeah, Bram was missing in the last patch, too. Our first yeah. order of business is to clear away these siege cannons. We could hit those ammo crates. Should take care of the cannons. Dominion's got some ordnance you can borrow. Plant the charges, then detonate them on the far end of the beach. More cyclones. This patch is the one with a couple of achievements, and I think there's a story achievement. That. You'll be behind their patrols by then. Assuming you don't get caught. There is a story achievement I need. We might go for My it. What do you guys think? Waiting ahead to help you clear the path to the caves. So this will be our new base when Once we get to this cave path, and we clear this place up. Smolder can get his toys behind enemy lines. We'll all rendezvous at our camp in the cave. I'll get my agents into position. Good luck. This cave here at the very end. <clears throat> okay, we'll... Wait. Malice? Where did she go? I... No idea, but that was pretty cool. Let's get down there and take out those cannons. Right. We should try to avoid open conflict until we do. Ritlock? Did I say anything? I've got the disguise tonics. Let me know when you're ready, Commander. By the way, I'm being struck. Ritlock's not that bad, actually. I, I, I don't... I, I think he's alright. Certain moments in the previous patch were kind of frustrating, but... Um, yeah, that cutscene there, that does a fly-through of everywhere we're going to walk in the instance, I actually quite like. Uh, yeah, let me have a look here. So if I go to um, Story Journal, Jormag Rising, this is an adventure. These are all done. They're just infinitely repeating. Um, I think this is infinitely repeating. Maybe not. Maybe I need to save three more guys. Special mission I need to do. Talk your way out of trouble with the Dominion forces on the beach ten times. That's in this instance. Eliminate all hostile forces from the beach. That's in this instance as well. So kill everyone and talk my way out of it. And then you see there's a couple of others here. And then this one as well. Plant the charges without being spotted. So those are basically the last achievements I need in the game. Uh, come on, let me know when you're ready. Okay. All right. We'll need to move quickly and quietly. Let's go. See, all three of these, basically. This is weird. Shh. Pipe down. Keep a low profile. Ritlock. Did I say anything? And I think the fact that I've got all these achievements left to do kind of is a sign of how burned and sort of dis disenfranchised I'd become with Guild Wars around about these patches. Um, not necessarily entirely through the game's own fault or whatever, just who I am and how long I've been with the franchise and so on. Um... Right, so, if I fail one, I can do the other where I kill them all, right? So. Like, if I get caught, I can choose to kill everyone. Discipline in a cloud of smoke. Arm the mine when close to a target. Really turn this thing around. Watch to turn around. We're winning. Oh, we are? Is this what the winning first looks like? We'll watch your back, Commander. Well, we're not cutting off any more time. So that's red. Wait, 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 wait. What was that? Blue, yellow, red. Blue, yellow, red. Okay, that's one. 
And just you wait till the Frost Legion shows up. Legion to end all legions. It's gonna be a bloodbath. I really love that concept so much, man, of the Frost Legion. Like a whole new High Legion coming into existence. You might say it's a bit obvious or tropey or whatever, but I mean, it's, come on, man. It's, it's, it's great. It's a great idea. Do I need to sabotage these for an achievement, maybe? The speakers? Maybe I did that one already. It's good to have an instance with a ton of achievements in it, by the way. Okay, more charges. More guards on this one. Oh, shit. Uh, pipe down, rookie. We've got our own orders. Same as you. Ha! A soldier with a backbone. That's what I like to see. Wait, how do I know? Yellow, blue, red. Yellow, blue, red. All right, almost there. Keep it up. How do I know what the correct op option is? I can't always be ferocious, right? I mean, I just guessed that because char, and it worked out, which is great. Um. Oh. Uh. Oh, oh, he turned. I looked at the live chat and he turned at the right moment. That was so close. Oh. It's so unpredictable knowing where they're going to swap to. Oh. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. Red, yellow, Easy. red. Just stay calm. That's all three charges. Nice work, Commander. Okay, so we get off the beach. I wasn't caught. Surely that's one right, achievement, we're right? clear. Ridlock, blow the charges. Finally, my turn to blow stuff up. Spirits, that was loud. Okay, looks like we're clear. So I can't go back now and kill him. Uh, report, soldier. Report this. Looking for a mole, sir. We heard reports of a saboteur. We're tracking them. Is that the reason for these explosions? Yeah, sure. Hold on. Did you just say, yeah, sure? I said, yes, sir. I respect your rank of... What was it again? Centurion. And you better show some respect. Oh, no. I think I failed it. Oh. See, I failed it again. I didn't get any of the achievements again. I didn't get any of them. Not a single one. All right, whatever. I'll come back to that at some point. Maybe before End of Dragons, but who knows. I'm actually spending a lot of my time outside of uh, this story recap. All my gameplays in Worldless as well at the moment. I'm trying to get as many tickets as possible, because what I'd really like is to get World vs. World Legendary Armor. And I think my funds are getting to the level where I can finish a set, but I don't know. I think I can, I can get a diamond chest, one more diamond chest, and then there'll be reset, and another diamond chest before the expansion itself launches. Never call them that. We're gonna stop this, Cree. Get your ass we for the legions. All right, so we can progress up here now. See, I've spent a lot of time in World vs. World. Your malice is ancient. You were behind the line. What's the situation up there? It's bad. Vanguard's Dominion is being converted into Frost Legion at an industrial scale. Where is this happening? How do we stop it? There's a garrison of ice sitting over some Norn ruins. That's where the Char are being turned. Jormag is there. Then we shouldn't waste any time. Malice said you've got a camp farther inside. It's a work in progress. Actually, first we need to clear away the rest of these ice barricades. Hence, the flamethrower. Exactly. It's very effective against, you know, ice. Anyway, once those ice barricades are gone, you can head straight into the camp. Malice is expecting you. You're 360 tickets away from Conflux, and you're Mithril 1 right now, so you're not getting it before... You can get it. There'll be a reset. You can get, like, 350 or something per reset, right? Finish your diamond chest this week. And then when reset hits, do it again. That's still before End of Dragons. You can get Conflux. You know, it's quite a lot of World vs. World grind. But, you know, all I do is I just uh, I just flip camps on a really strong roaming build. 
and I spend most of my time AFK to be honest like or not like totally AFK but tabbed into another uh, window like just scripting this Solaris mod last night I made loads of progress I made a bunch of custom governments which doesn't really affect the gameplay very much I actually uploaded a new version of it right before this video um, so like there were problems with the mod before where like King Jarlis right of the Delgin War Dwarves they, you can set up all the perfect stuff. You can make them a monarchy, give them the best civics, master crafters, all that. But what the game will do is it will assign a government to them, which means their leader is a prophet. So it would have been Prophet Jarlis Ironhammer. Which I guess is like an all in at law thing. It's kind of a good idea. But I really wanted it to be King Jarlis Ironhammer. So I, I learned how to code like all this other stuff about like unique governments. So there's loads of them now. So now it's like High Council of Flax instead of like Science Directorate Flax. And, like, I went cool with it as well. It's not just King Jarlis. It's, like, Death's King Jarlis and, like, Ghost King Adelburn and, you know, like, I actually have Khan Ur as the leader of the Char now. And, like, the heirs are Imperators. So it's Imperator if it's a male. It's Imperatrix if it's a female. It's really cool. I mean, so I, that was, the, like, the big thing. And I just did World versus World while setting that up last night. I think I added something like 12 unique go governments for all the races that needed the most. Can we actually melt that one away? I guess not. I'm getting thrown off because it kind of looks like you might be able to do that, like with the flame saw in the Ryland mission from yesterday. Oh, I like me some big numbers. I like flamethrower in general. You know, there's actually something of a flamethrower build in PvP at the moment, which is getting nerfed. You know, I've never seen flamethrower actually feel as good as it's been in sort of the past half year meta or so. It's, and they're nerfing it as soon as it's because they don't like skill one spam. I wish when they decided to nerf it. I mean, they sort of say it's like a stopgap and that it's juggernaut they want to look at more than anything else. Maybe they'll do something with uh, shifting the power elsewhere. But yeah, there's a good flamethrower build that apparently stomps at low ratings. So anyway, melt the barriers is what we actually need to do. We don't necessarily need to melt all the Colossus. This guy's so tanky, Jesus Christ. I remember when I played this first, I did it with Kerry. And not only did we do it co-op, but I was playing like this busted Tempest build that I'd made. Where I splashed out 25 Might, Fury, um, and like Sand Schools and stuff. And I still had a lot of my own damage, and she was like a super, super glassy um, uh, soul beast that now had all this support and all this extra stuff, and we just destroyed this instance so hard. So this is all quite a novel experience for me right now. I have done it solo since when they added voice acting, but I can't remember my experience was back there. I don't think I used the flamethrower really. But hey, for the sake of variety. Should be fun. I can't believe it's getting dark already right now. I can't wait for winter to be over, man. Winter is always the, the worst time of the year for me. It always just absolutely ruins me. I was hoping taking a lot of vitamin D uh, supplements this year would stop me sort of... I don't know. But we're nearly in spring. Hopefully the sun will start coming out. Another donation, dudes. In fact, we've had two. We had Professor Gameburn. Thank you. With five Canadian dollars. Thank you, man. Hey, WP, I've been following you since Guild Wars 2 first launch. Thanks for all the videos you've created, especially for the Guild Wars 1 lore videos. The Guild Wars 1 ones. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, just a second ago, Candy Smith Demelza. That's a cool name, man. Uh, thanks for the fantastic playthrough. I've been watching since WTF No Healer. Your hard work's made my Guild Wars experience and days better throughout the years. I hope the donation can go to a hot plate for toasty coffees on the stream. Wow, you want me to buy... You're telling me to buy, uh, like, a heating thing so that my drink stays warm? Dude, that's actually a cool idea. What do I do, though? Do I plug that into the wall? Or is it, like... Aren't they USB-powered ones? If that's what you want me to put, that tw that's 20 pounds as well, man. If you want me to put 20 quid on that, I will do that. I absolutely will do that. Thank you very much. Okay, we are. We're in the cave. Because I do have that problem. Right now, I have that problem. Nice I have a little bit of coffee left, so it's cold. With those cannons gone, we finally got our foothold. 
Your agent told us about the garrison to the north. That Bangar's turning his army into Frost Legion. Tribune Doomforge. Bangar says when enough are converted, Jormag will wake. Thought he was crazy. Then the ice moved. Why would Bangar convert his whole army into Frost Legion? What if it's not Bangar calling the shots? We need to shut this down. Now. If Jormag's waiting for Bangar to deliver an army, then we'll destroy the army. How fast can we get Smoter and his siege engines up here? I sent out the invitation before we even started. But we should be proactive. Yeah. Commander, I'm gonna check out those Norn ruins near the keep. Might be a way in under there. Good idea. And while we're gathering our forces here, we'll start chipping away at Bangar's line. Alright, there we go. <clears throat> At least there's a bit of post dialogue here. Hello, uh, Ember. Uh, Malice wanted me to uh, not make this personal, but I think we both know better now. Uh, so it's good to see Ember here. Um, if you guys don't know Ember Doomforge, you should listen to my Ghosts of Ascalon audiobook. Again, this is great. This is like when they implement the personal story characters around. Here we've got um, someone from Dougal's group. You might have been able to see D Ember just standing around in certain places. Like Dougal Keen, the protagonist of the, uh, the Ghosts of Ascalon novel. He's at the uh, the guild the guild headquarters. See, if Arena Net ever put more emphasis on the guild missions and you know all that kind of content, which I do think is actually really important because it helps keep communities in the game and stuff. If Arena Net had ever done that, you would have probably got to know Dougal a lot better. But he's here. He's at the guild initiative headquarters. Anyway, uh, Ember might have been around somewhere. I don't know. Maybe someone in the live chat's got that detail. Or someone in the YouTube comments as well. Um. But it's cool to see her be a main part of the story. This is like literally the the last patch though, right? As far as we actually get to properly look at the Char Civil War and all that. You know, you might be wondering, wow, we're already doing the Frost Legion thing. They're all converted. The whole army's converted. My god, this is moving so fast. And it's because it kind of has to. Because they've made this decision to get away from all of this. So, yeah. Um, but they squeeze Ember in. Malice warned me not to make this personal. Ember, is that you, we say? Ember Doomforge. I was part of the group that went after the claw of the Connor. Seems so long ago. Commander, I wanted to thank you. El Moro was my granddam. Because of you, I know the truth. What happened to her? Bangar killed Almora. And now we're going to kill Bangar. Damn, man. Um. And that's a really great little hook as well, that that would be her big motivation about Almora. And that gives players a little bit more release as well, and time to think about Almora's death. Instead of it looking like it's going hastily past. Jesus, what's going on here? Full Brumby with $10? Add this to the self-eating coffee mug? I have one and it's amazing. Okay, if you guys give me a link, if you've covered the price of this stuff, I'll do it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It'd be my pleasure. Um, I need to start taking pictures of things. I need to take a picture of the goddamn PC, man. I don't think I still ever did that. My god. Um, and that dang boy. Uh, donation party for hot beverages of 9.99. Look, I, if, if, that, if you're saying that goes on it as well, uh, then I'll do it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. That seems like a weird like little gadget thing that usually I'd avoid, but to be honest, it might be quite nice. Uh, aren't you vigil? Now and always. And when my Imperator told me about this op, I wanted in. Needed in. After what Bangar did to Amora, the Vigil's turning its focus from dragons to Blood Legion Imperators. Well, just the one, really. <laughs> um, she's got a cool, like, Vigil vibe to her her outfit as well, though. Uh, where's the rest of the Vigil? Javi's mopping things up in Biora Marches, and Larenthir's getting up to speed. He was in the Grove when Amora... <sighs> Sorry. We all hoped things would get back to normal after Croc. But maybe this is the new normal. See, such a big part of me wants to see future stories focus on the Priory. Have the Priory be like a really active agent in a future story. Have the Order of Whispers be a really active agent in a future story. Look at all those characters. Because we've spent so long with Almora and the Vigil. But it's funny, based on what's happened in the Icebrood Saga now, I'd be just as happy to stick with the Vigil. Because now you've got, you know, Ember that could be in the story. You've got Jarvi. Jarvi deserves a lot more storyline, you know. Um, she was set to have such a prominent role in this season. And then what happened, you know? Jarvi. And then, of course, Loranthia, one of my favorites. So they're all just great characters that I want to spend a lot of time with. 
They're all rich new characters that hopefully the devs can do. I gotta see what they're doing after End of Dragons, man. How Living World looks and all that stuff. If they can nail it, then, oh, there's such good stuff still possible with Terrier and for us to see and do, man. Oh, optimism. I must cling to it. Okay, so, uh, Commander, Krisha? Ram went on to explore those Norn ruins. They're up ahead, end of the cave tunnel. All right, I'm going to follow him. Could be our way inside that keep. Good idea. I'll go with you. No, you'll stay right here. <laughs> You're wasting your time. When my cannons are ready, we'll walk right in. Through what's left of the front door. At which point, Rylet will take you out, because that's literally the most obvious thing you could do. Let him try. Next time I see him, there won't be a flame shield between us. No, there won't. This is nice as well. When this came in without voice acting, this was a lot harder to follow. My god, what on earth? What is this? Mortar, but it had rainbow effects on it. Oh, it's the parachute. But he's got... Wait, the rainbow animation's landing on the parachute? Is that because he's using the heel? And he's got the... Uh, that's the amulet we're going to unlock in a minute, by the way, that he's got there. That's crazy. I didn't know the visual effect went that, that nuts. Okay, so... Um, Oh, I was going to say something, and now I'm distracted by these. Look at all our boons as well. Thank you for the air support. Oh, yeah, I was going to talk a bit about the metas. The south meta is really good. If you're just watching this series, if you're trying to get in the headspace for End of Dragons, and you're trying to, like, get positive about Guild Wars, I'm really excited, uh, and you've watched this playlist, do yourself a favor. If you haven't done the south meta, do it, and do the north meta as well. This is really great. There's a Claw of Jawmag fight that feels a bit like Jakar. It's got new mechanics. You get to fight a giant tank. There's just so many awesome phases to it. Just do a whole Drizzlewood. Do a whole Drizzlewood because you don't see it in the main storyline, but it's such a cool part of everything that's going on here. I don't know what they were talking about there. Okay, so let's move on up. Um, after I complete the a Simple Negotiation instance, which shows Smoda's fate, three unmarked journals become available. They're all focused on Bangar and the Frost Legion. Good job. I get But I kill Jormag, or Jormag kills me. I don't know. I'm not sure how that ends. I am. Figured. Thanks, Commander. Okay, so they're doing something here. I didn't talk about this before. They obviously established this idea that Bram or the dragon dies, right? They've started really flirting with this idea of Bram dying. And you might say, given all the character development and everything that happened earlier, you might say the character's cooked. This is his big time to shine. A heroic sacrifice befitting of his mother or whatever at the end of the saga could be quite poetic. Could make sense, allow us to focus on new cast members. There's a lot of writing on the wall that suggests Bram might not, and it might even be a, the right move to make, to kill Bram off, right? And have him not survive the saga. Um, especially when you look at how ArenaNet treated Traherne, another character that the community didn't generally like, even though he deserved to be like, just like Bram deserves to be like, I think. I think they earned his resolution. A lot of the community didn't like Traherne, so they killed him off. And you might think, well, okay, so that could be something they do with Bram. And it might even be right, and it might be natural, and there could be a really effective and decent and fun way of doing it. Um, so they're flirting with it, and they know that we're thinking about it. We'll see what they do in Champions by the end. Um... I love this cave area here, by the way. All right, so, yes, this thing with Smoda, there's some journals you want me to read after the moment. Well, just remind me when the moment comes up, and I'll see if I can find them. Uh, so... Yeah, we're going to kind of move at lightning speed here. I've messed this up. we got to stay in the cave. Am I too high? Am I too low? Something tricky about... Oh, yeah, it's over there, right? Because I went right when I was supposed to go left. So at the end of um, this season, I did sort of a big sort of pillory against the decisions they made. And one part of my, like, scathing criticism was to do with the decision with Bram at the end of this. Does he die or does he not? I don't actually think there's, like, a, a fact to this. I think it's very much an opinion thing. Quite often I don't like saying that because I feel like it's a cop-out of meaningful discussion and stuff. Um, but I really do think it, it might be a thing of personal preference. We'll get there when we get there. Again, the lighting and stuff here in this area is fantastic, isn't it? 
very varied. The fiery section, and now we're in the um, icy bit here. These are the spirits of the wild. Bram, what is this place? This is where the spirits first revealed themselves to the Norn. I can feel them. All of them. Like the charge in the air before a storm. I've never felt anything like it. Can you talk to the spirits? Like in Bura Marches. If they open this door, we'd have a straight shot to Jormag. The spirits are... They're here, but they're restrained somehow. Something's wrong. Commander, learn anything about the ruins? It's a temple honoring the spirits of the wild. There's magic here. Powerful magic. Guess now we know why Jormag picked this place to hunker down after Tiny's machine conked him out. Can you get that big door open? Let's find out. Great spirits, I am Bram, Nord of Prophecy. Please grant us passage to this most sacred of temples. Okay, so that was a long shot. I'll need more time to figure this out. While you're doing that, I could use the commander's help. Malice just gave me a list of targets. Anything I can do to ruin Bangar's day. What have you got? Transmitter towers. Dominions using them to triangulate targets for their artillery. Malice's agents are finding more targets. I'll send them over once the transmitters are gone. Okay, so we want to get three communication towers destroyed. And we'll use an EMP to do it. So let's just go back to the original camp and grab one. I don't know where else we can pick them up. This is kind of an interesting vibe in this cave as well, by the way. Because the way that Jizzlewood set up before is there's only one waypoint. And you're supposed to flip these, like Wild versus Wild, and they become waypoints for you. And yet when episode 2 comes out, there is a waypoint, like, halfway up the map. That you don't have to earn, so to speak, through the meta. It's not a big deal. It's just, or it's not a deal at all. It's just an observation. It's quite cool that, um, oh no, never mind. I was going to say, it looks like North had just started here. So it's like the map is progressing as we're progressing through the story. Set up the way station. Wait, what do I grab from this? Yeah, it is EMP. Remote charges for like breaking those other structures like the gates and stuff. Which I could have imagined would have been here. Uh, there were some really good side uh, collections and achievements, other little bits of lore around here as well. The adventures, dealing with some of the other spirits of the wilds. Um, they talk a little bit about the Norm, like Eye of the North and Norn stuff as well in one of these collections. This is also where a really good reward came into the game, the Otter. Um, which I really liked about part two. A, a lot of the standard stuff with the patch, like the rewards and the kind of events you do and stuff in all of the Icebridge Saga, I think stayed at a really good quality. It's just the actual plot itself. Too little butter, too much bread. That whole situation. Okay, I'm trying to... I'm like stuck smack bang between all three towers. Should have gone to this one first. I like that these guys snipe me while I'm on the sky scale as well. A little bit of a counterbalance to the crazy mobility they give you. Any updates on our big stone door? Well, I can't speak with wolf, snow leopard, bear, or raven. I feel their magic, but they're not responding. It's not enough to open the door. I think I'll need to channel the magic from all the other spirits. All of them? Even the corrupted ones? Just, uh, give me some more time, okay? This whole thing about this is the first place the spirits of the wild communicated with the Norn and all of that. That feels again to me like one of those things. It's a bit like the Tomb of the Primeval Kings in POF. It's like, it feels like a, a big deal. And it's just kind of dropped in there quite quickly in this release. Oh my god. See, ideally, they would have talked about how that is somewhere around here and Bram's interested in that area like two or three patches ago, you know. That way this stuff is like slowly and emergently and interestingly sort of provided. Again, if we see a supply caravan event here, I want to take it out because it is an achievement. So there's a claw flying around up here. I love these icy vein things as well around here. Last tower. Good work, Commander. 
Should make the assault easier, without constantly having to worry about death from above. Still plenty of that. Maybe you noticed the claw of Jormag flying around? Yeah, hard to miss. We still need some time to prep our forces. In the meantime, you up for some more sabotage? I think I can squeeze it into my schedule. Um, that was really cool that I mentioned the claw and then it was immediately there in the story. Hold on, they want us to do this in South. Okay, kill commanders, destroy weapon racks, gather intel, complete event. So just standard stuff, right? Weird. I don't remember them taking us back to South here like this. I guess I'll waypoint back. I'll eat some birthday cake, sure. Um, that was a fast loading screen, and it was just loading assets in slowly, which I actually kind of really, really like. Uh, destroy weapon racks. I guess I'll just refresh the EMP, why not? You think the Tomb of the Primeval Kings is oddly displaced? I, I, I like everything about the Tomb of the Primeval Kings in Guild Wars 2. I think to worry about its exact place if you get out a goddamn ruler on the world map and stuff is, is sort of, that's nitpicking to me really. I, don't, I sort of don't mind that very much. But you know, there's kind of a really grand scale and a special vibe to the exterior and the interior. A lot of really great story happens there. And that's the kind of treatment I would want for, the, for that special place Bram's trying to get. We got a little bit of credit for something there. Okay, EMPing the listening device doesn't do anything. Just pressing F on it doesn't do anything either. So let's see, does repairing stuff do stuff again? No. Destroy weapon racks. Surely that means being in a place as it's flipping, right? Or going there early. Because by the time that we own it, surely all the weapon racks are blown up. Maybe? Aren't I competing with other players for this as well? Gather intel. I wonder what it means by gather intel. What do I do? Speak to someone? Smoter could never be. So actually, there's an escort going out of the flocks and flocks and mine right now. So let's go over here, and um, let's just follow this event as they flip this camp and see what kind of progress we get. Because maybe killing commanders will get a lot of them here. Oh, by the way, the curious carvings. I don't have that either. There's a couple of those I have yet to do for the uh, the Tengu weapons. So yeah, there's a little bit of Tengu stuff here as well. Obviously, that gets everyone excited thinking about Canther and End of Dragons, and it was kind of a big talking point when this was fresh. Back when the potential that Tengu might be playable with the X back was still on the table. So, I would like to see I've got other players with me. I do, a couple. I can tag up as well to telegraph this is actively being done. Hey, don't walk away from this! Target in sight. Again, I don't really want to do much damage to each individual. I just want to make sure I've tagged every individual if it's true that it's progressing from hitting them. Shortbow might be the better choice there. Don't know if I hit that guy. Yeah, it looks like just hitting enemies actually. It's progressing it really fast. It's ice boot intel. I don't remember getting this. There's also uh, a really big collection I don't have yet for the dragon scale page. About what? We're preparing a frontal assault on the keep. But I hear your friends are considering an alternative. We're considering anything that will work. If Bram can get this door open, then if he can't, what do we do? Sit on our tails while he solves puzzles? With all due respect. Imperator, we'll discuss this in person once I'm done up here. You 
This tracks really well being a human through this story, by the way. Like, I can totally buy that my commander right now is really not doing well with Smoda. If I was a Char, I think I'd feel even worse. It's weird. On this, female Asura, I just kind of feel nothing. I feel no connection, no deep history or sentiment with anyone or anything. I feel like a total neutral state, you know? List just kind of meanders around or something. I don't know. There's something weird about it. I, I guess I'd probably feel that way as a male Asura as well. There's something about the Asura that... Maybe it's the kind of stories that they've told so far. I'm just trying to imagine. What about when I'm at Ratanovus and stuff? Or Rata Primus before in Season 4? Is that what it was called? Rata Primus? Primus? Oh my god, I don't know whether I've actually got that as a fan in there. Yeah. I did a bunch of other nameless changes last night as well. I did like a... Uh, I added like worm core to the awakens, so they're like fleets that they can have. There are like mummy class ships. There's Janundu class battleships, ancient Janundu colossi. There's all kinds of new stuff. And I also saw that one of my name lists was totally broken. I had like a weird bug with one of the dwarven races. I think it was um, the uh, the stone summit's leader was no no. It was the Delgamore Dwarves accidentally had Dagnar Stonepate as their leader, not Jarlis. Like, I had it swapped. Which is pretty sick. This is weird. I suddenly got a ton of credit, and now suddenly I'm getting no credit. I don't want to just hit this guy in any event. Let's see if we can kill this guy. And get... Dude, miss, 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 block, block, block. It's on PvP. Miss, 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 miss. What? What's going on? Oh, because I was... Oh, it's the bounty mechanic. Oh, my lord. I was, I was like, it, that seemed weird. Like, the blind should have ripped, but it wasn't. There's one more guy. I originally wasn't interested in that elite. Because I thought it'd be too tanky. But the other players here dealt with them. Veterans. We got two more kills, something like that. Oh. If I just EMP random enemies, what consequence does that have? Oh yeah, keep my eye out for weapon racks as well if I can. I might have dealt with those already. Oh nice, we get a good stun. I like that skull crack in PvE. Is a thief stolen? Let's try it. Let's just randomly EMP this guy. Pretty good stun. It only just occurred to me that this is literally the break bar thing that we've cheesed for like two years now. Should have considered that. Oh. I was just thinking about it in the story context. There we go. So Malice is trying to talk. There's lots of overlapping stuff. So. Where are we on preparations? Smooth and friends. Every day counts. We will take this territory. We're conflicting opinions on how exactly we're going to kick Bangor's ass. That's an understatement. Come back to base. You might need to break the logjam. <sighs> you don't say. Okay. I swear, the human male is so, uh, just fed up and tired all the time. That's how I would describe him. Fed up. <laughs> Commander. What are you up to? Not killing Smoder. <sighs> that bad, huh? He and Bram are going toe-to-toe -to -toe on strategy. Neither one's a bad plan by our standards. But we were this close. This close to getting Ryland back. I know. So, yeah. Not killing Smoder. Harder than it looks. Again, look, I I'm not saying my idea is perfect, but... You want to take the commander and a strike team through the Norn ruins under the keep? Yeah, then we go straight up to Bangar and take him out before he wakes up Jormag. Have you even opened the door to the ruins? Well, 
Not yet. We need the commander with us on the front lines. I am going to stop Bangar, and you are going to help me. Bram, how close are you to opening the door? Close. The spirits are there, and the carvings clearly say their magic is what opens the way. Big moment but coming up, of course. you haven't been able to talk with them, or else they would have let you in by now. Commander, we can't wait for this. Magic. My siege engines are ready. Let's kick in the front door. Yeah, uh, more. I like how they write a little bit more of his distrust of magic too. At the same time here, uh, so consider Bram's plan first, Commander. I know I'm asking for a lot here, but I'm sure I can find us a way into the keep. What is the key to open in the, the door? Spirits of the wild, their magic channeled through the runes around the door. I've been trying to get wolf, raven, leopard, and bear to answer, but I think they're keeping their distance. Maybe for good reason. Maybe, but we haven't exhausted our options yet. Well, you mentioned the corrupted spirits. What was that all about? Yeah. If the other spirits won't answer, maybe they will. It worked back at Jakar Lake. Are they still corrupted? I can handle it. Uh, what do you think of Smoda's plan? Don't get me wrong, Commander. I'm all about kicking in the door and blowing up the place. But this is Jormak's territory. Bangar's got the advantage. Yes. No telling what surprises he's got waiting for us in there. This is what Iron trains for. This is what we do, Commander. Okay, give me a moment. And now, Smoda, what's your case? Bram's plan is a good one. At least he's nice about that. But Jormag gets closer to waking up every second, so we need to march now. What's between us and the front door? Ross Legion, Svanir, and Icebrood. Don't forget the claw of Jormag flying around out there. Stiff resistance, but I know Bangar's strategies like the back of my paw. Imperators study each other. Then that means Bangar knows your strategies too. He absolutely knows your strategies. And it will avail him nothing. <laughs> Malice. I will end him, Commander, and you will help me. Dude, I love his br bravado. He just bulldozes through that. <laughs> I love a character that bulldozes. I tend to be a bit like that conversationally <laughs> as well. Um, the Chlorodormax stuff's really good as well, by the way, because it's like, you know, when we were looking at Drakkar, and when we're looking at Bone Skinners, and when we're looking at the, the, the Whisper of Jormag, the Snake, and when you're looking at the Aberrant and the Fallen and all this stuff, it's like there's this whole mess of new stuff going on. And it makes the Claw of Jormag seem a bit, or a, a, the, 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 the entities, Claws of Jormag, it makes them seem, you know, like old hat or like forgotten or something. But the fact that they're here at the end and integrated and they're talking about them and stuff is really good, man. Why do you need me on the front lines? Your presence will send a message to the legions, to Bangar. He'll see his time has come. What he'll see is all his enemies in the same place at the same time. We call that an opportunity. I call it fighting on the front lines, Sword Shadow. Something you don't know anything about. Okay, what do you think of Bram's plan? I think if that door was open, we'd be having a different conversation. But Jormag will wake up. And soon. Every second we argue is the second we give Bangar and the dragon. Okay, give me a moment. So, oh, this is really good, dude. This is exactly the kind of thing I like. Uh, hey, Casimir. Smoder is confident. Maybe too confident. But this is what he does, for better or worse. The ruins under the keep might be a safer choice, but we'd be fools to think Bangar doesn't know about them. Well, but if he can't open or do anything with them... I think we should give Bram the time he needs. If we go all in, we put everyone at risk. We don't know enough about their defenses. We don't even know how many Frost Legion are in there. I don't like it. I'd never admit it to a stupid face, but Smoter's probably got the right idea. We can't just sit around. Okay. Um, uh, so we get to... Alright, Commander. What do you think? I think we... What is... <gasps> what? No! Smoder! Ryland, we've got every exit covered. Drop your weapons. You drop yours. This isn't a negotiation. Commander, get down! Dude, I love how he throws the sons of Spani there. You know what? My memory of that... We can't let them take the camp. 
my memory of that was that that was a cutscene. That was actually that that moment is executed really well. I remember it kind of crashed me just seeing what they did, and then then everything that they've done about Smoda's character made sense, and it sort of the, the idea of the plot beat. I don't like, but the way they do it is awesome, right? And the idea of having a shock moment where one of your allies gets sniped is also awesome. Yeah, it's a cool moment for sure. Um, dude, as I was speaking there, I noticed they had that Heart of Thorns UI with the, the, the arrows facing in, in different directions and stuff. And I was like, wow, they're really going all out on this decision here. And I was just thinking to myself as I was pressing F that last time. I was thinking, but we don't actually make a decision. There isn't actually a branch. So how is this? And then I realized, oh, it's all just a trick anyway. So it's actually a really cunning, cool little instance there, if you think about it. Because what they're doing is they're setting up... Everything's a farce there. The idea we're actually going to make a choice and stuff. Because it, because this snipe is going to happen and interrupt the scene. It's a good moment. It is a good moment. The idea in the moment, I don't love very much, but it's a good moment. Well, it, I think all of this is perfect if basically there was just another character, sort of a bang R replacement, that did all this smoda shit. A lot more than that. And it was him that got sniped, blah, 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 blah. What if your double agents get caught? We've been blowing up their camps, loudly. We knew this was bound to happen. Yeah, but not this soon. And not with a hole in Smoder's head. Doesn't change anything. <laughs> You're right, there we look. Every second we stand here, more Frost Legion enter the field. Who's Iron second in command? Most likely Mia Kindleshot, Tribune. Smoder trusted her. She helped us fight Kral Katorik at Thunderhead Peaks. Where is she? <clears throat> Not here. But we'll find her. No time. Ephraim, you worked pretty closely with Smoder and Iron south of the line. I did. Doesn't mean Iron will take orders from me. They saw you fight alongside Smoder. They respect you. I'll help you organize the rank and file. What should I do? If you can get that door open before we march, we'll go with your plan. But that's as long as we wait. Kresha's right. The more we talk, the bigger the Frost Legion gets. And the closer Jormag is to waking up. We're not just fighting to stop Bangar. We're fighting for the future of all the Char. Bram? I won't let you down. Commander, meet you there. So yeah, this opens up a bunch of crazy and cool fallout from the end of the Icebrood Saga as well, like what Iron looks like under Meyer and so on. And it's great that they start talking about her. Yeah, I, I think Ritlock got stuck on this turret or something, maybe. I don't know. Smider might have been an ass, but I'm not sure he deserved that. Ryland had the drop. He only became an ass two patches ago, dude, because they wanted to do this. Don't worry. Ryland had the drop on us. It could have been worse, a lot worse. I guess, yeah, but if Smoder hadn't killed Cinder, we wouldn't be in this situation, I know. Okay. Um, what's Efren's take on this? This is a disaster. An Imperator has been assassinated in cold blood. We can't let it distract us. Smoder wouldn't want that. We never agreed on much, but both he and I knew that Bangar was just the first of many problems the Chara have before them. You mean Jormag? Jormag, the Dominion, the very beliefs that got us here. Smoda knew that poison runs deep among the Char. I can't remember what the commander says there, but I'm sure it was something lame. This is inconvenient, to say the least. Uh, that's all you can say? Smoda and I, we've had our differences, but we've always made things work for the good of the Char. Now, well, we owe him a lot, despite everything. We do, and Iron will remember him a certain way, but Ash, Blood and Flame, we'll all remember him in different ways, I'm sure. We can't let this halt our momentum. We seize up and we die. We're not going to stop. I'll work with Bram on the door, and I'll do what I can to help Iron get in line. Smoda has had a lot of supporters. They won't stand for this, and I don't blame them. To be honest, actually, I kind of really like this story, but I don't know. I'm all over the place with how I feel about some of this stuff. Look, if you just on paper tell me, hey, WP, there's going to be a big Char Civil War storyline, and one of the major bullet points is Smoda's going to get assassinated. If you just take that as a principle, I, I'd be like, oh, that sounds awesome. Hell yeah. So I don't know. It depends what lens I give it. Um, hey, Commander, you doing okay? I'm fine. I can't believe Ryland got the drop on us. I heard how angry we was after Cinder, at you, at Kresha, but Smoda more than anyone. We should have taken greater precautions. Can't blame yourself. Knowing what I know about Ryland, he would have found his way in here eventually. That's a good point. Anyway, let's focus on getting into Jormag's keep. We don't get to talk to Ember again. That sucks. Okay. But yeah, the, the cinematics at that moment is really cool. So apparently there's a journal here at the camp. Where we can... Uh, Journal of Dominion Military Orders. 
This is an order from Bangar. Yeah, these are just from Bangar, and I'm sure I collected those around the map. Imperator correspondence. To Imperator Sword Shadow. Subject, your support. I think as Imperators, it's important we maintain some sense of professionalism on our personal interactions. So I'll do my best to ignore your outburst during our tactical retreat from the Frost Legion ambush. If you have a problem with my methods, I'd remind you that double agents have done little that your double agents have done little except get caught, all while putting on a show that puts my own char in danger for on a regular basis. Any contributions they've made to the war effort, aside from uncovering this cave, which didn't even help in the end, elude me. Quite possibly because you've kept those contributions to yourself, and that's only if I give you the benefit of the doubt. Then you said I would never be Khan Ur, as if I might need your permission to obtain it. It seems you don't appreciate our current situation. Until recently, we'd been getting along fine without a Khan Ur. Each legion controlled its own people, there was a friendly competition, and the Iron Poor always knew what the Ash Poor was up to. But Bangar changed that. We didn't need a Khan Ur because we all agreed, as Imperators, that a balance of power was better. And it was, until the balance was gone. This is interesting because this is all like story. This is amazing, by the way. This is really good. This is really good. But um, it's also interesting to me because, you know, for a long time they never had a, a Kana because there was no goddamn claw. <coughs> and they very much gloss over the outcome of Ghost of Ascalon with the claw and how the humans use it as a bargaining chip in the treaty and so on. And like these conversations, I think, are long overdue. I, I love that we're getting them here. And it was until the balance was gone. Now there are two char. There's the United Char, there's the United Legions, and the Dominion. One will conquer the other, and one of them is in league with an Elder Dragon. If they win, it'll be the end of us. I agree. That's why even when Bangar's dead, we cannot let this idea persist. Sorry, his idea persist. It's not enough to kill them. We need to win. Sorry, enough to kill him. We need to win. The legions as we knew them may return someday, but until we get the char back on track, I think you'd agree we need a strong leader with experience bringing enemies together to prevent anything from, like this from happening again. You and I haven't always seen eye to eye, and we don't have to here. Just know when the time comes, I expect your support. So what he's essentially saying to her is these are crazy times, so if I want Khan Ur to unite the high legions, then I'm going to become fucking Khan Ur, and you don't get to stand in my way. That's what he's saying. That's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant uh, book. What about this one over here? This is Correspondence 1. This is to the Black Citadel. Signature required. In the Farrah, we're all told that our Legion is special, the best of the best, and comparable to no other. To some, it's intended to foster competition with the other Legions, a way to drive us to keep improving. Sorry, uh, a way to keep driving us to improve. I don't need to explain to you that I believe something different. I believe that Iron is, in fact, the finest of all the Legions. So you can imagine my surprise when I received a stack of parchment taller than a tank's drive sprocket, they suggested otherwise, that your Imperator had made questionable decisions that were considered excessive by some in the Black Citadel. Language was used that lesser char might even find threatening. Every day, we're under siege from some new threat. Stopping one does not stop others. In my vast experience on the battlefield, I would go so far as to say that winning against one foe only emboldens the remainder. Bangar is the latest in a long line, and it's clear from my victories in Drizzlewood that I am the only one equipped with the means of ending him. I was the only Imperator to see humans weren't our enemy. I bring this up only to illuminate a greater point. In that, in in that instance, as in so many others on the battlefield, lesser individuals believed I was wrong, and I was not. But still, I had to fight tooth and claw to pull the others into Ebonhawk. And look what happened. Without that treaty, we never would have beaten back Zaitan or Morgamoth. It's weird how he takes credit for the pact efforts here. Or Kraukatorik. Without that treaty, my treaty, Tyria would be gone. The other Imperators and even the Command are still grappling with this fact. But Black Citadel is keenly aware that I will be ascending to Khan Ur once Banger is dealt with. There is a reason we all see it as a foregone conclusion. And I would urge you to remember that, you're that in your future correspondence. The Char have lost their way, corrupting their forms and mass to appease the whisperings of a malevolent Elder Dragon. The laws of warfare you reference in your thinly veiled threats simply do not apply to a force that cannot even abide by the laws of nature. You suggest I temper my methods? Would you march into battle with a half-sharpened blade? I don't leave things half-finished, because half-finished is fully useless. When I send a threat, I sign my name to it. The next time I receive one and it doesn't have names attached, I'm tossing it straight into the fire. Look how good these are! What exactly these are incredibly good. Is there one more? So one, two, three? What, what worries me is I've read these before and yet completely purged them from my memory somehow. 
to Kindle Shop. So this is Maya, who they were just talking about at the table, and she'll be Imperator now. Subject, acknowledge, not actioned. You know that line you don't cross with your Imperator? Turn around, there it is. If I needed you here, I would have sent orders a week ago. You do not impose yourself on me, and you do not insist upon your presence. Iron is stretched thin, and I need my best people in the places I know they'll do the best good. I acknowledge you want to be here to end Banger, but, but must deny your request to transfer all the same. This is the front line of a larger war tribune. Treachery runs deep throughout the legions, throughout Tyria, and leaving a single opening anywhere will allow Bangar's influence to take root. Even when I kill Bangar, it won't end the conflict. He showed the Char something they wanted for a long time. Power. No treaties, no alliances, just power, like in the old days. He told them the world I helped make turned us into weaklings, into lesser Char. I see the argument. One look at Tribune Brimstone, and we all see the dangers of what happens when you spend too much time away from the warband. Look, they're giving me a fucking voice here. These are so good, they're even giving me a voice! With all my whining! That's why the real war will only begin after Bangar's gone. We'll execute the traitors who took up arms against us, but there are still so many who will secretly harbour these beliefs, and rooting them out will be harder, impossible even. Stone Glow, swords, uh, Sword Shadow, Greets Glory. That's Ephraim, Malice, and... Uh, Wait, sorry. Ephraim greets Glory Flame, Sword Shadow from Ash. Smoda's. Wait, what does he mean, Stone Glow? Kreisha, right? He's suggesting Kreisha's gonna step up at the next banger? They think that Banger will end the war. You and I both know that won't be enough. The Dominion respects power, so they'll only respect us when we've won. So we can't just sneak through the back door and slit Bangar's throat. We need to show the Dominion the full might of the Iron Legion. They need to see the power they stand against. They need to see the hopelessness of their battle. They need to know to their very core that they have lost. Then and only then will they will we, we will win. That explains why Bangar doesn't like Bram's plan. He doesn't like the idea of Bram going back and doing it in a quick and quiet way. Because he sees that he needs to project strength. And you only project strength through winning in conventional war. Look at how good this is. I'm telling you guys. This shit, the law books, the walls of text... This is where real storytelling happens. This is it. This is what I want from Guild Wars Interior. It doesn't happen in the little sound bites and, you know, the campy kind of, you know, um, main storyline. There needs to be so much more of this. This is excellent. I loved all three of those. Okay, so. We're just going to say fuck it to all that. Smoda's dead anyway, so let's go do Bram's plan. <laughs> Basically. Oh yeah, but it should be tucked away like this. It's a terrible mechanic. No, it's not a terrible mechanic. It's just not illustrated properly and put on the main part. You're right, it's too tucked away. All that stuff's too tucked away. It's like ArenaNet have got this impression that everyone has a tiny attention span and no one wants to read and no one wants to dive in, so they won't they won't force it on you. They won't inflict you with it. But it's like, that's not the right way to go. Force it on people. Inflict them with it. That's how Final Fantasy does it. They're not scared. Don't be scared of your own subject material, you know? Like, that fear does the whole thing in. It's like, uh, you know, every time I end one of these videos, I see the average watch duration. YouTube has this massive pop-up, and it's the most depressing thing in the world. You know, the average watch duration for all these parts is like nine or even eight minutes. The majority of people who watch this live, when it comes out, now I'm hoping things are different for people who watch the VOD, they can only stomach about eight to nine minutes of wooden potatoes in Guild Wars before they're bored and they leave. Eight to nine minutes. That's what. That's it. And I think ArenaNet knows that that's what people are like. Maybe that's just I'm supremely unentertaining, blah, blah, blah. But I think they kind of know, so that stuff all ends up on the side. But look, there are people who really want to love Terrier and be in the story, and I think that there's more of them out there than even know it themselves. So force it on them, you know? It's good stuff. Talk to me about this door, Bram. How do we get it open? This place was built to honor all the spirits. The door can only open if enough of them are working together. Great music here. The great spirits aren't talking, so we need the other spirits to help. I can feel them. Hare, Otter, Griffin. And is that Owl? Yeah. Jormag can talk about peace all they want. But the Norn will never forget Owl's sacrifice. Looks like there are three spirit totems missing. Any idea where those are? Yeah, nice little cutscene here. So we're gonna go out and visit all of these. Whoa, I say nice. It was kind of flickery and weird there. Where 
actually have to play all three of the adventures. I didn't realize that they'd been integrated. That's cool. What was that? What did I just see? A shaman came from Holbrek, took the totems for Ox, Eagle, and Wolverine. Then he hid them. Shame, I guess. What you saw were the resting places of the three totems. Commander, I need you to find them and bring them back here. And what will you be doing? The lesser spirits don't know me. I need to prove I'm worthy like I did to the others. Speaking of which, they might test you. You know, before they let you pick up their totems. Bram, am I going to have to turn into an ox again? I love that, that they what? voice that. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe. Bram. I don't know. You saw them at your car lake. They're not exactly right in the head. <sighs> Three totems. Three fickle spirits of the wild. What could go wrong? They've executed so many dynamic, like, uh, emotes and stuff on me there during that conversation. That was awesome. Someone in the live chat said if they put more story in, people who don't like it won't play the story. That's so wrong. That's complete nonsense. But they will play the story. People who hate the story already play the story. Because even if you hate the story, you're desperate for content. And because they do gate stuff behind the story. So people bite their tongue and they grit their way through it. They mute the dialogue, they listen to music, and they stand around without paying any attention. They play the story anyway. And when it comes to unvoiced stuff, like if you put those missives in the main storyline, you're telling people would quit the story, would they? Or would they click the missive and they just simply would elect not to read? They'd click the X, right? They'd just exit out of it and they'd move forward. It's actually preferable to those people to have less voice acting because they can click through faster at their own pace instead of being dictated by the speed at which the voice actors read. It's actually better for people who don't. You can have more information in there and it can be passed quicker by the people who really want to ignore it. It's complete nonsense to say that if they do that, people will stop playing the story. Complete nonsense. And it's a particularly aggravating argument to me because literally you are dragging the game down by even suggesting something like that. There's no logic to it. Text is easier to skip, exactly. That's the TLDR of what I just said. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just like those side-by-side -side cutscenes from before were easier to skip too. Let's all remember. Nice leisurely Griffin ride here. Um, so this is the only hard adventure of the three, this one. I'll see how I do with it. I was doing this very recently for Season of the Dragon. See, I've actually already done all of this, by the way, with Season of the Dragon. Some of these patches I did log in and play. I know you. You were with Erison back in the marches. There is great strength in you, and I, and I will test it. Do what you have to. I'm ready. Okay. So we do it. You were the one who turned into ox, pulled offerings to my shrine back in the marshes. But it is easy to prove your strength by transforming into the strongest spirit in the Pantheon. I want to see your true strength. I want to see what it takes to exhaust the famed act commander. Um, oh my god, there was so much... This as well is kind of an example as well, you know. It's it's not just a matter of story and stuff, but even like, you know, all this cool stuff that's in the open world that usually isn't a part of the main plot, they integrate here as well. It's, it's stuff like this as well that I think is awesome and they should do more of. So I think if I just really take my time with this and go super leisurely, I should make it just fine. I think you only need bronze, you don't even need gold, but I will try my best just not to completely mess this up. Uh, I got a donation, Mayo, dude, thank you, for, with $10 there, that's really nice of you, man. Uh, uh, I don't know if you said anything, but what do you think about the new stat sets, Dragon and Ritualists? I did talk about those, um, Ritualist looks pretty much useless to me, I can't imagine where I'd really care about it. Dragons looks useful in some places, I think I'll play a Dragon Reaper. I think, honestly, I am nomenclature, I would actually, that is... I think with some slight reworks, I've talked about how I, I I believe you should tie specific boon and specific condition durations to them, and they could become really exciting, valuable parts of the game. Um, but you know, I'm glad the I'm glad the uh, the uh, the expansion has a couple of new sets. Practically speaking, the way that everything's structured in the game now, the choices that already exist, the way the legendary armory works, and all that, the truth is, um, it's not going to be that meaningful. But you know, again, dragons looks okay. There's cool music here in this uh, adventure too. 
But yeah, you know, ever since adventures were coming in in Heart of Thorns, I think, imagine a version of the Heart of Thorns campaign that integrated adventures in it, or POF. Obviously, they were all just boring supply runs, but still. I think this is good. I think this is efficient. This is what Guild Wars needs to do. They do so much cool stuff, put as much of it's in the golden path as possible. I'm gonna get hit by that. I can't, if you get hit by these, do they just knock you back, or do they rob you of all your stuff? Do they force you to reset? I'm going very slow here, but again, I think slow and steady wins the race on this. I've done this so many times where I've tried to go too fast and I've just frustrated myself. Oh. Okay, you lose five every time you get hit. So does that mean you don't get gold? Because don't you need every single god? Hopefully these ones don't aim at me. The actual most efficient... Whoopsie. Oh, of course, that's supposed to defend me. The most efficient way to do this is to go backwards, right? Gold is four, is 50. I've got 26 seconds. That's worth five, right? So I can just jump over and glide. There's also one underneath. I could have just dropped down, but there's a chance I'll miss it up. I feel like this is so good. There you go. Your strength is no illusion. I am impressed. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm impressed. Well, there you go. Okay, so that's one. The other two are pretty good. There's actually an achievement I need for uh, one of these adventures as well. It's called Impressive Pugilist. I can't hear that word pugilist now without thinking of Final Fantasy because that was the first class I played. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's like you've got to do various challenges in a mini fight, which again, I think is really interesting. I wonder if End of Dragons will do stuff like that. Um, like it's a little arena against Wolverine and it's like if you break the break bar uh, X amount of times or jump X amount of shockwaves or whatever. Apply a certain amount of condies, maybe. Cleanse them. I don't know what the actual conditions are. I don't probably looked at it. But again, it's one of the few achievements left in the game I need to do. One of the parts of this patch that I never played too much. Probably getting the impression that I hardly touched this release, but I, I, I've played a load of it. It's just all grinding the meta. Like, I have the auto infusion and stuff. You don't get that instantly. Getting sieged by the Chlora Jaw Mag. It's pretty cool. So the mighty commander has come for my totem. Are you, are you prepared to fight for the privilege? Only if you're prepared to give it to me when I win. I made that look easy. Yeah, I feel like that was way easier there. I don't know what it was. I got lucky, I think. You want to carry my idol. You, you must first carry yourself. Prove, prove, prove your valor. Act, commander. So here, uh, yeah, there's like a lot of like things in this fight that I have never done. I don't even really know how the fight works. Usually I just sort of kill him and then move on. Dodge and attack and then hit him. Impressive. Avoid being snared. Impressive. Avo dodge out of fire fields. Do I want to stand in those these? Do I want to stand in them or out of them? It looks like they're dangerous to be in, so maybe I shouldn't be in them. I probably lost an achievement from that. This is nice because this is I've got lower stats and this is a weaker build, so this fight's taking longer. So maybe I will see stuff that I didn't see before. There's totally a thing about breaking his bar, I can tell you that. I can't stun break that freeze. Man, my phone keeps going off and I don't know why. Oh, there you go. I got something. Hint, there's not always time to ask how high. So there's a hidden objective. Jump. You say jump, I say how high. So I've got to jump over something. Oh, there we go. I did it. <laughs> Avoid being hit by shockwaves. Nice. That was a good hit. There you go. And we actually dinged into the next bit of the mastery there. I got the Tribune Manica. <laughs> nice. And I got a mastery point from that. Wow. Look, you're seeing me get a goddamn mastery point in this playlist. They're all useless because, you know, I already got the mastery. I was wondering if it was just spam jump or it was maybe like get caught I in something fight like that in well, well a long time thank, thank, thank you commander 
I, I, I still feel Jormak's power coursing through me. A, a, a darkness I may never purge. That reminded me of better times. You know what I think they should have done with these? I think that they shouldn't have been voice acted with English. None of the Spirits of the Wild. You know how Final Fantasy does like the dragons? Like there is voice acting, but it's a language you can't understand. They're speaking Draconic. I feel like the Spirits of the Wild should have done that. It feels really weird that I'm just like chatting with a Wolverine, you know? What if it was like inscrutable to my ear, but my mind knew how to interpret what he was saying? Like I understood through the magic. I think that would keep them feeling really alien and interesting. Just hearing them chat <laughs> with Graham, an American just accent is just weird to me. It takes their mysticism the away a lot. I think everything's fine now. Just waiting on you. If you really think you can get that door open, Cree and I are coming with. Ephraim and the others will hit the front door. We'll go through the ruins. Stop Bangar. Stop the Frost Legion. Save the Char from turning into Jormak's personal army. Damn right. Man, that, that dialogue there just makes me think of the um, the journal we read a second ago. Those journals are so good. You know, the idea that it's just the first, this is just a, 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 a small thing in a, in a broader story with the Char. Really, really love those journals. Okay, um, so, so, this one's fun. Very leisurely. Before me to shoulder my idol. But, but, but are you willing to prove yourself worthy? Uh, you are at least the 28th all-powerful entity to ask me that question. So yes, willing and ready. I wonder how they came to the number 28. If, if, if you wish to carry my idol, take, take to the skies with me. Prove you can keep up with the mightiest of eagles. Prove the sun shines through you. Face me in another form. Is it because there literally are 28 ex things that the, the writers could think of? So yeah, we just fly here. It's just a very, very simple race. I just use auto run. Enjoy the sights. Uh, oh yeah, you do want to spam skill one though. It's just not, I like this, you know? I remember this kind of straddles the line of like feeling like almost too empty. But no, I, I think it's cool. It's kind of a unique, different experience. I'd be game for this having several, happening several times in the future of Guild Wars. You know, maybe in Canther we do it as a, I don't know, what, what's the kind of bird creature that would fly around in Canther? Uh, so just to be clear here, guys, we are right near the end. I mean, I can't express to you how near the end we are. Um, we're going to do this, and then it's an instance. And as far as the standard living world is concerned, it's over. It's over. Uh, yeah, you know what? You sound pretty busy. We got this. Just keep doing whatever it is you're doing. And if you're wondering, having the dialogue cut in while we're doing this flight is awesome too. Um, sort of to break it up a little bit. If you're wondering, wow, how are we going to get through so much story in one patch? Well, I mean, that in there in is the rub, really. So I'm doing really bad at this, by the way, because I have not been using this very well and I haven't been doing racing lines well. We're definitely not going to get gold here. This reminds you of the PS2 Harry Potter 2 Griffin missions. I don't remember those. Oh my god, you just reminded me. I was in the middle of a Harry Potter 2 run. Uh, a Lego Harry Potter run, wasn't I? Before I left the internet. I should pick that up again. That was exhilarating. It's, it's been so long since I felt the thrill of the chase. Jormag still whispers to the darkness within me. I, I can never again be whole. But thanks to you, for a moment I remembered what it was to be a spirit of the wild. Go, go, go. Ret return me to the Pantheon. You can auto cast the skill one. That's true, but I think there's a thing here. That guy's called Ryland Steelcatcher, his name that just gave us a pirate request. That's cool. I think there's a thing um, where auto cast won't press it as fast as if you manually do it. So it's like if you want peak efficiency, you do still have to manually press. It's a bit like that old action cam bug that lasted for ages where, you know, if you hold down left click on action cam, it triggers auto attacks. 
but it presses the button very infrequently. So if you have quickness, you wouldn't actually quickness auto attack with, with action cam, believe it or not. So here's the entrance of the Citadel, by the way. This is all meta stuff, which we won't do in the story because we're going in the back with, with, Braham, with Bram. Braham. Oh, I remember back in season one where that's what I used to call him because that's how it's spelt. <laughs> I used to call him Braham. Uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know. Do autocast if you want. I don't know if you can get gold on autocast. Probably. If you're... If you get the right start and you're very, very precise with your flying and your movement. You don't waste any kind of lefts and rights and things. Uh, WP, will you be doing lore dives while you do End of Dragons? Will you strictly do the base story and look for lore afterwards? I don't know what I'll do. It depends what the content is. The reason you haven't seen any Guild Wars mysteries lately is because the only mysteries I've got left are very small things. And I don't know how confident I am in very, very short videos. Um, if they've got really big, badass, interesting, curious, like, theories and stories and stuff out there. Stuff like POF had the Devonna thing with the Herald of Balthazar. I I'd love to do spotlights and videos about them. It just depends. Will I learn them? Will I figure anything out for myself? Will I see discussions online? Will people come to me and tell me things? If they don't, and if I miss stuff, those videos probably won't happen. But I'd like them to be there. It all depends on Ender Dragons. I got turned into an eagle. You get turned into a lot of stuff. It's better than an ox, Just, man. Let's get on with it. Right. Go put those idols by Owl. Spirits of the Wild. I am Bram Erson, Norn of Prophecy. I ask for your wisdom, so I may enter this sacred place. Voices from beyond the mists call out to me. I hear them. I speak their words. One must first have faith in one's wisdom and insight. I hear the quickened gasps of fear from your enemies as you charge them. Triumph comes only by banishing fear from your heart and mind. And, and only at the end you see the plan executed to perfection. When the spirits speak truth, the way will open. Whoa! Okay, <laughs> you get all that? I wrote it down. Four verses, four statues. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, this music's amazing. This is a really good song. I have this in my uh, soundtrack. Plays in Ender Dragon Stadium and stuff quite regularly. You looking forward to my theory that the Miss Stranger is Trahernal Raza? You could put Baltech on that list, and you could put... Um... Now, this goes against canon, but again, I believe canon is malleable, and they can add and tweak and change things. You could also put Lord Odrin on the list, if you like. Especially when it comes to the sense that in the Rift, there is no time and time travel and all that shit. And again, I don't really want to go into that much. But they can wriggle around. They could do Lord Odrin if you wanted. Even though he was supposedly killed by the denizens of the afterlifes. Uh, Kreisha. If you need a refresher, I wrote down the riddle. What was the first line? One must first have faith in one's wisdom and insight. Hear the quickened grasp of fear from your enemies as you charge them. Triumph only by banishing the fear from your heart and mind. And only at the end, you see the plan executed to perfection. So, we have all of the uh, totems here now. And here what I'll do is I'll bring NPC chat up here. Okay, so one must first have faith in one's wisdom and insight. So who represents wisdom and insight? Eagle? It's more Bram, of... you said you need all the other spirits' magic to open this door. Right. But the owl spirit is dead. How are you going to use its magic? This door was built when owl was still alive. Maybe a piece of her magic is still here. Sorry, I thought Owl was family. I'm confused right now. What do they want me to do straight away? And who is this? I can't even see wh who who is who. who. Who we got here? Oh, this is Owl. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe Owl is wisdom and insight then. I don't know. Let's see what happens. No. How am I supposed to know which pedestal goes where? 
mean, we could trial and error it, I guess. I don't really want to trial and error it. Who else represents wisdom and insight? Maybe, maybe Eagle represents wisdom and insight. Kind of goes hand in hand with strategy, I suppose. There we go. Okay, so Eagle's first, and we're going to put Eagle here. Again, how do we know who goes where, though? Okay, so Eagle's first. Next, we want to hear the quickened grasp of fear from our enemies. Ugh, it's so annoying having another player here standing on top of these. Let alone a minion monster who's going to take up even more noise. Wolverine, maybe? If it is Wolverine, he doesn't belong there. Wait, 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 wait. I thought I picked up Eagle there. Never mind, I think I picked up Owl again. So, Eagle. Let's try Wolverine on this pedestal. Okay. Triumph only by banishing fear from your heart and mind. Ox doesn't know fear. The question is, which pedestal do we want it on? Let's try this one. Uh, you know what? I had a sense that it wasn't going to be that because cinematically they probably want the last one we play so we can see the door opening. Right, okay, so Eagle first is going to go here. Wolverine second is going to go here. Wait, what? Eagle first? I could have sworn I just put Wolverine there. Oh, no, 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 Ox. Wait. Hear the quickened grasp of fear is your enemies as- Oh, your enemies as you charge them. It was Ox second, not Wolverine. I put Ox on there. And the key there is charging, Ox charging. Triumph only comes by brandishing fear from your heart and mind. Wolverine is fearless. Probably goes on one of these back pedestals. This one here. Okay. And then you see the plan executed to perfection. I don't see why Owl goes on the last one with plan executed to perfection. When I read plan executed to perfection, it makes me think strategy, which makes me think eagle. But whatever, there we go. Command, Kreisha, we're ready on the assault. Where are you? Just about ready. Bram, do we have it? I think so. I have the lesser spirit's power. Now we just need Ox. There's eagle. And Wolverine. That's it. That's... Wait. Owl? That's not... What... What did I do? What did you do? That magic. It wasn't a remnant of Owl. It was Owl. Jormag corrupted her, so she cut herself off from the mists. She came here, locked herself away, and I just brought her back. Jormag needed more magic to wake up. Now they have Owl again. Ephraim, Alice, the door's open. Go now. I repeat, go now. You heard the commander. Let's go kick in the front door. I wish I could be there with Ephraim here. I didn't... No time, Bram. You open this door, now walk through it. Right. The spirits are counting on us. The world is counting on us. And we won't let them down. It, remi it occurs to me here that if you're not super familiar with the lore, you're not going to know the whole Owl situation here, right? Because they don't do a recap for Owl. Not a proper one. So just to be clear here for people watching, if you're feeling a little bit lost at this moment, the, the, the canon before now was that Owl was a spirit of the wild that was killed. The Owl actually died during Askir's descent from the north as the as the um, the Norn found their new home at Holbrak. Owl died in that early conflict. That was the idea. But what Bram's just realized, so there's a new twist, this is an entirely new story, is that Owl wasn't dead. Owl was corrupted and completely cut herself off. Perhaps a bit similar to the gods cutting themselves off from the mist. So the Norn just thought she was dead because Al was no longer responding. I don't know if Al is male or, male or female, I can't remember. But the truth is that Al is it. But the thing is, Al was corrupted, so it's just get, so by bringing it back, Jormag's just got more power, which is, so we've done something bad. But yeah, without an actual recap and a little talk about the Al stuff, that this bit probably feels really weird to casual users, right? To ca casual audience members, which sort of sucks. I mean, people in the community have always loved the thing with Al. 
But there you go. So they do this twist with Al back now. Um, again, it's just one of those things where it's like, if there was more Norn emphasis at other areas of the saga, maybe could have had more of that. All right. So one char, one dragon, one champion. This is the final instance. This is the dramatic conclusion. And uh, so far, we have not been anywhere near Jormag. That's about to change. Hey, come on. Pick up the pace. They're here. Bram, what is it? I know why Wolf and the other great spirits weren't answering me before. They're trapped here, in the keep. If Jormag corrupted them. Jormag would have more magic than they'd know what to do with. Let's quit, Gavin. Get up there and stop it. You know what, um... Ryland's up there? Don't know. But Bangar surely is. I'm counting on it. I like seeing them jump there. There's a bug with the NPCs here, by the way. If you're inside the keep, I recommend covering your ears now. Door's still holding. Keep those eyes screwed off us. Ephraim! Again! Hit it again! Gonna bring this whole place down! Good! With us inside! Oh, not good. Ephraim, Malice, are you through? Doors open. Frost Legion doesn't look happy about it. Secure the ground level, then find a way up to us. You got it, Commander. Ridlock, if Ryland is there, he'll do what we gotta do. Understood. Right. Watch the ceiling! Pretty big entrance by Malice's standards. I'm sure she'll stab a few Frost Legion in the back on the way up. Okay, are we done? I think we're done. Sorry, I know I'm supposed to be in there fighting while that's all going on, but I just wanted to make an observation here. One thing that I think that ArenaNet should really do, um, and again, it's kind of Final Fantasy influences me on this a little bit, but they should be less scared to break the fourth wall sometimes. What's just occurred to me is actually two patches in a row here, two patches in a row, the events of the um, meta are actually really important to the main storyline, but because the meta is not in the main storyline, you kind of miss that detail. It's like finding out that the whole warband is dead. Clearly the devs are expecting you to have done the meta there, but you can miss out on it. How are you supposed to know when to do the meta? Right, and this is actually a question that comes up several times. It's just really evident in the Icebridge Saga. During Dragonfall, there's a very specific moment in the story in Dragonfall where really you should go off and play the meta, right? Right before that final cave instance. At Dragon Stand, at the end of Heart of Thorns. You can play all of the Heart of Thorns main storyline and miss all the cool stuff with the final world boss. Yeah, uh, the Death Branded Shatter in Jahai. Pretty much every release, there's a good moment to do the meta. I think what ArenaNet should do is not be scared to break the fourth wall and at some point during the story, if they're not going to fully integrate the meta into the personal story because, you know, metas are on timers and they don't want people to be waiting around and forced to and so on, right? I get that fear. But they should not be scared to break the fourth wall. All of these patches, all of these story moments, they should have a moment. And in, for example, this patch here, right as I was at the door, it should give me a pop-up, like how Final Fantasy gives a pop-up and it says set aside 20 minutes to watch this cutscene because it's really long. You know, they break the fourth wall there. ArenaNet should break the fourth wall. They should have a little message that says, we recommend you play the meta for this map now. Canonically, the meta happens now. So if you want to do the meta, go do the meta. It's the player's choice to do it. And if they choose to do it, maybe they'll find it's more palatable waiting around for the meta to trigger or whatever. But then c they'll see, you know, they'll see the Ephraim side of this assault, right? And uh, I think that Guild Wars would have benefited massively from that. Dating back to even the Silver Wastes. The Silver Wastes is probably the first time on one of the maps where that should be there at a certain point. There should be that message where it says, go do the meta right now. This is where we design and consider the meta to have happened. And that can canon story should happen there. I think that would prompt people as well to really appreciate the rest of the map too. It's really something they should do. And I, I imagine End of Dragons will have the same thing, the same situation. You know, where you're in one of the maps and it says, okay, at this point, go do the meta. Good idea to do the meta now. Just a thought, but a, a, a really important thought, I think. And it's not something I've talked about before, so I'm happy to sort of stand there for a second and over-deliver the idea, but... God, I got hit really hard by someone there, eh? So we've actually avoided getting having the roof fall on us during the fight here by letting them talk so much. But nice one. 
Holy shit. I mean, it's good that they hit hard. Oh my god, that's not good. This might be our sixth death. Let's do an early Signet of Agony, because the CCs are actually... I might set up a rally from one of my teammates is what I was thinking, but we actually just got it straight away, so that's good. I'm quite happy that the uh, veteran is the marksman. If, if it was one of those... Um, like blade swarms or whatever that were using gonna use great sword three i probably would have got hit really hard there oh yeah we have dagger pistol i haven't actually used it but i have it. i wanted to fight with the fishing rod all day and i think that's fair ah uh, wasted smoke screen there wasn't really necessary the fight was basically over there's a really cool visual in this instance by the way guys that i love uh with the roof I just want to make sure these guys keep following me because I've played this before where they stall and I don't know what actually causes the bug, but I have to replay the instance. I don't think there's any achievements for me to get on this one. This one's quite surreal right now, by the way. I know what's coming up and it's like... It's weird to be here already, you know? Oh my god. I should just dodge in and then dodge out and just delay a moment because they're so front loaded with their combat here. <clears throat> and then I'll open up afterwards. These CCs. It's going to be really nice having Stab on a Spectre, man. Stab on a Thief. The playstyle will be there. I need to really review what kind of build I want to play. Publish some videos about it as well if I can. Come on. Uh, damn it! Calm down and think. Grisha, you can melt it. Damn right I can. Ritlock, Sahathan. We're doing this again? We're doing this again. I don't know whether I really wanted to fear and spread them all out there, but I mean, it was a novel experience. I kind of wanted to keep them balled up so I could cleave them. But I mean, you steal a skull, you gotta use it, am I right? Or am I right? Maybe we can. Uh, this sucks. This sucks. Damn it. Get me over here. Got the ball at least. I missed steel there because the guy died and I lost my target right as I pressed the damn thing. Swipe, sorry. I love the swipe icon, by the way. It's one of my favorite, like, new skill icons. Because obviously, I, I say new. What is it? Like, two and a half years old now? Maybe older than that, actually. How old is swipe at this point? Maybe three years. Oh, are you serious? Dude, it's, look how slow they are. Let's go already. I just had, like, a real dungeon experience there. This is what it's like to, to, like, when you know where you're going and you know what you're doing and everyone else is, like, a million miles behind and you just... You never thought to look back and check. And we actually did die. That's unbelievable. Hopefully that doesn't bug it. Turns out everyone was distracted by, like, some tiny little thing a million miles away. Why is this on the floor? Oh, we can pick up the Charzookas, right. Oh, yeah, and these things force you into combat mode. Yeah, these things are cool. Maybe if I hadn't rushed so much, I'd have had this earlier. Sorry, what's going on in here? Yeah, I love this thing with an actual reload mechanic and everything.
Oh, he moved out. I was going to break the bar. By the way, what did I say? There, you've got an elite with a great sword, and I'm sure he will have done the vast majority of the damage. I'll aim the vet first, because that means all my allies will focus fire this guy. I do get some compounding value out of, like, the vulnerability or something. Yeah, the visual that I like, we're going to see in a second when we look up. up here. Well, hold on. I don't know when I... Creation, Ridlock, you're up. Ready. I like this little bit here as well, where they give you the sense that some of this ice is just getting really, really dense and really magical and really, like, resilient. Time free. It's not working. What do you mean it's not working? Jormag's power. It's stronger here. We need a stronger flame. Where are we supposed Shh, to... Ephraim. Ephraim, where are you? Looking for another way up. Where are you? You're about to find out. Uh, search the room for a path. <laughs> Open a path for the waiting char copters above. Oh, look at this. I love this. Oh, we have to reload first. Damn, it even remembered my ammo from before. That's awesome. I was just thinking this place could use a skylight. Everyone, into position. There's an elder dragon beyond this wall. We'll be ready for whatever it throws at us. Look at this. How cold is this? We will. Yes, we will. Dude, even just the sense that you can shoot at a wall and blow up like destructible to luck terrain. Like, that's like some early 2012 Battle of Kylo stuff there. Oh, where's the ladder? I thought there was like a ladder that rolls down. Oh, they're parachuting down. I see. Ballast. That's cool as, as well, you can I guess. See, we've got a bit of a problem. One the flame imperator is uniquely qualified to mitigate. I am at the United Legion's disposal. Ritlock? Ephraim, hit so often with everything you've got. I love this thing on our shoulder, by the way. We're like Horik from the Fractals. Big badass moment for Ephraim, too. Great music. Flame Legion coming after the throat of frost. Take you by surprise. Nice try. What are you doing to the spirits of the wild? What Jormag did to Drakkar. Use its power to control the uncontrollable. Elder dragons want only magic. And the spirits are nothing but. So, I'll convince them to share it with. Ritlock! Go. So what do we do with the blood factors again? His line there, the way he says but everything is hard because you're in a fight and there's combat music and stuff. But the way he like almost whispers it, he's so, uh, I love Banker Man, he's awesome. Also, yeah, I never noticed this detail. Kerry made fun of me for this. But I never realized that even at the start, you can see that's Jormag. You can see this is frozen Jormag. Now, there's some weird issues going on here and I wish Bram talked about it. I thought the story was that Bram was literally there almost head to head with Jormag. But it fell asleep and got thrown into a mountain of ice. So wasn't Bram essentially here before? And then they built the citadel on that location? Anyway, yeah, more of these as well. Look, look at this. The art in the portals is so good. We're moments away from talking about the deep ice theory. What you're, according to that theory, the copium theory, okay, 
And this is not true, this is not gonna happen. But the theory would state that this is the end of the story. Like, literally the very end of the story, as far as we know it for now. And I'll explain. You think Jormag tunneled after it got sent back to sleep? I don't think I get the logic of that. Right, so if I still had that environmental weapon... Oh god, it's... Where'd I put it? We could vacuum up this blood and use it against Bangar. Anyway, actual Bangar boss fight. Like you've noticed in a lot of the back half of the Icebridge Saga, these fights are like... Like they're not they're not as detailed as you'd otherwise hope they'd be, right? Um, but hey, I'll pull him out of the, uh, the the blood at least. And here, by the way, here are the uh, the spirits, rep their little representation in it. I feel like there's like like a big non patch that we're sort of missing here. We could have talked more about the spirits of the wild, reminded people about the state of Al. Newt White Bear could have been involved. I feel like that's kind of the big missing bit so far. The rest of this, though, well, okay. And in that same patch, they could have been brewing the Char War more. That's maybe the big thing that this, uh, this bit of the Ice Saga missed. You know, one more ice map with Gunnar's Hold and stuff, maybe further up north or something, or around here. So a patch in the mountains surrounding the Eye of the North. More Norn stuff. Newt's involved. Reintroduces more... Um, Spirits of the Wild stuff and build up the, the Char Civil War better so it's not so out of nowhere. Probably would have done a lot for the Icebridge Saga. Oh, no. The bow. Where's the... Pilot, you told me the bow was to rally the Char. You said you would never use it on Jormac. The bow is leverage, nothing more. Now you want to corrupt the Nord spirits, to wield their power against your mag. Seems you need a lot of leverage. Stand down. No, you're right, sir. These spirits do have a use. I love this story beat so much, man. No! We need to free them! What do you think you're doing, Tribune? Waking up our dragon. It's not our dragon. Ryland, you have to stop. It's your back way. No going back. That's the point. Look how genius this is, man. I think it's so good. All that stuff about the chain of command and how we were hoping we could utilize that to make Ryland the good guy or whatever. To, uh, and all this idea that Bangar's just a bad guy that's an idiot ultimately that's being duped. No, no, no. Bangar knew all along. And was cunning enough to get out. Probably was actually going to get one over on Jormag. Ryland is the one that gets duped. Specifically because of his distrust of the chain of command. And his decision to go against Bangar here. And, and ends up going operating on Jormag's side. Like the two characters go in the opposite direction to what you'd originally think. I think it's so good. I love what happens to both of these. Really. And having Ryland be the ultimate antagonist. Not ba uh, Bangar be the ultimate antagonist. Oh. It's brilliant. Again, all those, all the bullet points, all the on-paper ideas for the Ice Cream Saga are so good, dude. And I especially love, no matter what happens here, what a dickhead Bangar is and how much more interaction we get to have with him and get to see him be a thrall through the Champions era. It's so good, man. It's so good. I've always been very satisfied with all of these kind of bigger, big decisions they made around here. This is the exact example of something where... Sorry, I, I delayed because I wanted to get this point out before they start talking. You know, they're always talking about subverting expectations. And, oh, it's obvious that Bram would die, so we'll make him have survive. <laughs> they're always talking about stuff like that. And it nearly always comes across as tone deaf and dumb to me. But on this specific case, I think they twisted it in the best way possible. And it really makes playing through the first half of the Icebrook Saga, all that stuff about Ryland, really captivating, I think. Knowing his the path he's on. On a second playthrough. It's a 
shame the uh, the actual fight mechanics are a bit thin on the ground here for such a big moment. Where's Ryland right now, by the way? Oh, why is Ryland an ally right now? Shouldn't they both be enemies? Shouldn't this just be pure chaos? 1v1v1 or 5v1v1 <laughs> since I have the Imperators with me. Well, an Imperator with me. God, I love Ephraim. Ephraim's cool, man. Oh, just go back to the char arena net later. Just do it. Just go back. There's still so much more. So much more to give. Yeah, everyone underestimates Ryland's ambition and his ability to think for himself and stuff. Everyone's thinking. Bangar just thinks, well, I can just manipulate him. Even we think the same as Bangar. Kreisha, Ritlock, they're all just thinking to themselves, you know, oh, we can just... He's just young. He's just a patsy. We'll just get him on, a, on our side. But in the end, the, the one that really gets to him is Jormag. I love how sinister Jormag is just sort of sitting there, seeing how it's committed all this. Wait, why did Bangar say that? What's that supposed to mark as a part of this fight? This makes me think of Twilight Aetherpath, by the way, with these. Always makes me think of that brutal char boss in the middle of it. Or he was brutal back in the day, anyway. Cool. Grinding for those weapons was one of the last times I was really into like reward schemes in Guild Wars. I had a friend who did that path every day, get, trying to get those weapons. All three. All, all three. Oh, wait, no. What, what did he do? Oh, yeah, I think he just did a day. But still. It's time. We're too late. Champion. Well, you did gather my army, and so you will be rewarded. See, but Jormag sees through Bangar's ambition, right? Bangar's just trying to manipulate Jormag. Jormag doesn't care for that. Rise, voice of Jormag. This cutscene looks really crisp, by the way. Jormak, I am Ryland Steel Catcher. I know you. A born leader who's waited your whole life for a role worthy of your talents. Yes. Your sire's ferocity, your dam's discipline. And all that rage seething under the surface. Yes. Yes. I see you, Ryland. And what you've wanted all along. I want to be your champion. Then rise, champion of joy. Things are set in motion. To the rest of you, I leave this gift. My voice. So they do kind of the Kraukatoric thing where you don't get the full full view of her. Oh, I forgot that line as well. That he always says motherfucker. I told you we'd all talk to each other again soon. I look forward to our conversations oh. he's gone what happened your mag's gone ryland too ruin bringer 
That caller's done something to his voice. What a shame. I love how they have no pity for him. We need to get everyone out of here. What are we doing with him? He's Jormax now. Can't kill him. But I'm not letting him near the char. We'll take him to the Eye of the North, to Orin. She'll want to see this. Dude, this scene is so good. So many characters that I love so much all in this one scene here. Oh, and they go, it's so badass. You take such an animal, such a horrible guy, and we actually just get to see him be imprisoned now. It's such a fun thing to do. I never would have thought that. I mean, I just love the jeopardy that they put us in here now and the tension through through all this later stuff. Um, so, yeah, they you only see Jormag's head. It looks pretty good, but they hide the rest of her body because, obviously, they want to design a full body, and we'll see the full body later in a big epic battle, just like we had with Kralkatorik. And by the way, I'm not even being fully sarcastic or joking there. That's literally true. We saw they were making concept art and all that stuff. They, they were going to give us a whole body. Unfortunately, because all of this now gets axed for an expansion coming out next week, you won't ever see anything more than the head. So all this stuff just getting cut now. And they, the, the, uh, some poor crew has got a hell of a job to finish the whole story now with basically nothing. That, my friends, is champions. So, I guess we'll do the epilogue for. All right, if there's no dialogue, I'll do, I'll give you the deep ice theory. Okay, so the theory of the deep ice is that in there in that scene, when Bangar's frozen, when Ryland is picked, right? What's stopping Jormag just deep freezing everyone in that room, right? What's stopping Jormag just saying, all right, I've got you all now. Now, remember what Rock said when she was frozen by, uh, back in Season 3? She, was, she didn't realize anything was happening. She was just sort of enjoying her life, and she saw herself living a, a wonderful vacation on a beach, right? She was just happy. So the idea is that now everything that's happening is a vision. We are actually frozen, and the commander is going to get frozen for like 50 years. While Tyrion goes to shit and the dragons rampage around. In the meantime, we're just going to go doop de doop de doop And we're going to kill some elder dragons. And we're all going to be happy. And it's all going to be very quick and very easy. And we're going to wander around the world being a hero. And that's the commander's idea of a beautiful future. And the cat cha champions is all a vision. And the theory is the end of dragons opens. And you've had a big time jump. And a lot of Tyrion has changed. And a bunch of characters are dead. And Ritlock's old now. And... And blah, 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 blah. And you will get a real Prime Orders fight. And you will get a real Jormag fight. And you will get all that amazing stuff. And you get to go to Canther, except it's 50 years in the future. That's the Deep Ice Copium Theory. Right? But, yeah. Um. It was just a dream is almost the, always the worst way to end a story. Yeah, but you have... Use your brain, man. It's not saying it was all a dream, is it? It's saying one patch is a dream. It's saying one tiny section. It's not saying my story's a dream. It's not saying Scarlet's War is a dream. It's not saying season two's a dream. It's not saying Heart of Thorns is a dream. It's not saying season three is, a, is it tedious to hear me say all of this, because I'm hoping it is, because that's how much content is still fine and valid. It's saying champions. It's saying one little bit, right? Which So you, you sacrifice a little bit for a big payoff and doing something dramatic and different narratively. Have some balls and have some imagination. It would be fine. Use your don't just use like some talking point, some sound bite that you learnt when you were 14 in English class that it was all a dream is boring. You know, we're not doing what was that American soap that basically reset like its final season or something. You know, we're doing a section. Have some context for the whole game. I think it's a totally workable cool idea. This is bad. Even worse than you know. When Jormad woke there was a great and terrible tremor. I could feel lay energy shifting, the world calling out. Don't like the sound of that. Orin, why didn't Jormag kill us? That we gotta talk about that line as well, the world calling out. Unfortunately, we know as much of Jormag's motives now as we did before. Dallas, that's it, yeah, Dallas. So, nothing. We are at least consistent. What about our guest? It seems we have two. Jormag's presence is entwined with Bengar's. 
Jormag called Bangar their new voice. Are you in danger if we keep him here? All I know for certain is, Jormag has a plan. And for the moment, they want us all alive. Huh. Lucky us. Stay vigilant, my champion. Jormag roams free. Tyria calls out in pain. This is going to get worse. I'll wait for Jormag. You must go and prepare this world for the fight to come. See, so look, Aureen there literally says Jormag kept us alive. She wants us alive. Now, why does Jormag want us alive? We never, they never actually answer that, right? Jormag is just going to get gutted now <laughs> in Champions. Um, you know, there's an idea. There's some big conspiracy and cool idea. Why does she want us to stay alive? Who knows? Why didn't she kill us instantly? Who knows? But Jormag has given us this gift and has moved on. And as far as I remember all this champion story, they don't really offer any satisfying conclusion here now. So it's getting crazy. Let's uh, let's have a quick conversation about this, by the way. This is bad. When Jormag woke, there was a great terrible tremor. I could feel lay energy shifting, the world calling out. So one way of interpreting that is that's your a big Primordus hint. Um... Primordus of lava of the earth underneath in the depths. You can call it that. And again, season three set up this this duality between the two, so it kind of makes sense. Another thing you can look at it as is a is a mother related storyline. You can look at something bigger. You can look at it as you know some of these other theories people had like about the pale tree and all that. And something end of dragons might answer. I think it's alluding to Primordus more than anything else, though. Um. So, uh, so that's the end of John Mag Rising. Now, let's catch up with people. Sorry about Ryland. He made his choice. Now he'll live with the consequences. He and Bangar both forced me to make my own choice. Who am I loyal to? My Imperator, my Legion, my blood. In the end, none of that matters. The Char were nearly destroyed. I can't let that happen again. Are you alright leaving Bangar here? In the watchful care of an elder dragon? I think it's safe. Many of us would have preferred a very public execution. But this... This is more... Poetic, I think. Oh. But if he causes any trouble, tell Aurene to let me know. I'll finish him off myself. Oh, someone in the live chat says, well, maybe uh, Jormag kept us alive because their plan involves Aureen, so killing Aureen's champion isn't a good idea. You might be right. Maybe that's a good justification there. I I'll totally accept him by that. I like that a lot. What will happen to the Char now? We fought among ourselves countless times, but this was nearly the last. We need stronger leadership. We can't let our hatred grow this strong again. I don't like that line. Again, like, I think ArenaNet need to understand that if you can only give something two Living World episodes, you can't make out like it's this major thing in lore, because what you do is you shrink the stakes of Tyria and the authenticity of Tyria. The Char have been around for thousands of years. They predate the humans. You know, there are stories about the Char having mo dominion over most of the land, of the, ho of all the whole continent. And then falling apart through infighting then. That's a, that's a civil war. That's an in, you know, th th this idea that they are almost like the Jotun, right? And therefore, these are big stories. Don't give me two Living World episodes and then tell me, oh, this is one of the worst thing, blah, this is one of the last. Don't do that, all right? You haven't earned that. Um, we can talk to Aureen. Champion, I'm so glad to have you back safely. Uh, what did Jormag do to Bangar? Jormag can bind their voice to living creatures. Speak through them from a great distance. You saw it with Drakkar and the Whisper of Jormag. Now they have chosen Bangar to serve in this role. His voice is no longer just his own. For now, at least, he is simply a vessel for Jormag. Uh, will Jormag try to whisper to you through Banger? Jormag is welcome to try, but I'd like to think they're smarter than that. They may be sincere in saying that Bangar is meant as a gift, 
But Jormag never gives without expecting something in return. So rest assured, champion. I'll be watching the char very carefully. This is such a great situation, don't you guys think? Like... Aureen and Jormag being able to, like, communicate and stuff here. Can, um, Jormag eavesdrop on us? I don't believe that's their intent. But it is possible that through Bengar, Jormag could hear us. Or rather, it would be, if I hadn't magically bound Bengar's cage. Don't worry, champion. So long as he's in that cage, I will decide what Jormag hears. So this is like perfectly constructed for us to have regular conversations with an elder dragon between elder dragons. Where do you think Jormag and Ryland went? I wish I knew. I sense Jormag moving through Tyria, taking advantage of the mists as Kralkatorik did. Yet they choose neither to consume nor destroy. Pleasant change of pace, but disturbing nonetheless. That's my long way of saying I have no idea. I'm sorry, champion. Okay, so farewell, Aureen. Uh, Bram over here. I can't believe Jormag got away. And Ryland, you doing okay? I just don't get it, Commander. Jormag could have killed me back there. They know one of us has to die. I kill Jormag or Jormag kills me. That's what the wolf spirit said. But Jormag spared us. Why? Sorry, Commander. Can't let this change anything. It's just... I don't get it. So I guess it all comes down to what the grand plan is meant to be... ...between Jormag and Aureen. And I don't know, if that prophecy's real and Jormag knows that prophecy's real... I don't know. I don't know whether this really has a satisfying conclusion. I'll, I'll just say that. Yeah, Ryland. Always thought he was... I don't know. Better than that? Figured he'd turn on Bangar, but the rest of us too? No coming back from where he's gone. Can't imagine what Ritlock and Kreisha are going through. We'll get through this. <clears throat> it's interesting how so far in the saga, there's no sense that it's like Bram v. Ryland. But that's what Champion was, will sort of turn this into. I uh, was really hoping we'd stop Jormag before all this. Uh, if you really need uh, to talk about Ryland... Thanks. With nothing left to say. The whole time I thought he was choosing between us and Bangar. I had it all wrong. I guess it was always about him. If I'd have been here, maybe I... Uh, probably not. Kree was here. Cinder, his warband. They believed in him. Didn't matter. He did what he was gonna do. Yeah, I, I really love this rug pull. It's like... All the characters did, and I did as well, as a person playing and experiencing the story. What are you going to do now, then, Rilok? Well, Kree's going to need some help knocking heads together. A lot of bad blood to worry about. But, you know, thinking about it, she's probably the best thing that could happen to the Char. And if helping her means avoiding another civil war, or war with Tyria, or turning into ice monsters, well, I'm sure as hell in. So is the idea the war... They don't even really put a point on it, but is the idea the war's over because the only char left that were following Bangar are now just mindless ice brood? So, really, it's just char and, and Jormag. That's it. Everyone else left is just sort of thinking, well, fuck that. All right, okay. So uh, so there we go. So we can jump out. Now, now, now we're in a really interesting thing. A kind of a Guild Wars 1-y thing here now. So that as far as I remember, and I might be remembering this wrong. Great mini, by the way. Bone skin and mini, huge. Um, the Ice Bridge Saga went on break now because of obviously they had no more full releases. They were basically all gung-ho on End of Dragons at this point. Um, and so they had like cliff notes of everything they wanted the story to be. But now they had no budget or teams or releases to tell the story. So what do they do? Well, they say they're going to tell the story anyway. They're just going to do it in one release. So it's a long release. It's called Champions. It's split up into five chunks. Five, four chunks. And this actually represents how long? Maybe someone in the live chat can help me out. I think it's like half a year. 
or like 75% of a year worth of patches. And there's a long gap before it starts. So, during the gap, there were little updates allowing us to speak to Bangar. So, that's what I'm going to do now. Now, this is a bit like how Guild Wars 1 Living World worked, alright? And I believe they have a function in the game for us to listen. So, uh, relive one of my visits with Bangar. Now, new players playing through the game are never going to realise that this is here and they're not going to know when to listen to it. At least I think they won't. I don't actually know how the phasing works here based on account finding. But so you see there's actually six encounters. These are all amazing. I think these are all really good. For everything that's bad about champions, I won't criticize this. This stuff's awesome. Um, okay, and so where's the story been? We've just seen our first little sneak peek of Jormag. There's obviously a lot of story left to fight Jormag. Well, guess what? We also have to put Primordus on the table, apparently. So what's happening now... Is not only are they these little banger conversations, I can't remember what it is, but there's like hints that there's earthquakes. And they're essentially making it clear that Primordus is more active suddenly. Primordus is doing things. You, th this doesn't even come up in the living world necessarily. It's just, we'll see at the start of Champions, they throw that on you very quick. But there are more and more hints that Primordus, 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 please, please, please. And, and so, so have that in mind. Anyway, so remember Bangar's ego. Oh, this is cool. Not even a loading screen. Do I have to walk over to him? No? How do we do this exactly? How, how, how do we do this? So we just phased the whole eye of the north, eh? I guess. Oh, we press F on him. Okay, banger. I'd like to speak unless you're still sulking. This isn't the last conversation, it's the first, right? I think it is the first. Come to check on my accommodations? Not to worry. Time of my life. Best cage I've ever been in. Plush. If you're here to gloat, though, you'll have to get in line by the big blue dragon of my former protege. Trust is in short supply at the moment. I get it. Believe me, I don't trust any of you either. On the other hand, if anyone's trust has been abused, it's mine. Did I lie? Did I ever break my word? I told everyone exactly what I wanted and what I would do to get it. That kind of candor is rare these days. And what thanks do I get? Jormat screws me over? Disfigures me, hands the reins to my blazing apprentice, so you can wipe that self-superior look off your face. I'm the aggrieved party here. You don't get to judge me. Oh, I love you, Bangar. He's so good. I, I can't disagree with anything he says. He's so awesome, man. He's so well written and voiced. He's brilliant. Um... And the fact he's a part of this crazy shit between two Elder Dragons here. Like, he chimes in every now and then. <laughs> and it's so good whenever he does. Uh, by the way, we had a donation of $10 from Idolin. Thank you, Idolin. Who has a question. For End of Dragons, how would you rank these in terms of your excitement for them? Elite Specs, Story Lore, Maps Exploration, Fishing Skiff, Jade Bot, Siege Turtle, Others, Strikes, Legendaries. You want me to review a whole expansion in the middle of our story discussion? Okay, uh... I would rate Elite Specs fairly low, Story and Lore fairly high, Maps and Exploration somewhere in the middle, Fishing and Skiff somewhere in the middle, possibly a little bit low, Jade Bot somewhere in the middle, Siege Turtle somewhere in the middle, Strikes fairly high, Legendary Weapons middle high. That's that's what I that's how I would rate all of them. Commander, uh uh Jormag and Ryland, how did that happen? I should have seen it coming. Kid turned out to be more ambitious than I realized. You learn from the best. And you people pushed him. His war band, Cinder. That was your big mistake. You made it personal. Or smarter did. To Ryland, distinction without a difference. 
This is this sucks too, because if I want to get him properly in camera so you can really see him, it's gonna call his text box away. So even in first person, it doesn't help that much. You think Joel Mag always meant to just use you? I don't know. You asked me before this, I would have said no chance. No one mind controls Bangar Ruinbringer. But the way it played out was there an inflection point, a specific moment when if there was, I didn't know. I never felt for one second like my mind wasn't my own, but I heard the whispers. Maybe that's all it takes. That sentence, that last Funny line thing, there. Anybody mentioned whispers to Ryland? He genuinely seemed to have no idea what they were on about. He might have been the one person Jormac didn't whisper to. Yet, Jormac chooses him. I think about that a lot. Oh, this is so good. It makes Jormac doesn't make you do anything. It doesn't have to. All it has to do is persuade you to want what it wants. And if you want it already, so much the better. No need for whispers. Um... At this point, I think that's as much insight into Ryland's steel catcher as you're ever gonna get. I love that sense too, that you, you sometimes you don't know everything about a character, and that's just sort of natural sometimes. You know, it's okay if there's gaps in your knowledge and you can only speculate about Ryland. Man, uh, I wanted to say a ton of things as that was going along, but then he kept talking, and then I wanted to say other things, so I was like, kind of forgotten. Yeah, um... This idea that Ryland wasn't whispered to at all is quite captivating as well. Alright, well there you go. Uh, so that that's just meeting one. There's six of these. Uh, relive one of my visits. And this is better than in Guild Wars 1, because at least we don't have to keep hitting loading screens. Okay, next we've got Ritlock speaks his mind. Oh yeah, Ritlock's gonna have a chat with him. Yeah, and a bunch of this didn't have voice acting too, and look at how good it is with voice acting, right? Hey, Commander, I've still, this is Ritlock. I've still got some things I need to say to the prisoner. You might as well stick around to hear him. Okay, so thing number one. How could you let this happen? Be more specific. You know what I mean. How could you let Ryland do this? Let Ryland. You were there. You heard it all. This was not the plan. The plan. So brilliant. You never even noticed my son was plotting against you? Got me there. I don't have an answer. Maybe I'm losing a step. Maybe I was too focused on creating a future for the Char. You mean a future for yourself? Or maybe I was so busy seeing the stone glow in him, I forgot about the brimstone. The hell is that supposed to mean? You've clearly forgotten yourself. Char don't have sons. Redlock. Krisha knows that. Everyone knows that. Everyone but you. You should have stayed gone. Re that's his line from the opening cutscene as well in Grothmar again, remember? You should have stayed gone, nobody wants you. Dude! Dude, how can I criticize Ritlock's character thing with wanting a kid and stuff when the game so adequately pokes at the tension with all that and the drama and they openly talk about it so much. How can I criticize? It's just good, man. It's, there's nothing wrong with it at all. The fact that you get Bangar there talking this way is so good. Alright, second conversation here. Uh, Ritlock regrets staying away from the homelands for so long. I shouldn't have stayed gone. I should have come back a long time ago. You think that would have changed anything? Couldn't have hurt. You've been fraternizing with other races too long, Brimstone. We're char. We don't do regret. We make choices and we own them. Good or bad. We win, we take the glory. We lose, we take the shame. What we don't do is sit around agonizing for years about it. You've forgotten what it means to be char. Maybe. Maybe you're right. 
It's really good. They, it, like, they shine a spotlight on all this stuff, and it feels perfect and satisfying to me. Really, really enjoy it. By the way, in the live chat there, Cossage. Char have no sons, yet Bangar gets livid with Almora about blaming Ajax. Hypocrite. That's really good. I like to think that's totally intentional, too. Because he is a hypocrite. He is slimy. He is a liar, you know? He's just incredibly charismatic, right? So that's really good, because in private, that happened. He knows that Ritlock doesn't know that. And that he maybe has even convinced himself that he's better than that. But he's, he's just the same. It's really good. Okay, next. I'm not being very colourful with my language yet here, am I? I'm just saying really good constantly. Uh, relive one of your visits with Bangar. Aureen versus Jormag. Okay, here's where it starts to get pretty crazy. Elder Dragons. I can't remember how regularly these happened. Once a week, was it, I think? I actually wasn't enjoying a lot of these when they first came in. I, I did a lot of them in bulk later. Believe it or not. Champion. This is Aureen speaking. I love her faceplate in the dialogue. That looks so good. I sense a stronger presence around Bang Up. Perhaps Jormag is ready to break their silence. It's about time. Let's see what the Elder Dragon has to say. I would like to speak with Jormag. I don't take orders from you. I'm afraid it's no longer your choice. The Halloween. The dragon of prisms. Lovely as an ice crystal. It is nice to finally speak with you. Jormag, the dragon of ice and persuasion. You worked so hard to get them to wake you. Why? What is it you want? What I've always wanted, to be free and preserve Tyria. You whisper to vulnerable minds, turn allies against each other. This one, your voice, you've practically made a slave. Nothing was done that he did not invite upon himself. These weeks have shown you, I am not the enemy of your mortals. I value this world, Aurene. Perhaps we two are more alike than you think. I'm the youngest Elder Dragon, but I wasn't born yesterday. No, only about two years ago. <laughs> Your fear and focus are misplaced. I am not driven to madness and mindless rampage. Like your grandfather. <sighs> I've hit a nerve. Apologies. We can continue this conversation another time. Wait! <sighs> I will kill that. Dude, it would have been really cool if Bang off. I very much doubt that. Oh, yeah, and then she quips at him. I doubt it. <laughs> Bang in this moment, just surrounded by enemies, and everyone's just a dick to him. It's so good, dude. Um, yeah, I love hearing Jormag, like, actually talk, like, knowingly knows what happened to Kraukatoric. Like, deeply knows what happened about Kraukatoric. It's just a shame there's not another scene a little bit later on where there's even more conversation on that specific thing. I mean, there might be in one of these... But not too much, so I remember. Uh, Tulip said, did all of these happen for champions? Yeah, this was the bridge between the standard season and the star champions. Uh, also, someone else said it was every two weeks. It was two week wait for each one of these. And they did not work as well without this voice acting, I'll tell you that. Okay, why can't we talk to him now? Wasn't there, a, there was another conversation, wasn't there? Hmm, this seems to have... Uh, Disabled somehow. Let's do this. Relive a conversation with Bangar. Remember his ego. That will refresh it to this phase, right? So then we just immediately go back to Aureen versus Jormag. And now hopefully that's reset it and we can pick option two. Cheeky little bug there, but we might be alright with this. Oh. I would like No, to there was only one Jormag. option ever. Oh, okay. I don't take orders from you. Um, so Jormag's no secret. Your choice. The Halloween. The dragon of prisms. Lovely as an ice crystal. 
It is nice to finally speak with you. Jormag, the dragon of ice and persuasion. You worked so hard to get them to wake you. Why? What is it you want? What I've always wanted. So, free maybe I log in and out. Materia. You whisper to vulnerable I'm going to try and log in and out. Turn Let's just see what happens. Here we get Jormag flirting with Aurene. I don't think that that's flirting, man. It's not flirting. If the VI says that maybe they're smitten or they're a little bit intrigued or whatever, I think that's fine. But it's a bit much to say as a flirt. The dialogue's repeating because basically I, I messed it up. It's not bugged or anything. It's just me. It was the way I handled the cutscene. I thought that was clear from the, from the, the footage there, but it's okay. Um, so, draw my secret, and this should work now. I still haven't been able to pinpoint where Jormag's disappeared to, champion. They're very adept at hiding themselves from me. That makes me nervous. I'd like to know what Jormag's planning. Jormag, will you speak with us again? Don't do the mortals. Such curious creatures. Changed since the last time I was fully awake. Yet their lives are still so ephemeral. Very, very reminiscent of the end of Dragon's trailer, this dialogue here. You look down on them. That's a flaw. Oh, there are some exceptions. I can see why you've bound yourself to your commander. Not bound. Chosen and reciprocated. Yes. Yes. Just so, I suppose. I admit, now that I have one of my own, I understand the appeal of such a partnership. So Ryland is still with you? Of course. He's surprisingly easy to talk to. And an excellent strategist. That's the opposite of reassuring. It's been months since I awakened. And you still don't trust me. You raised an army. I'm betting you raise one still. An army led by my champion. Just as you have. And what do you plan to do with your champion and your army? Guard the future. And my freedom. I am not the threat, Aurene. Focus your attention on what is coming. Not on me. Frigid Lizard is scared. Of us? Not likely. And knowing what it is won't change the fact that they're playing you like a fiddle. Hmm. You would know. <laughs> See, she has no time for Bangar, man. She always gets the last word in. <laughs> Dude, yeah, oh, man. I really, uh, it's Jormag, man. The end of Jormag in the Icebridge Saga. Jormag's plan needed to be, like, awesome and work and stuff. Uh, it's so, cool. so anyway, the hints about Prime Orders are coming on faster and thicker here. What's coming? Something does scare Jormag, and it's it's Prime Orders. I even love this, this duality thing, by the way, where one's very cunning and intelligent, and the other is just raw destruction. The thing is... Jormag can't reason with an apocalypse. Do you know what I mean? You can't you can't reason with a volcano that's exploding in your face. And she's scared of it. Okay, so... Relive one of our visits. Uh, Kreisha weighs in. Uh, Commander, I've got some choice words for my former Imperator. Kreisha's gloves are off. I didn't trust you before, and I sure as hell don't trust you now. 
Give me one good reason not to kill you. Maybe you weren't paying attention, but the Ice Dragon stuck this thing on me. Apparently, I'm its spokes char. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if Jormag needs to talk with us, they'll find a way to do it, with or without you. Try again. I know Rylan better than anyone. Better than you, far better than Brimstone. I can tell you what he's likely to do. Recent events suggest otherwise. Last chance. My sparkling wit. <laughs> Man, imagine if ever- You miss me. I already miss you. I've missed you for months. The mentor who taught me half of all I know. That char I mourn. Not you. You, I just pity. Suggestive of a redemption story for Bangar one day. I mean, I don't know if I want to see him get totally softened, but it's a good idea. Guys, these are so good. Imagine if every Living World release in those two to three months. What is this? This is six things, two weeks per thing. Imagine if all, this, all the episodes had this, you know. You'd really get a sense of Tyrion time passing. Season six should totally do that. You'd really get a sense of time passing and the stories continuing and, and whatnot. But they need to be integrated and not miss missable, you know? Optional still. Optional but integrated. There's, there's an important thing that I'm saying there. And it's a delicate thing to nail. But I think it's this adds so much, you know? Uh, okay, next. Creature needs answers. What happened to you, Bangar? Were you always like this? Was I just blind to it? Like what? Blind to what? The hate. The sociopathy. Flames, you murdered Almora. She wanted to stop me. She told you the truth. Time was you expected that. From me, at least. Everything I did, I did for the char. Yeah. You keep telling yourself that. While I clean up your mess. Can I just note as well, this is all commanderless dialogue, obviously, because the budget and the cost for every commander line is so crazy. It's not worth it, man. Voice in the co It's like I said on this very playlist when we got to Heart of Thorns. It's not worth it. The commander does not need to be voiced that much. It's enough to get it in text. In fact, forcing us to get our only interaction in text probably leads them to be a bit more text heavy. Which, you know, I've already been talking about how good that would be. Creature cuts to the chase. So... Jormag can speak to us through you. That seems to be the idea. Does that cut both ways? Say we want to talk to Jormag. We just say whatever it is to you and Jormag hears it? You're assuming it gave me an instruction manual. I have no flaming idea. Let's try it. Jormag, Elder Dragon of Ice and Persuasion. I request an audience. I am Cretia Stoneglow, Imperator of the Blood Legion. Will you parlay? So it's a one-way thing. I'm the voice of Jormag, not the ears of Jormag. Or maybe it just doesn't care what you have to say. <laughs> I like the idea of Aureen look like side-eyeing them during that conversation. Look, and they even have space for fun little things. There's nothing essential or critical in that one. There's not even any, like, deep character interactions on that last one. It's just fun. You know, it's just a good conversation. Um... Finally, Jormag's enemy. So, the Prime Order stuff... Getting bigger and bigger and bigger. What's Pri what's Jormag scared of? Scared of? What did the world cry out? Champion, the energies deep beneath Tyria are churning, says Aureen. At first, the shift was so quiet, I hardly noticed it. But it's growing, and I'm afraid this is just the beginning. Yeah, it's hard to miss the earthquakes now. Jormag's got to be involved. Jormag, we need to... I've been waiting for you. I can be patient, Aureen. But I hope you'll be quicker to act in the days ahead. Primordus. His hunger will grow as he stirs. Destruction is not far off. You and your champion have already seen signs. You knew this would happen. 
But you still chose to impose your waking and primordiasis on the world. And you chose not to intervene. Despite your power and potential, you left it to mortals. It's their world as much as mine. There's nothing to be gained, and... Oh, little sister. How wrong you are. Careful you don't learn the lesson too late. So then you kill him. That time will come, but not yet. My twin will awake, and he will set the world ablaze. Look to that world, Doreen. Very soon you will have to make a choice. If you are to have any chance of saving it. <sighs> Little bang out comment, maybe? No? Okay, yeah, so, look, I think even... Uh, so can you introduce and kill Primordus in a single patch? Look, it was always going to be really tight. One of the arguments I made when this came out last year, a lot of my argument, a lot of my discussion actually was focused on, look, you've been given a poison chalice. We all know it's poisoned. It, well, if you're going to decide it's poisoned, they could have just dropped the story and not tried to rush through it all. But let's say they're going to rush through it all. You know, there's a lot. You could be extremely efficient about champions and make sure the most important stuff gets the focus. But what you're going to find, the biggest problem with champions for me actually, is you have a limited time. And a lot of this time we spend not actually focusing on the stuff we could be focusing on. Like, for example, I think champions should open immediately establishing the final boss area and talking about that stuff. Instead of just flinging us on, on it at the end, you know. And one of the other things as well, I think, can you do Prime Orders like this? I think, you know, Jormag's talking all scarily about Prime Orders. She's scared of Prime Orders. She thinks it's going to set the world ablaze. We need to actually see that happen in Champions then. And what actually happens is some tiny little skirmishes. And that's the other big problem. You know, Prime Orders needed some victories. It needed to crack Ratasum. Do you know what I mean? It needed to, and I say that because of Sura Prime Orders pairing. There needed to be a lot more dwarf stuff, for example. Script stuff. Anyone who's been displaced by Primordus suddenly deserves a look-in on this story, you know. There should be volcanoes and shit erupting. There should be fields getting burned. And I appreciate you can't really touch the existing maps very well. And you can't add any new maps in this patch either, so it's really tricky to do that. But, you know, without any of that, it's just like there's nothing credible about that half. It's not even a half, is it? That fifth of, of this story. So, anyway, I think the absolute right decision was to not rush through this. But they, they try to. Um, the other thing I do just want to say as well. So, again, that's Visions for Arene. We're going to start Champions now. I've sparked a big voice acting debate. Should the commander be voice acted? Someone in the live chat there said, I like my commander. I like my cat. Nobody's saying you can't like it, right? You Think intelligently about this, though. You can like something and it's still not worth it. Do you understand that? Nobody's saying that they hate the commander speaking. I mean, maybe someone people are, but... That's a fringe... That doesn't matter. You don't need to actively dislike the commander speaking for it to be the right move to get rid of the commander's voice or reduce the commander's voice. You know, we don't live in a black or white world. If you like the, vo the commander's voice even a tiny bit, that's not argument enough, right? If it, there's a huge cost for every moment with the commander's voice, you have to fucking love the commander's voice. The commander's voice and the commander's character has to be the linchpin of the fucking game, you know? If you love it, you have to be over the moon ecstatic about the commander's voice for it to be worth a certain cost, okay? Just liking it a little bit is not argument enough, right? That's the point. And the other point is nobody should advocate just deleting the commander's voice, okay? Again, we're not in a black and white world. There are degrees of modality here. I would argue that they simply cut back on the commander's voice, like massively. You could give the commander like a fifth of the lines, like barely any lines, and 99% of the player base won't notice that the amount they're voicing is going down. Most people who do these Bangar conversations, for example, probably didn't cognitively realize the commander wasn't talking. You know, it's like how you can play shit tons of patches in a row before you remember that Canark's not even been around, right? And you might realize there's been some drama behind the scenes with the, with, uh, with a voice actor. 
Right, people don't realize it because they're not actually paying that much attention. So you don't need to kill the commander's voice and do a blog post talking about how the commander's voice is being removed. Because that just draws attention to something that never needed attention put on it. And that's just going to create Reddit threads and forum threads about something that doesn't matter. You just cut back on it. Keep the commander's voice. Just do it less. And now the enormous cost is not so important, right? What I think that these demonstrate here, and what Season 2 demonstrated as well, by the way, you go back to the first few parts of this playlist and watch Season 2. The Commander doesn't talk in Season 2, and it's rich, detailed, brilliant storytelling. There's a huge expense being paid in manpower and just money and voice acting talent and all that, that actually is offering basically nothing, you know? A vague sense that you like the Commander's voice is not argument enough against that. So anyway, that's, that's my thoughts on the voice acting thing. And they are definitive. Okay, so, uh, champions, here we go. Rallying their allies, the commander defends Tyria from the march of two dragons. Now, I think a lot of gameplay innovations came out of this that were brilliant. There's a new content stream. It's called Dragon Response Missions. Let's see what we got when we hit play. Look, someone in the live chat saying they never even realized Season 2 didn't have the voice until this season. Yeah, people back in the day knew because he wasn't in Season 1 either. So, it was two seasons back to back with no voice. So, Ritlock, uh, we're probably going to get a conversation. Oh, maybe I can, maybe you're alright. Uh, talking with Jormag. Hey, Commander, I'm headed to the Eye of the North with Bram. For a while now, he's been working up the nerve to have a talk with Jormag. I'm not sure why he asked me to come, why he asked me to come along. Handholding's more your thing. But I won't say no to a friend. Just so you know, uh, in case you wanted to join. So, we had Kreisha talking. We saw Rit Ritlock had a scene. Now, Bram's scene is in the actual episode. Um, this is a bit clunky, isn't it? How do you want me to do this, Arena? Step really far away and then step back? Just another Elder Dragon, yeah. right? You faced those before. <laughs> I mean, this one ought to be scared of me. Ah, uh, sure. Oh, good. The commander. Redlock? Brand. Fine. I'm fine. Yeah. He's been helping us clean up the last of the Dominion. They've gone pretty quiet. Word got around about Bangar. They mostly fell apart. The ones who didn't, well, Imperator Stoneglow's no pushover. Still no Ryland sightings, I take it? No Frost Legion, no Ice Dragon, and yeah, no whatever Ryland is. I'm not the only one with a bad feeling about that, right? Jormag's spoken through Bangar a few times now. Hasn't said much. Well, I'm in the mood for answers. Let's get some. My friends, you felt it too. The stirrings deep beneath us. Earthquakes erupting all over Tyria. So the Crystal Bloom have told me. Jormag. I don't believe it is. But something is moving. Something's coming. But not the Elder Dragon. The older you get, the more I think you enjoy sounding ominous. I am an Elder Dragon, after all. <laughs> I like that. Cage nice little is knowing. awful close. They can't hear us, can they? They can't hear anything in my presence, unless I allow it. Now might be the time. Bram has some issues to work through. Oh, the Norn. You honestly think your Mac's gonna tell you anything you don't already know? Glorified megaphone. But you still love hearing yourself talk. You know it's easier when you don't fight it. Take a breath. Jormag! Jormag! I am Bram Arison. I've come to speak with you. Ori! Ah, you're amassing your warriors. They won't be any use. You mean, against the Earthquakes? Mm, my brother is incapable of subtlety. He stirs, and when he awakens, oh, it will not be with the same grace as I. Grace? You corrupted spirits with your evil, and acted out crimes for thousands of years. I have a will to live, and a right. If that is a crime, no one is innocent. Do not presume to know me. But I do. I know exactly what you are. I was raised on the stories. 
and the prophecies. Mortals. Clinging to superstitions to give your brief lives meaning. You are not invincible. And so emotional. Aureen, you will never reach your potential if you surround yourself with beings like these. And reach it you must, for the sake of us all. The time has come to end Primordus. That's not my role. The balance can still be maintained. The balance is a fantasy. Another mortal superstition. Primordus will lay waste to this world, and you are not ready. Um, hey, Commander, are you busy right now? I mean, what is it, Timey? Well, we've been monitoring Mithras and ley lines, keeping an eye out for Jormac like you asked. Haven't found Jormac, but we have found... Easier to show you the data. Could you come to Radisum? I know I've had enough pompous dragons speaking through a pompous has-been for one day. Grimlock! You should definitely come too. Soon. Go, champion. Maybe timey can offer some clarity. Man, it's crazy actually. It's it's like I just said, you don't notice when something's not there. Timey, I it's weird, it's kinda of cool to hear her actually, because it has been a almost two whole parts and we haven't heard a single line from Ty Timey that whole time. And I never thought I'd actually say that because Timey is overloaded pretty much everywhere in the game. <laughs> but uh okay, um, do we get any extra dialogue here with these guys? No, not at all. So, off to Rat Assume we go. And remember, Aureen's like, that's not my role, because, like... So, there's there's kind of a lot going on in that conversation there. Is Jormag saying that the whole Oblivion thing is a superstition? Primordus will lay waste to this world. So, basically, here's the conversation here. It's... Jormag says, Aureen, you have to help me kill Primordus. Aureen says, no, that's not my role, as in, we believe that if we kill too many Elder Dragons, everything's going to get fucked up. It's Glint's legacy. I'm here to replace a dragon, not destroy them. And then Jormag responds by saying, yeah, this is just a superstition. Jormag's going to kill you all. So is, is Jormag telling the truth there or lying there? Wasn't there a whole thing about Jormag never lies? Look, you're required to file your claims with the Dockmaster in hey, person. Gork. This is ridiculous. You do realize. Take it up with a council member. Once you've collected your freight. See if I won't. <sighs> Finally, Commander. Everything okay? According to the Arcane Council, the sanctity of independent research is superseded by other priorities. Time he's out at the Advanced Metamystics Lab. I'll get you to the gate. Then I have to cut through some pernicious red tape. Man, his mic seems a bit weird there. Sometimes in Guild Wars, there's this weird graininess in the mic, like they're clipping and somewhere in the mids or something. I don't know. I always hear it. Um, yeah, so by the way, by the end, we're, an extra excitement for me right now is genuinely, I'm doing these missions for a legendary amulet. Once we finish this, we'll have, you know that weird rainbow glow all around Aureen all the time? Oh, whoops. It's an amulet. We'll begin. The Pact Commander. Welcome. I presume you've come to hear Timey's findings as well. You have any idea who you've let in here? What he's done? Ryland Steelcatcher, champion of Jormag. He commands the Ice Dragon's forces. We've been looking everywhere for you. Radosum is no char battlefield. What's done is done, Commander. The Arcane Council deals in the present and the future. Jormag is awake. Yeah, because of him. Which means Primordus will not be far behind. Facing a common enemy, alliance is logical. I'd think the Pact Commander would recognize the value of this arrangement. You would think. The Asura have studied Primordus for ages. Foolish not to seek their knowledge. And Jormag's no fool. For sure. As Elder Dragons go, Jormag's pretty reasonable. Exactly. Jormag and I keep our word. When Primordus rises, we will erase him out of existence. And since we're all playing nice, how about you return my bow? You know, the one you stole. Now why would I hand you a weapon you think can hurt your mag? Act first, think later, right? I mean... Don't worry. I'll keep it safe for you. Oh, I'm getting it back. Ram? 
Why don't you help Gorik with his delivery on the docks? Ritlock and I can handle this. Sure. Why not? I believe that's the last mention of the bow in the saga, by the way. I'm surprised to actually see that there was one in Champions itself. I believe that's the end. Also, I adore the Asura here. I think this is a really smart thing that they've done with this. This is exactly the kind of Asura I like, you know. They're like slimy, you know, and they'll forge whatever alliance. And also, it's a really cool thing because it makes Tyria feel really big, you know. That everything that happened with this big child war, this is the tarnished coast, man. This is a long way away. And the Asura here don't care. So they're happy. I mean, the fact that there's clearly an Elder Dragon corrupted minion here. But can we imagine a Sun Asfarna being allowed to wander around here? Sure, certainly. So I actually really like that. Anyway, Zudo is like one of the counselors in right at the start of the personal story is an Asura too. Um, yeah, there's everything about what they did with the Asura here. Allying with uh, the Ice Brood in order to fight the, the Destroyers. This is all great. It just feels to me... It feels to me like Ice Brood Saga has like four more episodes to pad it out. Two of them, three of them after Jaw Mag Rising, one of them before No Quarter. Ignore the Centaur story altogether. And then you've got a good Ice Brood Saga. And it feels like we're now in the Destroyer Saga to me, right? It feels like we should be f much further ahead. So it kind of comes across like cliff notes, a lot of this stuff. Something I really hope End of Dragons doesn't do. Alliance, huh? What happened to your char above all crap? Oh, now you want to talk to me instead of just shouting my name. I love this Ritlock swearing stuff. Spend some time with your man. I see the bigger picture now. Everyone has a role to play. Oh, great! Commander, you made it! I won't have to go through this twice. I've been tracking the quakes. Needles all over the place. Way more than ordinary tectonic movement. Can you tell if it's Primordus? Some readings mimic Primordus's signature. Some may be lay energy. And I still haven't figured out this spike. That can't be right. We've never seen activity this far below the crust. So many blips literally all over the map. Like bodies burrowing up. And where exactly do we expect these bodies to surface? Where can't we? I mean, just look at this. I love her animation in the chair there. That's so good. To be honest, I'm really enjoying this at the moment. I've got a really high opinion of it. I actually, I'm enjoying myself so much right this second that I feel terrible for being so miserly earlier on in today's video. Or just as a general vibe. I'm quite, I'm quite into it. How long have you been seeing movement under Radasu? What? Oh no. That is very, very not good. Okay. Keep him out of the lab. Oh man, I kind of want Vault right now. It's kind of cool doing this here at this lab as well. Makes me think of Gore and when we were last here. See, so yeah, again, when you get to into a destroyer saga, when when you're doing this story too, the dwarves, all those prominent um, Asura. It's not just, you know, shit like the Arcane Eye should be in this storyline at this point, I would say. I don't know, maybe they can utilize them in later ones. I do really appreciate how in Champions, they at least have new abilities on these destroyers, and they're slightly more challenging varieties. I do appreciate that. By the way, all these DRMs coming up, they're five-man stuff. So if you guys want to party up, I'm playing on European servers right now. So if you guys want to do it, um, just throw me a party invite. You just type slash join list in game and then uh, it, will, it will send me one. Slash join spacebar LYS, that's it. It's like seven characters in your party bot window, in your uh, chat box. I'll accept them when I uh, when I get out of this. Actually, I can accept them. No, I mean, I really don't mind. I don't see any downsides to playing with them. These destroyers harder to kill than last time. They definitely seem bigger than I remember. Meaner too. Help! Horik, up the ramp. Go, go. Talk to us, Bram. Destroyer problem on the docks. 
Could use some hands here. One sec. Got it. I programmed the gate for a one-way trip harborside. Let's go. This is quite cool as well in this one story. This is we get teleported all over, right, I assume. Like, look at this. This is we're actually going to physically move. Same instance, really far away. This is like when you're in the actual map in the city and you get a pet near the gate and they can TP through the gates really rapidly. So look, 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 we actually get to fight with the alongside these guys. Frost Legion Musketeers. Whoopsie. I still always get this weird feeling when I fall in the water like that, like I'm going to lose my bloodlust stacks or something. But I don't run with bloodlust for a very long time. Oh, that's cool, we got a whole pie. The more players we play with, the more it will scale. So hopefully people have like, you know, decent enough builds. And that one might actually speed us up, you know. We should get a few champions and stick with the story rather than the gameplay. How does this telegraph work? Look at this, Elite Frost Legion Phalanx. He's massive. Absolutely huge. But yeah, imagining a whole destroyer saga that gets all these details in and has the, you know, the shifting alliances, who's helping who and stuff. Oh. Would have been awesome, man. There's another attack. See, and it's interesting, all the decisions they made with Canther and End of Dragons and stuff, is, they, why, why, you know, make the Canthan expansion, um, the Destroyer Saga expansion if you want, you know, it doesn't have to be Living World, if you've got all the story subject material there, why do an injustice to it by rushing through it all? Is the, is the Elder Dragon story that bad? Are you really going to blame Guild Wars 2's lack of success on the Elder Dragon subject material? I know that some people in the community will do that, but I mean, come on, that's nonsense. They could monetize any storyline they want and associate it along with uh, an expansion, a box, as long as the other stuff's there, at least specs, masteries, all that. I don't trust Jormag's gopher at my back. Keep up, Lord. So the only conclusion I can come to is that just the writers don't care about the Elder Dragon story anymore, and that's the truly depressing bit. And that, that was what I was saying in my recap of Dragonstorm as well, a year ago. Like, that was the big thing. That was kind of my big point in the video, that if you just look at the decision making, the only thing that I, I can get out of it, the only reason why we are doing what we're doing is because they don't care about the Elder Dragon story. As far as I can make out. And even a year on, I, I still feel that way. I still see it that way. I mean, I don't know whether... There's some mystery dev comment that I've missed that sheds more light on it. But why, why did we have to rush through this? You want to rush into an expansion because you think it sells better than Living World and stuff, blah, blah, blah. I get that. But the expansion could be whatever story you want it to be. Look at this story. This is a good story. think they just didn't care about Primordus as a character? Uh, I mean, yeah, that, that, that could be it as well. I mean, that's what I said, that they don't care about the Elder Dragons. Whether whether it's all Elder Dragons, whether it's the whole arc, you know, because you might not call it an Elder Dragon mark. You might also refer to it as like, you know, a, a magical imbalance arc or something, you know, whatever you want it to be. Um, or whether it's all of them or whether it's one of them, whether it's just that they don't care about Primordus. But it's not just Primordus that got done dirty here. It's, it's Jormag. There's no resolution to, like, the, the bow or what Jort Mag was really trying to do or, like, how, how cunning and intelligent Jort Mag is just to watch it wander into a trap in five minutes, you guys will see. Like, it's not like they did justice to Jort Mag either. Me, me, me. 
no matter what way you cut it, it, it the Ice Bridge Saga is an incomplete story, and the potential for the Destroyer Saga is obviously an incomplete story. It's all done dirty, all of it. I think it would have helped a lot if this instance was much you more apocalyptic and fiery. Can't say I was expecting you to have my back. You dying doesn't help us kill Primordis, Commander. You honestly expect us to believe this Alliance stuff? Doesn't really matter what you believe, does it? Where did these destroyers even come from? One minute we're checking crates, and the next they're bubbling up from the water. Never seen... Jamie, move! Like... Protect the council. Like... Like, you know what I said about Primordis needs a victory? Imagine this instance. Keep everything about this instance ex exactly the same. But have it just like really orange and fiery everywhere. You know, and maybe just break some crates and shit, right? And then just basically say, look, this is really bad. He, 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 this is an apocalypse. This is a, a, a global inferno that's coming. And Rat assumes seriously damage. And you might say, well, WP, how will they show that damage? It's just implied damage that you don't really get to enjoy because the open world, Rat assume, is set in the past. I mean, cities kind of aren't set in the past, so. but yeah, maybe they could hand wave that. I, th I think that I think that would have been the smarter way to do this, because then it feels like this is more sincere. When we get to Metrica, they do stuff with the lighting, which is good, a bit more. But still, this just feels like a couple of like destroyer burrows have appeared, and we'll just sort of clean them up. And you know, what was the casualties here? A couple of golems. You know, it's not quite as far as what I was really suggesting, that Rat assumes you get cracked and fall out of the sky, but, you know. This specimen differs wildly from archival accounts of destroyers. Also, it's gigantic. Spear had a study of these creatures. Catalog the evolutionary discrepancies. Identify any weaknesses. Let's pool resources. If I can isolate a clearer signature, we can pinpoint when and where they'll show up. I'd like to leave a small force in your city to wait for any information and to protect our allies. The Asura are more than capable of guarding our city, but we are grateful for the gesture and the alliance. When Primordis is destroyed, Jormag will see your former home restored to you. You can't possibly promise that. Of course I can. I'm the champion of Jormag. We need to spread the word. Any place that's felt even the slightest tremor, they've got to prepare. I'm heading up to Kresha. I'll pass the word on my way. Might want to put the crystal bloom on it, too. I'm gonna stay here. Keep an eye on things for a bit. There you go, return to Primordus Rising. It's beginning. Getting that amulet, baby. How's our inventory? Just about safe. Man, it was doing those adventures that filled up the most this time. Um, okay. By the way, I always like Rylan. You know, he had the flame saw, and now it's like an ice saw. An eye saw, flax man. I've got to get a screenshot of you for the mod. Right now, High Council of Flax in the mod just looks like a generic Asura, and I kind of want him to look precisely like the right guy, because he has a very distinct appearance as an Asura. Okay, um, so touch. Oh, we go back to Aurene straight away. I really like this bit as well, where Timey kind of sides with the Asura more than, than Bram, and they kind of have that. Because you got to think about the history of the two characters as well, where Bram was like a protector of Timey for a long time, like a big brother kind of thing. And then you see them sort of take opposite sides on this issue. So sure of the world, aren't you? Is it your youth? The manner of your birth? Living among them? All these vague warnings, but you're not actually telling me anything. Why not find a way to keep Primordus asleep? Primordus must die. There is no alternative. Your champion survived this day. I doubt that luck will hold. You knew about the destroyers at Radasum? I know all that my champion knows. It's special, isn't it, Aurene? The bond with one's champion? I'll leave you to yours. For what it's worth, I do believe Jormag wants to be free of Primordis. I'll buy that. 
But what happens once Jormag gets what Jormag wants? And who gets caught in the crossfire? This isn't just a Char or Norn issue anymore. Tyria is about to have a serious destroyer and dragon problem. It's going to take all of us. I won't leave you without support. I can give you something of myself to help as you face Primordius' vanguard. Orin, Tyria needs us. All of us. And we need you. Energy this volatile. I fear my presence would only exacerbate things. No. I'll do what I can from here. The rest is up to you. This always felt kind of rough. Commander, you there? Hey, Timmy. How's the research going? Making headway? There's a signal from under the city that's getting stronger. Some of my team still haven't evacuated. On my way. This whole thing with Aureen setting out, if they're going to start telling us that we're in a really, really dangerous situation, Aureen sitting out now starts to seem really weird. But, to be honest, if they had written it in, if it was really emphasized that she's standing out, she's standing out, and by the end she gives in, and then she has this epic moment in the final fight, three Elder Dragons in one place, I can really see that working. I can really see them taking all those frustrations that Aureen isn't helping out, and twisting them into a really cool story where, oh, we have this sudden release where she does come at last, and she sees the sense of fighting with us. Um, but it's all very muted. I remember when I first played Dragonstorm that, uh... <laughs> I hardly even noticed Orim was a part of the fight, <laughs> uh, which is all kinds of depressing, but it's true. Um, sorry, oh, through the Eye of the North, uh, sorry, okay. Right, yeah, guys, if you want to do these DRMs with me, come up to Eye of the North, that's it. Because, of course, we, we trigger them all from here. <laughs> there I am, just TPing straight to Magical Province. <laughs> Uh, okay, so... Mexico Province Dragon Response Mission Champion Story. This is it. And then I'll do a private instance. What's our comp here? Dragon Hunter, a Druid. We're not going to do challenges or anything. I do want those achievements, but... Didn't realize you were still out this way. Time you put me to work helping her scientists. The place is bleeding destroyers. Her teams are spread all over these labs. Most portals in and out of Radasuma have been shut down. No one wants destroyers getting into the heart of the city. This area isn't easy to defend. We should get these people back inside the city walls. Yeah, and make sure no destroyers follow them through the portal. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, I do want the achievements for all the bonus stuff. However, um... I don't want this to take, you know, eight hours to do all of Champions. We're on the very first DRM, so the faster we get through these, the better, so that we can stick with the story. So that's all I want to do. I want to keep at a good pace here. Speaking of which, isn't there a way we can kill the countdown timer at the start, just instantly, if we want to? So we don't have to wait the five minutes every time? I mean, it's only five minutes here. You might think, well, it doesn't matter too much, but if it's every DRM, if there's a way to skip it, um, it feels, it would probably, uh, aggregate, save us a lot of time. Oh, if you just finish the events, it ends the timer? Oh, okay, that's what it is, that's what it is. Um, okay, so yeah, let's, uh, just run through. What do we want to do here? Evacuate scientists, repair defense golems. How do I do each thing? I need a wrench from a toolbox. Oh man, and he's going to interrupt me there. So, I don't know. We've probably got a lot of time for me to chat about this. But I really love DRMs. I actually think they're a brilliant way of doing story missions. Meaningful co-op in the MMO for all the story stuff. That's huge. That alone is just... Hit it until something happens. <laughs> Brute force. Well, it kind of worked. Uh, that alone is a massive deal to me. That they've managed to make the, all this story content actually co-op and MMO feely and, and meaningful for communities and stuff. It's really, really good. Throw in the fact that they're repeatable. Throw in the fact that they reuse existing areas of the world in interesting ways, which I think Destroyers they do. Incoming. Time to evacuate. Everybody, get to the portal. They don't always have to do that for what it's worth, you know. I do believe DRMs would be better in new areas, like a Farina style DRM. For now, the smartest thing is to get back inside the city. Um. 
You know, what's not to love about DRMs? What's not to love is when the entirety of the patch is a DRM and it's just grind. The idea that the only content Guild Wars will ever get is DRMs, that sucks. But a DRM as a part of a release with a regular map and all that other stuff, out. I think it's golden. Do you have time for a research expedition? Half these folks will guard the portal and help the evacuation, but we've got a rare chance to get some even rarer data. Okay, so Timey here making an argument. Robots. They'll make collection and defense a whole lot easier. My crew's ready to pitch in. We're ready if you are. So we go. What did Timey say? She has a crew now. Sorry, what was that? NPC. Oh no, that was just a random golem answer saying my crew's ready to pitch in. Yeah, I was gonna say what. So what's uh, down there that's so important? The signal from deeper in the cave. It's one I haven't been able to duplicate consistently in the lab. Ryland and Jormag are waiting on my analysis. My findings could help them kill the fire dragon. Wait, you're okay with this alliance? If it means stopping Primordis, you're not. I just an elder dragon is an elder dragon. Jormag can't be taken late. Jormag's not the one pinging my instruments. Come on. I think uh, Timey's totally right here, by the way. But I can also totally understand why Bram is really upset about it. Given their history. And uh, they talk about this as well. It's really cool to hear Timey talk about the depths of Tyria in a second. Mortis is all hunger and destruction. At least Jormag can be spoken with. Reasoned with. Ever tried to chat up Ice Brood? It doesn't work. They just start smashing stuff. What about the Spawnier? Frost Legion? Yeah, scary fanatics, but mostly intelligent. And now Ryland controls them. Oh, d a dialogue. Why does this keep happening? Is Prophecy this... says I kill the Ice Dragon, or they kill me. Doesn't sound... Prophecy says I kill the Ice Dragon, or they kill me. Doesn't sound very reasonable. There's something about the sound settings, I think we can fix enough? that, but I don't know what we're it is. We're going to get more of these the farther in we go. That's the point, Commander. And we're definitely getting warmer. You guys are destroying, by the way. It You're all doing really well. Pretty small sample size. <laughs> small sample size, but she's right. right. Now, Jormag and Primordis are evenly matched. So we get them to destroy one another. Everything Timey says here is great. I mean, it talks about all kinds of other areas of lore. The moment-to-moment -moment conversations are still, like, top tier, I think, even here. I think that's the big thing about the Ice Cream Saga. A lot of the moment-to-moment -moment stuff is all really good. It's just the overall tapestry that they build together. Starts to feel bad. So the other thing about DRMs is the mastery and all that. Long. We may have no choice but to help them kill Primordis. Before we had guesses. Now we have knowledge. Jormag's been very forthcoming. Did you know the two dragons are twinned? Jormag, this is getting rough. How many more things do you really need? And that's why I brought reinforcements. Jormag lies, he says. I get where you're coming from, I do. But even if Jormag's lying, the data doesn't. Jormag's not the one burning our world, killing our people, destroying our homes. Primordis is. Jormag terrorized the norm, made us you run. Remember? Her. Run or die. But you're still there in the mountains and snow. We had to abandon everything, and we're not the only ones. Jormag isn't threatening you, but that is. <laughs> Oh yeah, the names of these enemies. There's a lot of like hinting at the bigger stories here. Destroyer of the Iron Hammer line. Did in the stone version of Jarlis maybe at some point. So cool. Yeah, I've noticed that as well. In that conversation earlier with Aureen and Jormag, like, there's a lot of like uh, telling, not showing. Like a lot of what Jormag said earlier about like... Um, Oh, we can't just find a way to put it back to sleep. Just trust me, bro. We can't. We can't. We have to deal with it. And it's like, why? Well, because I say so. Why? You know, there's not any kind of deeper logic not to a lot of what's happening, for, unfortunately. Let's get you back through the portal. And that's a problem. And that's be that's necessary because of the super speed pace we're going at now. 
But yeah, I was going to comment on that earlier, but then their conversation kept going and there were a ton of other things to say. I'm really impressed with you guys in the party, by the way. This is so unbelievably fast and smooth. It's actually more than I ever expected. You guys are doing so good. Also, the music here. Did I say that yet? Look, they do some dramatic this stuff with the lighting and the music. Like I like it. Like, DRMs were hated on, but it's really important to recognize that they're hated on as a function, if the, as an entire patch thing, you know? The idea of only DRMs for, like, nine months. That's where the issues are. But they're so good. As a part of a balanced diet of content. Yeah, you see? You see? Getting some good metaphors in there. So did we. This is Primal Distancing. Yeah, there's actually a few variations of this. I remember listening and like I had, I had to pick exactly which one I wanted for my battle music soundtrack. I think I end my battle music soundtrack entirely with Elder Dragon tracks. I think I do Prime Orders first, Zaitan second. Z the Zaitan music is super classic Guild Wars. It feels really classic and weird. I think I end with Morgamoth because Morgamoth is the best one. I think the whole battle music soundtrack ends with it. Stronger together. Gotta take out the biggest one. So here we go. <clears throat> also, I will say the pace of the gameplay and the dialogue delivery is really good here as well. It's not very stop, start, stop, start. It's just like they're talking while you're playing. It's like in the Dark Rhyme Delves on the previous part in this playlist. I was, how fun the Dark Rhyme Delves were, and I was saying it's like Guild Wars at its best. It's like it's like the same in here, I think. Um, Incredible. The destroyers are all linked. Their energy signature is read as Primordus whenever they attack. I wonder if their connection to him strengthens when they burn. Stop pretending you're not afraid. Of course I'm afraid. So are you. The difference is what I'm afraid of is actively trying to burn down my gates. I'm not saying you're wrong. We can deal with Jormag later if it comes to that. But Primordus is the threat right now. Rem, you knew where a big destroyer was going to be for the second time. How did you... I don't know. I don't know what's going on with me. Timey was right. We're all scared. We face the threats as they come. It's all we can do. And if Jormag becomes a threat again, we'll face that too. Believe me, you're not the only one with doubts. Let me know when Timey tells you the next hotspot. I'll help wherever I'm needed. I don't actually know where Bram is. Man, yeah, they're really... <sighs> Maybe all the Icebrood Saga needed was a cutscene of, of Primordus just wasting somewhere or something. They really, really are trying to give you an impression that all of Tyria is burning, right? It's just, so maybe it's like there needed to be, you know the start of the Icebrook Saga has that, the trailer? Maybe there needed to be something like that, but just about Primordus unleashing a conflagration or something. Or some sense of the fallout here. I don't know what it is. If I could really buy that the world was properly burning right now, I could totally think that maybe you can do what they're going to try and do here. Commander, you read? Watchful Source is about to become the next destroyer hotspot. Silvari lands. Get word to Kaith. I'm already here, and so are the destroyers. Come quickly. Sounds like you'll need more help. I'll see what I can scrounge. But the thing is, the way the DRMs work, half of these are only going to be about Jormag stuff. And then, like, that you had to wait two months between each new section of champions and stuff, or however long it was, really slowed the whole thing down and made it feel like there wasn't that adrenaline there. I, I don't know. Anyway, let's keep... By the way, this kind of looks so good. I like how shiny he looks just kneeling down there. What is that? Why am I so into the appearance of that there? Okay, so, uh, next one. So, we get a bit of a world tour here as well, and what Arena Net do is they take this as an opportunity to, like, just throw a bunch of characters we haven't seen for a while at us. So, like, we get to catch up with Kanark here with his new voice actor very briefly. We get a little bit of a look at the Tengu. We get a little bit of a look at the dwarves. Unless Tiny sends more, it's only us here now. This place is going up like kindling. Any defenses? A few, but they weren't meant for this. It's all in disarray. 
Let's do what we can do. And I think that was a mistake about champions. I think they shouldn't have got... I get the the desire to do all the little bits. I mean, Christ, I I'm constantly asking for more and more. But I think going scatter shot wasn't great. I think this all should have been really focused on how it's going to end. Like, I think we should be at Anvil Rock right now, for example. Maybe they didn't have the time to make the, the arena or something. We should be talking about how we're going to try and lure Jaw Mag. It should all be about that. And the bow. I can't remember in my video last year what I said elected as candidates, but I spent a good deal of time saying, okay, these are all the biggest things. Doing a bit with Kanark was a waste. Doing a bit with the Tengu is a waste. Doing a bit in Kaladin is a waste. Like, it's all precious, valuable time. And I mean, it's fun, don't get me wrong, but... It's not essential, and a lot of essential stuff got dropped, in my opinion. In my opinion, in my opinion, in my opinion. Please, any video you ever watch from me, just imagine I've said, my, in my opinion, 100,000 times. I don't, because it's tedious, but I, I, I'm not trying to be an authority or anything. I don't mean to give this big know-it-all impression, because I'm not trying to do that. I forgot to talk, don't forget to talk to the NPCs around the war table and I of the north, Logan Farron, they have some extra dialogue. Okay, if I remember to do that soon. So let's pour some of these out. Have we already poured all, enough of them out? Yes, we have. All we need to do is activate uh, mortars and kill destroyers. Well, killing destroyers I can do. Oh, there's one here actually. It's already active. You guys are even doing good getting all these little uh, mechanics done. You try to suspend your disbelief with Guild Wars 2 stories for a lot, but sometimes it feels like a tired muscle. I'm telling you, if that's how you feel, um, I don't know whether you played it or not, friggin' Paco, but really, or you watched me playing it, but really, that is where Final Fantasy is so good. It is the yin to the yang, I promise. You will never have to do it that in that game. That's the main thing it does better. Pacing, thinking ahead, breadcrumbing, structuring, long term. All the moment to moment stuff is a hundred thousand times better in Guild Wars. Everything about Guild Wars is better moment to moment. The area is it's just big arcs Enough. and plotting and stuff. This village won't near this stand good. another attack. If we can trace these destroyers back to their source, perhaps we can cut them off for good. Steel catcher. Asura said some Samari were under attack. You are in case? Something like that? Where's your Frost Legion? Overkill. Think you'll find me more than sufficient. Unless you don't want my help saving these people. That doesn't sound like you, Commander. Appreciate the extra hand. Time is of the essence. This way. Oh, I love this. This is your Ritlock son. Technically, the least important thing about me. You should care more about the salient parts. Such as? That's Such a good... As, we're the only three people in the world who know what it's like to be close to an elder dragon. Love that line. Changes you. It's like finding your purpose and fulfilling it. I didn't find my purpose. I made it. No more climbing the ranks of other people's armies. Jormat sees me. She's my worth. Yeah, that's a great line. It's a great thing to acknowledge that Kaith is kind of physically modified, just like Ryland is there. Uh, what was the other thing I really wanted to say? Just a second ago. Oh yeah, that thing, being Ritlock's son is the least important thing about me. That's a line that works really well for the end. Knowing Ryland's fate. Jormag implied you two have some sort of mind melt. A dragon's voice can be seductive. Were you coerced? He was king? I have agency thank you. I can make my own choices. No persuasion needed. The commander's right to be wary. When it comes to elder dragons, Aureen is often the exception, not the rule. You've been the dragon champion for a while, Commander. Sharing spotlight, that's got a chief. This whole conversation, every, all of these is the DRM's really good. By the way, it's really striking me how much emphasis there is on Dragon plus Champion here. 
End of Dragons might continue that. You might find that the Deep Sea Dragon S um, has a champion, and that's a big focal point. Sarah so always makes me think of the mirror with ore. Sounds surprised. I'd heard the crystal bloom aren't big on frontline fighting. Support can take many forms. Like Aureen, we focus on healing and restoration. The world needs stability. Order. Who defines order? Who controls it? It's not about control. It's about the responsibility we all have to one another. You're telling me Aureen's got all that power. She she supports us in ways she deems appropriate. Playing defense just preserves the status quo. You don't lose anything. You also don't gain anything. I don't see Jormag playing offense against Primordus. Seems to me your Elder Dragon's more about hiding. What? 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 Whisper. Waiting for the right moment to strike isn't hiding. Every attack needs a strategy. It's a good conversation. How does this fit into your strategy? You've already betrayed one guy. a relic. He thinks the world is a much smaller place than it is. We no different. Oh, that little jab at Bangar as well when he's not here. Um, that's such a good conversation too. I wish they kept talking. Because at the end of the day, defense is a good strategy if they overcommit. And you now have the upper hand, right? Leave themselves exposed. Also, you're going to say all that? Well, then you have to acknowledge that Aureen might be biding her time to, to nail her strike. Maybe she has an attack strategy. But you'd think the commander would know if Aureen was so inclined. I don't think Aureen does at all, actually, at this time. Both Ryland and Bangar. I like them both. I like Bangar more. But I like them both. Forward. The second part leads back to the village. The other side of DRMs is obviously you get the random allies. So we've got Script this time. And you, you can interact with each random ally group in a different way. I can't remember what the Script give you. Hey, can you smell something? They give me mines with absolutely insane damage. Let's set a mine on the bridge here because this will actually work against the boss, won't it? Oh, oh it's ground target. Oh my god, I can throw loads of them? Oh my god, and you get a taunt ability? This is awesome, dude. So you can pull them over to the mines by waving your arms. Oh, shit. Oh, I actually have to dodge carefully on this boss. Hopefully these good players here can just burn it down real fast. Spam a big strike. Um, all this stuff's good. And, you know, the mastery interactions are good. The one thing I would say, though, is I don't think... D imagine DRMs of the future. I don't think that they're necessary. You know. Um, they all look good add-ons as far as champions was concerned, because that was the entirety of the patch. But if you think of just a DRM as a more standard format that's supplementing a release, not the entirety of the release, I don't think you need all those extra bells and whistles. I should have saved uh, my weakening charges for now. Hold on. So we can actually dodge this next shockwave. It's coming up. Oh, I don't need to because I have plasma. Well, okay, the Aegis and uh, stability dropped off. There we go. Now, if I drop my projectile mitigation there, does that help against one of his big attacks? Gonna save and a shit. Oh, never mind. What is that? Something like 16k per skill two. Shit! I just stole it into a vault there. I mean, this feels good. This is just the right mix of like a dungeony, fractally kind of co-op feeling thing, but it's the whole story. 
I'm glad I jumped over that shockwave with the ball. Probably shouldn't have stood in that. Probably should have delayed the Thieves Guild as well so that their Scorpion wires can hit his next break bar. Oh man. I kind of wish I had uh, runes and high quality armor right now just to see how the damage would go. Like here is where I should have Thieves Guild. They're still alive, but I bet their cooldowns are off. Someone gave me stab there. Anyway, Destroyer of the Crystal Fields. Interesting name this time. I wonder what they're alluding to. Some kind of crowd rhetoric v uh, Primordus experience or something. Thank you all for your help. The powers Orin gave you work today, but you'll face worse before it's over. Terry is going to need more than healing when Primordus comes. I wish Orin were taking a more active role. She's hesitating. And I'm not sure why. She's experienced a lot in her short life. Perhaps more than you or I ever will. Certainly in ways we never will. But I trust she has reasons for the choices she makes. More than that, I have faith in her. Have faith, Commander. I'm not leeching. I'm playing properly. How dare you? I'm not leeching. Dude, the Commander saying I'm worried about Aureen stepping back. As well as excellent, because again, that gives a v another voice to, I think, something that the community would rightly be wondering or frustrated about. It's really good. Well, hello. It's been a long time, Commander. Too long, Jory. How are you? I was doing a lot better before Destroyers started crawling outside Lion's Arch. Destroyers? No Frost Legion? No. Why? Think we should give him a call? Make this a real party? Funny. Are these the new destroyers? Showing up all over the Gandaran fields, moving into position. Fortunately, Javis brought the vigil to help evacuate. Also sent word that any other allied faction in the area would be most appreciated. Hopefully they show. The more the merrier. I'll be there as soon as I can. Sorry, what is this? I wish there was a way to redo dragon response missions with an easy way to turn off the voice acting from people. Because I get tired of hearing the same voice lines over them. He, what? There is. It's called this. Sound settings. Dialogue. You're asking them to add another option that means you don't have to use the slider. Like a checkbox. Specifically for that. In DRM. What a waste of everyone's time. Just slide the slider down. That would be an insane waste of time. Fun fact about the dwarves up to this point, none of them had walking animations yet. I think I remember the devs saying something like that. Alright, so this is the final one for the start of the dragon response mission. Um, champions. Oh, we lost a player. If somebody wants to join... Okay, well, never mind. These scale anyway, so... If somebody wants to join this party and play with us, um, we have a slot. Just type slash join list. Commander, thanks for coming. We've been setting up barricades where we can, but we're short on people. Destroyers are focused on the fields ahead. If they take them, it's a straight shot to Lion's Arch. That can't happen. I'm farther ahead, Commander, at the Ascalonian settlement. Marjorie, I told you to fall back and regroup near the gates. And I told you that won't happen. I won't abandon these people because their livelihoods are strategically inconvenient. No time to argue. Commander, help us clear the fields and get the survivors to safety. I adore the vibe in Gendaran here. If this is a 2012 map, and we're looking at 2012 assets, but somehow, I don't know what they've done. It feels like so much newer and prettier, doesn't it? <laughs> Am I crazy? Maybe I just like fire. <laughs> but this, I, I, man, all my videos reviewing these patches when they were new are very much on my mind right now, because they, they, I did them quite if recently. destroyers keep coming, we're going to need some more help. Just putting that out there. But what's, what really struck me here and I really liked was, you know, this was coming back to a 2012 area, but new content and mount enabled and mount sensitive. Like you see Jarvi and stuff on a mount and you get to ride one because the areas are so big. It's really good. I like all this. It's probably true in the area areas as well, but this Gendaran DRM is over such a wide area. It feels really good. Unfortunately, Apple Nook is a place that we've seen on fire many times before, so it doesn't quite feel as special that Primordus is burning it, but whatever, you know. Um, 
And yeah, here's Javi. Is this Javi's last interaction in the whole saga? And Marjorie. It's funny they have that line. Marjorie, it's been ages since we've seen you. Even though she was actually there in early Icebrood Saga. You know, we, she, we had that moment in Bureau where she said, I need to call Kazmir, I'm scared. And then that's it. She basically has done nothing else for the thing. Uh, right, put out fires. We've already done that. Help civilians get out. We've already done that. Okay, kill destroyers. Jesus Christ, you guys are quick. I'm totally leeching these pre-events. I'm spending more time discussing the state of the game and Guild Wars stuff. And then by the time I'm done, you guys are like, Jesus, such speed. I think it's also because I'm listening to the dialogue and they're probably fighting while the dialogue's going on. I remember when this was new, I was obsessed with those demon skins, like the demon skimmer and stuff. I still really like those skins. You know, with Final Fantasy on their 10 year thing, they announced like a big graphics overhaul. They're doing a bunch of new graphics for characters and stuff. I love the thought of a thing like that, but for places like Tim Baron. Where are those reinforcements? Fall back to Lion's Arch. You know we can't save everyone. These settlers lost everything once already, Javi. This isn't what I signed up for, and neither did you. Uh, damn it! Vigil, reinforce the settlement. Move it! Alright. So we just drive off straight away, right? I'll it's stay with them, right? Now we can push back those destroyers. I also remember roller beetling alongside this here. I think why this one feels so good is because the pre-event area takes place in a totally different section of the map, right? Apple Nook for the pre-event pre and then Ascon Settlement for the other stuff. It's these like God Rays and stuff. Do you know what I think will really help my perspective of the Icebrood Saga? It's just I've really got to get in my head that there was a proper fiery apocalypse going on across Tyria. If I can just really convince myself of that and believe in it. Because, I mean, this is pretty dramatic looking here. We're still substituting a whole season or expansion for an episode. We need to cut off those destroyer tunnels. Don't give them a chance so to So copium, regroup. someone said in chat. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? Just to be a grump forever? Silvari male sounds like he's flirting with Kanak in Heart of Thorns, really. <laughs> Dude, I'm so nervous for this next expansion. I'm so nervous. All I ever wanted was for Guild Wars to grow and get bigger. At that. So nervous. Good fucking luck. You also want to flirt with Kanark? I wouldn't. If Kanark was real, I wouldn't go anywhere near the guy. He's a psychopath. He's an absolute nut bar. They play it off the gags a lot in game, but I'm telling you, all that creepy whistling and cutting off people's heads and bargaining and stuff. I think people have forgotten how edgy he was. And if we're actually going to transplant at Kanak into the real world, I don't think I'd be so quick to forgive and forget, you know? The dev said that End of Dragon Story will use lots of plot threads from before, and it all leads to a grand finale. But End of Dragons is the grand finale, right? It's not leading to one. It is the grand finale. I suppose this section of the Ascon Settlement's a little bit slow. I, I see, I really like these, man. I, I'm having so much fun with the gameplay here and the visuals and stuff. 
Are you guys vibing on this like I am? I don't know, man. I think it's because it's really well optimized as well. Whenever Guild Wars is giving me the full 144 frames, I feel so... <laughs> this is so nerdy and stupid and weird. But I feel so... It feels so reactive and just comfortable and just cool and immersive and... And I know I can only show you guys 60 of those. Actually, on YouTube, can I stream 144 frames to you? I mean, how many of you even have monitors to look at that? Christ, the bitrate requirement of that would really be off the charts. I mean, my fear for End of Dragons as a big grand finale is it too is overstuffed, you know. I almost feel like a grand finale should be in Tyria, not in Canther. Because Canther has its own baggage. Canther represents a ton of other stuff, you know. Are we doing a story about the Elder Dragons and a big conclusion to a ton of other threads? Or are we adding a ton of new threads by having to deal with the Ministry of Purity and by having to deal with jade technology and, and so on and so on and so on. And in many ways they can connect those stories together, you know, they can combine things. But the truth is, do you kind of get the argument I'm making? Now, you can't really sell an expansion that's just interior, right? So, just in areas that people already paid for. They won't buy a box for that, so you kind of have to, but you go on. Dude, I just tried to press my hotkey to lock onto the boss so my camera would click up. Just like when I was playing Final Fantasy. I think I've been a little bit slow on this. Yeah, I didn't even really contribute there. Alright, he's central courtyard. You can use a uh, raptor to do some break bar damage. I do have my thieves up as well. I'm actually gonna run Scorpion Wire. In this group scenario, I'm gonna take off Shadow Step and I'm gonna put on um, Scorpion Wire. The smoke screen field is pretty good. Um but I want to break these quicker. That will help all these other players that I'm with do their business. See there, I should have done that last bit. They're putting in more work than me because my build's bad. Man, I might go to the wiki after this video and um, look at all the Spectre stuff. Am I really going to play on Thief? I think I might. Catalyst is just so... Like, well, more destroyers popping up. Watch your feet and stay on the move. Destroy your reinforcements. Don't let them get the drop on you. Guys, what if a centaurs could have been one of the allied races against the twins? Yeah, I don't really know what they were totally thinking of with the centaur stuff and the human slaves. My guess is, as I mentioned yesterday on the second to last video on this playlist. Now, once today's part's done, by the way, guys, if you want to go back and watch the whole thing when it's done and let me know what you think. But yesterday I... Um, there's a, there's a very brief moment where they talk about the Separatists, and I wonder if it was going to be, you know, Renegades and Separatists. You know, maybe Separatists were going to end up falling under Jormag's influence or something. And the Centaurs would be a fact that would be, you know, they're the piece of the puzzle that shows why the Separatists are still so disappointed with human placing them up. You know, there is a kind of a really good story to tell, which is, you know, everything that we've just seen about the Char wanting power not being satisfied with their place in the world, all that kind of stuff. There's a great argument that says humans should be feeling exactly the same, you know, and propagandize themselves in the same way and galvanize themselves to commit war crimes and do stuff in the same way. 
And, you know, you could have had all these kind of, like, poetic things. Try not to be too on the nose about it, but, you know, the char are just the same as the humans in a lot of ways. The separatists are doing a very similar thing as what the as what Bangar's doing, you know. Like, all those arguments Bangar makes about furthering the char, improving the char, building them back up. Humans would be smarting too. Look at how far the humans have fallen from grace, right? So, I think that that's what that whole arc is. I think that's why you see centaurs and early plans. Because I think that I think that's the human connection to the Ice Brood Saga. And obviously it all got cut. But I think that's what they were planning. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they had a totally different idea. But, you know, if I know anything about thinking about the story and what, what makes sense and what fits, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. That's a great break bar there, because we interrupted his dash, which means no new tornadoes, which means we probably kill him right here. Oh, there's the next one. Oh my god, do you see our snake dodge there? That felt so good. Got to keep stepping out of these tornadoes, not getting caught in the sky too much. Ta-da! Primordus. We aren't just fighting Primordus. When we win, we need to be able to live with the decisions we made. If we abandon the weak, what's that say about the world we're fighting for? What's even the point? And if we all die fighting, those ideals won't matter. There's a line. We need to be on the right side of it. And today we were. Primordus tried to surprise us. He failed. Good work, all of you. You too, Commander. And thanks. Well, there you go. I think uh, it would have been really cool if we had a moment of the keep here as well, the vigil keep. Oh, this post dialogue. Did I miss that with Timey earlier? It's you. Thanks for coming, Commander. That nearly got out of hand. Uh, why would Primordus target here instead of Lion's Arch? You don't have to be a killer Crichton sleuth to see that this settlement is a more attractive target than Lion's Arch. Primordus causes destruction. It's his M.O. No better way to do that than set fire to the most vulnerable. I don't buy that. I would have glossed over that. Uh, what were you doing here in the uh, in the area? Timey sent word this was a possible emergence point for Primordus's goons. We just got lucky this time. Well, not lucky, but you know. Is Marjorie in a new outfit again in uh, in End of Dragons, or does she look like this in End of Dragons? The skulls at her hip look really cool, actually. Let's get this show. Uh, how's Casimir? Let's not do that right now, okay? I mean. She's fine. We're fine. Fine. I don't really get that. I, I, am I supposed to be feeling like we haven't seen them together and they're, they're going through troubles or something? Uh, hi, Javi. Yeah, I want a vigil keep moment here because of Javi and because of Almora and all that stuff. I swear by Raven... I guess the personal story and stuff has already staged enough fights there. Probably why they avoided Lion's Arch as well, in truth. Um, I swear by Raven's eyes, if Jory doesn't listen the next time I give an order, she has a good point, I think. Well, sure. And this time things worked out. But Primordus has more troops than we do. We need to be smarter. You know as much as any of us about the calculus of war. You can't always save everyone. And if Jory keeps trying, she's going to get herself killed. Why do you think the destroyers targeted this settlement? I assumed it was to draw us away from the gates of Lion's Arch. But that doesn't make any sense. They tried hitting those first to draw us away from the settlement. Jory was the only one who saw it. Maybe Primordus just thrives on chaos. A settlement of defenseless villagers would be a prime target. Yeah, but there's not many of them. You want to sow maximum chaos, you've got to hit big populations, don't you? Uh, how are things holding up with the Vigil? After Jakar, I needed to get away from the marches. I went on a tour of Vigil encampments around Tyria. Mostly a morale thing. I figured Larenthir would have come back by now. He hasn't. Never thought I'd be in charge for this long. But the days keep passing, and here I am. So, I'm getting used to it. More Larenthir conversation. This is really good. Dude, I like that hint that maybe he's off on some adventures and doing things too. Um, and maybe one day we would hear about them. Yeah, and we missed this, obviously. If you did the Drakkar meta, Javi has a big moment there. In Bura. Okay, so some kind of uh, war journals. But where? The Eye of the North is a huge map with loads of interactables. You sure we're not punching Frost Legion? Oh, Unless here. they do something that crosses the line again. Not to mention the destroyers are getting worse. I guess fighting on two fronts isn't the best plan. Let me know if you change your mind. 
or if Laureen has any news. So I think we're transitioning out of the first patch here. Okay, so the way this originally worked was each week a new character was standing here. You would trade the currencies. Uh, you, you became ally with new people. I think that slowly they've all filtered around this table. So you've got Farron. Ahai, as they say in Alona, I heard the call for heroes and naturally answered. I've learned from past experience that I could do my best work off the battlefield. So here I am. How's your injury? From corner? Seems so long ago, doesn't it? All better now, though. On uh, certain mornings, the muscles feel a bit stiff. Have to maintain my stretching regimen to keep limber if you... Yeah, I know what you mean. Locker. Kids wants us prepared, Commander. I've got spreadsheets organizing my spreadsheets. We're gonna do this. We need more supplies. But I wrangled numbers, okay? Not Doliaks. We gotta act fast, or we're gonna be fighting dragons with... I don't know. I just do the books. She's... Is uh, waiting around here part of your strategy, or...? She's one of the ugliest Azura I've ever seen. <laughs> Glad you're in the fight, Commander. These old stones have a score to settle. Glint, Aurene, those we lost in the depths. That debt needs to be paid. This war's not new to us. My opinion? You joined our cause, not the other way around. Welcome to the front line, Commander. Yeah, that's a great line as well, but it is still the problem of telling, not showing. I was there when Bangar's dominion rolled over the Drizzlewood coast. They killed a lot of people I care about. Almost killed me. Bangar was just an early frost. The first sign of Jormag's winter. We know the true enemy. I won't rest until the dragon's as dead as my friends. Do you know what I could do as well? Bassy Venom. Instead of Thieves Guild. Flunt as well. What an MVP. I have elected. I haven't done any voice acting this project. Have you guys noticed? I have elected to serve as a delegate for our collaboration. I can't do you flunt very well. In the matter of Prime Orders, our research gets us ever so closer to its demise. Your research may end up giving Jormag an advantage. Your critique is both obvious and unnecessary. Primordus has been the bane of my people for generations. Its defeat will be an important milestone in our history. Jormag is just as dangerous. Both dragons need to be dealt with. These destroyers seem to be free of Zaitans or Morgimoth's magic. An astute observation. Primordus' slumber may have allowed it time to process the foreign magic or alter itself to accommodate. We don't really know at this point. That's mildly concerning. This is interesting as well. Sort of a hand wave. But that's why you don't see vine touch ones. I remember a conversation about that when this patch came out. Ah, who asked Squid for help? Aurene did. And you should. Wildfire burns. Frozen winds. Dangerous world to be Squid. Don't want to be dragon dinner? Learn from Squid. One Squid survive. Many Squid thrive. If world burned by dragon fire, Squid still live. That is promise. Screw it, the cockroaches of Tyria. Everyone seems tense around here. Probably the constant threat of death by dragons. Great, short, snappy little line, love it. Next we got Logan. Look at that shiny armor, man. I've been calling in every favor I can to bring allies to the front lines. We'll scrape together every last volunteer regardless of where they're from. How's the pact holding up? Maguma, Krakatorik, Almora. I won't try to embellish it. The pact is strained. But we've only had a few dragons left, right? Would be more pointless to uh, would be pointless to stop now after we've accomplished so much. Ah, it, I feel really bad about this one. I wish Logan had more on this. How are you holding up? Professionally, busy fighting the good fight like everyone else. Personally, I've spent what little free time I have socialising. Though a gentleman never tells. What's he hinting at there? I don't recall this. What's he hinting at? Jenna, maybe? Glad you've moved on. Uh, the commander doesn't think it's Jenna, thinks it's someone new. Hey, Aeth. My peace, uh, sorry, may peace follow your path, Knight of the Thorn. How's the Pale Tree faring? Healing is, uh, did she call me that because I've done the Heart of Thorns epilogue? Healing is a long and arduous process, especially when wounds run deep. But since the de defeat of the Jungle Dragon, she's recovered a great deal, thanks to you. This is another one of those big questions the community is constantly asking, and I guess the devs are just trying to give people some closure. I don't know how much it counts if we don't get a real scene with them, but there it is. I have come to turn the fate of the world toward balance. Jormag's whispers ravaged Kona. Ushers in spring. Primordus's fire 
may destroy Jormag in turn. We are not pawns. We will not be swayed by the will of dragons. We fight. I have heard many whispers, but this is the only one I believe. To the person in the live chat who's saying End of Dragons needs a big secret, it doesn't. Just because they did a big secret in POF, it doesn't mean you should hold that expectation to them forevermore. They might not do one. They didn't do one in Heart of Thorns either. Just enjoy the Griffin for what it was. Don't foist a ton of expectations on a clearly crunched expansion. Keep your expectations low, man. Don't make presumptions like that. Fighting Worms and Awakened gets old after a while. I'm ready to punch Jormag and square in the face. Time to end that legend. So here's Sigfast. Is Sky here? So Newt and his missing wife and, or mate I should say, and, and these guys, all Icebrood Saga content that I'd wanted. At least he gets a slot at the round table. Have you met with Bram? Not in a long time, prophecy or not, he's worthy of his name. Uh, he cracked Jormag's tooth, his mother would have been proud of how far he's come. Happy to hear that. And finally, Rox makes an appearance. Once, I thought I'd put more behind me. Pretty stupid, huh? But if I don't fight in a moment like this, I may as well have died with my warband. We're doing something right. Weak tribes don't last. I know that much. I just wish strong tribes did. Um, sorry, not last but last. We're getting exalted here as well. Aurene's ascended. She controls her destiny. We rally to her side as she takes the stage. An old hope reborn. But we must guard it. Help Aurene, Commander. It's weird. The Exalted have such a weird role in the game now. Very strange. They're essentially like glorified Crystal Bloom, right? Basically, at this point. All right, so there you go. So there's the round table. I kind of regret speaking to all of them. This is not a hundred percent playthrough, but hey, we'll do what we can. As bad as we were afraid things could get, they're worse. Jormag's been tapping at the window, so to speak, to get my attention. What do they want? Jormag loves to talk. I'm sure you've noticed, and I like talking to them. Maybe too much. That's not to answer. I don't think Jormag's the ignore them and they'll go away type. No, but easier to stay on guard with my champion beside me. All right. Let's see what they want. Millennia with no one to talk to. I finally find a worthy interlocutor. And now you won't answer. You wound me, Ori. Surely you too crave more stimulating conversation than mortals can provide. Unless... Oh, dragon of crystal and light. Do I intimidate you? I promise you, that's not it. You want Aurene on your side. Why? You face the least of what Primordis will bring. The death and destruction will make mortal wars seem as dreams. So Primordis has to die. And when he is dead, I will be free. So is it his death you want? Or your freedom? Would you remain bound to a monster? Kralthatorik's fate suggests not. He was not misery. It was a mercy. Ah, he's why you fear yourself. Kralthatorik was unworthy of your pity or remorse. And so is my brother. You know Primordis so well. Why do you need the Asuras research? There are impediments. We are two faces of a coin. We cannot truly see each other. Not directly. This is between you and him. Fire and ice in opposition. Balance. A prism isn't relevant. You really don't understand your potential. Your power. 
I have the power to heal. You break, you refract, you reshape. The beauty is the irrelevance. You are altogether new. I decide my purpose, and it isn't to destroy. You let the beast inflict wounds just so you can heal. Don't twist my words. I'm not a child. I will not be manipulated. Well, even when you are determined to be contrary, Ori, it's lovely to speak with you. That's it? You'll take no for an answer? I won't force her. That is not my way. I accept your answer. For now. What do you... Save it. They're gone. But in case you're wondering, they're not wrong. I didn't ask your opinion. Mm -mm. Aurene, if there's no other option, will you act? Kill Primordus or Jormag if it comes to it? I won't need to. There can be no balance if I get involved. Trust me, champion. There will be another way. Ah, oh, just all this, like, intriguing development and progression towards, like, this unsolvable situation. And then they just hand wave everything at the end of this. It's just crazy. Man, that conversation is just way too long and filled with so many things I want to talk about. Let me just very briefly browse this. Um... Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe we don't have to pick at every little thing in this conversation here. Let's just keep going, because we've got several more of these conversations to go as well. So, that's the end of part one of Champions. We're in part two of Champions now. Just got word there might be some destroyer activity near Ebonhawk. Who do we have there right now? There must be an allied faction somewhere nearby. I'll see what I can muster. And I'm in the field of ruin, dealing with what's left of the renegades. I can lend support. Ah, uh, if I may. A heavily armed char contingent approaching Ebonhawk with tensions being so high might be a bad idea. You think tensions are so high they turn down help from their char allies? You're not just any char, Kresha. You're an Imperator. And you'd be the first Imperator to set foot in that city. Yeah, symbolism, fine. Do they want help saving their city or not? Okay, Kaz, why don't you go to Ebonhawk first and soften the ground? Kresha, I'll meet you there. Oh, how far we've come. Yeah, so again, this Ebonhawk bit. I, I, I kind of like the idea of going back to Ebonhawk. I want to see the Fallen Angels. I want to live in Ebonhawk in this post-treaty world a little bit more. You know, see it uh, ultimately, like years after launch in 2012. I want that retrospective. Now is not the time, though, because there's so much important stuff going on. The only value to go into Ebonhawk in a DRM is we get to see more of this apocalypse idea with... Primordis is burning things over there as well, which is fine. But again, I think that this one is another example of, of not efficient use of every bit of, of champions. Okay, so uh, private, we've got five men again. I'll be much better with the break bars this time. I like the Ebonhawk bit, but it doesn't serve the biggest story and the most crucial stuff we have to be talking about Commander, to do justice to the Jormag the Primordus but bit. It's only a matter of this time is a side now. story. The destroyers are attacking already? Did you manage to call for reinforcements? I did. I received word of a number of allied factions in the area. Yeah, but will they get here in time is the question. Gotta trust them. But right now, we need to rally the locals. They don't want to fight? It's their city. They're just nervous having a Char Imperator fighting from the inside out. It's been ten years since we signed that treaty. How much longer are we going to have to put up with this? That's one of those little lines as well where it feels like the studio is saying, Can you forget about Char human conflict, please? Come on, let's muster the troops. Um, yeah, again, people in chat who say this is... I like the Ebonhawk, but I really do. I just said I like most of it. But again, it's this is a luxury. It's a luxury that I don't think... It's not a correct trade. This trade is not as... This should be... Like, if I could trade this instance for an Evan, for an Anvil Rock instance right now, I'd do it instantly. If I could trade this for a second Dwarf instance, I'd do it instantly. If I could trade it for a second Asura instance, I'd do it instantly. 
You know, there are other characters, other events, other things that really need to be here in this story. Evan Hawk is not one of them. I mean, it's not at the bottom of the list, don't get me wrong, but it's not high enough. God, having Bassy instead of Thieves Guild does feel a bit rubbish, rubbish here. Where would I put the second dwarf instance? It's a good question, because they can't. To be honest, look, well, how much can I how much can I change? Am I actually designing champions? Because I'll tell you, I wouldn't do dwarves at all. I, I wouldn't do it at all. I'd have them conspicuously missing, and I'd have a line of dialogue about that to plug into later. I would, I would recognize that I can't do the dwarf story in one fucking thing. And I would, what I would do is I would acknowledge the fact that they're missing, but I would make it a mystery or some kind of point of intrigue. I would reassure the user that, hey, we know that this kind of sucks or whatever. So, you know, that would be the subtext to it. And then I would keep the dwarves out of it. You know, I'd have the command, just off the top of my head, I'd have the commander. I'd have a moment where they say, oh my god, if Primordis is here, we need as many allies as we can get. And then the commander or some other character says, well, we should consult with Raban or Ogden. They're dwarves. They know about fighting uh, Primordis. And then I'd have someone else chime in and say, uh, about that. Ogden went back underground a while ago. We haven't heard anything about him for a long time. And nobody knows why. Or something like that, right? With something slightly more tangible so that people are like, what the fuck's going on with the dwarves? And then, guess what? Later you can do more actual proper dwarf stuff and you can loop back to it when you do have time. I wouldn't try it. In the world where they are going to do it, I, yeah, I think Thunderhead is great. It was one of the best things they could have done. Um, probably something in, like, Lornar's Pass or something. Some dredge mine or something somewhere. I'd pick as the other instance. Maybe the mine in Path of Fire, if they can do that. Maybe they can't trust that people have it, Commander, but they did Thunderhead the peak. Thunderhead. Fall back. Kaz, where are those reinforcements? There, the crystal bloom. They made it. We should protect those healers. They can help us manage our losses. Central transfer chamber would be good. Yeah, but I mean, they obviously can't make a map, right? They can make one map, Anvil Rock. I mean, how Anvil Rock? That's probably best, actually. Finish I'd have my sighing Anvil Rock instance. Wasn't sure you'd be able to convince them I was here to help. They weren't sure what to make of you. A lot of these people spent their lives trying to keep the Imperators out. But actions speak louder than words. And much louder than decade-old pieces of paper. I'm done squinting at trees. If they can't see what I'm trying to do with the char, they aren't paying attention. They are paying attention. That's why they're fighting with us. Wouldn't completely omit them harbor more criticism. Yeah, keep. Yeah, yes, it would. Which is why you, you can't just omit them. You have to omit them and do the little bit where you specifically acknowledge that they're admitted, but you you like assure the user that don't worry, this is in service of something greater down the line. Look, we're setting something up with the dwarves. We haven't forgotten the dwarves. We love the dwarves. We have planned for the dwarves. They're not a part of this story, but they're they're on our mind, right? And that's that's what you're telegraphing by having that conversation. I just pulled out of my ass. Specifics of which, you know, you work harder on. Do you understand? Are you, are you following the story here at this point? Um, but yeah, aside from that, I think more with Bram, the Spirits of the Wild. They're all very, very, very high priorities. I love that Ryland gets a lot in in these DRMs. No matter where you are in the world, he's getting a lot in, which is good. What about the Dwarven Ruins and Ice Brood Saga itself? Yeah, there's a lot of cool ruin area. They could do all kinds of places. Personally, I really like DRMs in 2012 maps. I don't know whether that's actually worse for your average Guild Wars 2 player. For me, I really get enthusiastic about these ones. Like, I love this one here at Evanon and stuff. Because I haven't had meaningful content here for years. So it's really cool and refreshing to come back, you know. I really like it. On the other hand, though, I don't know what the more casual audience feels with stuff like that. Maybe to them, this is like boring reuse or something, and it's actually worse. 
One thing I would say is pretty fair game is DRMs in POF environments if they can do it. Because POF is so beautiful and so full of so many cool environments. And graphically is pretty gorgeous too. And was weak on the replayability, so... Oh, I dodged too early. Oh, that was the perfect worst timing. And by the way, the names of all the destroyers is a really valiant attempt, I think, from the from the team to get a little bit of dwarf exposition in there. You know, destroyer of the third fortress and the jar the, and the iron hammer line and stuff. There's they're hinting at at least a little. It's not quite as ex explicit as I think it would need to be if you were emitting the dwarves completely, but it's somewhere. Somebody gave me quickness. Please tell me this guy's a break bar. Overloaded the hell out of CC on my build. I love this boss fight here too, as well, boy. There's something weird about the um, uh, ambient occlusion here, though. You see how the grass looks like it's vibrating? Something weird about the map shader. What was the third fortress? Uh, it's just an implication. Uh, it's nothing specific, as far as I know. It's just an implication. That's two scorpion wires and a five-man batsy. I contributed. I think it's fair to say I contributed on this one. So these shock, this kind of like landing meteor shockwave stuff is actually inherited from the more recent raids. Which I haven't talked about in the past few parts, but there were two raid wings since the Underworld. The Jin stories. Gamers love to say asset reuse is lazy. See, I'm actually big in the camp of asset reuse. I, I don't find it lazy or whatever. Or upsetting. I think recontextualizing and being economical about what they've got. It's cool to me, you know? That's that's the magic of, of game. It's a game, it's not a movie. It's transformative media. This is not normal Evanhawk. This is Evanhawk with a different boss and a different vibe. And a different, you know, I, I, I like it. And I think of all, of all genres, MMOs need to do stuff like that. They need to keep people looping back through trafficked areas. And recontextualizing what already exists, making the world feel lit, alive, you know? ArenaNet understand that, or did at one point, with their lofty, crazy shit about Living World Season 1. I batted way too early there. Why is it far broken, though? Because we never manually did that. Shit, should have dodged. Obviously, there's a line. Like, I will say, like, with action RPGs, Western A RPGs like Diablo, I'm not a huge fan of just like beat the game, then beat it again, then beat it again, then beat it again, and we're just slowly climbing a ladder. I think there is, everyone's going to have their line, right? I think there's certain ways to do it. In my MMO project thing, I kind of have a sort of a, a sense of that, but I don't go as crazy as like you saw in these old prison tiles. Down we go. Now. Everyone, all right. Stronghold stands, at least for another day. Yeah, they're lucky we were all nearby, or this would have gotten out of hand real quick. These people trust you, Krisha. You saw how they fought by your side. You helped, but the Treaty of Ebonhawk's ten years old. It's time we moved past it. Moved past it? How? Anyone can tear up a piece of paper. Throw the world into disarray. We either trust each other, or we don't. I think today was a step in the right direction. There's more to be done. But I think you're right. Thanks, Kaz. Commander? Again, I adore the Ebonhawk thing, and I adore the, the feeling of having some breathing room for once, but the truth is, this is not... Uh, I was right about these people, but they came through in the end. They trust you now. Sure. But if every Char needs to personally save this city before they can be trusted, we're in trouble. I know this was different. I'm an Imperator, that's a big step. But we can't be like this. 
We need to be better. If the Black Citadel was attacked and we called in the Ebon Vanguard, would they respond like I did today? I hope so. That's the only way this is going to work. Uh, what were you doing in the Fields of Ruin? Tying up loose ends, now that Bangar's indisposed. Malice and I took a little tour of his office. He was covering his tracks, but Malice confirmed her suspicions. Bangar was bankrolling the Renegades. We got information on their strongholds, power structure, who's loyal, who isn't, everything. Actionable intel. So I'm acting. Uh, yeah, no Samuelson. I was looking at the mail here, and I was, it was from Thaddeus Soren, and I was like, oh, man. Samuelson being in this story as well would be really cool. But again, now it's like taking, it, it's, it's getting too big again, you know, so I get why they cut him. Are the United Legions still united? The Char Legions are still the Legions. Warband as family. Warband above self. But it's clear we need stronger cohesion among the Imperators. Not sure we'd survive another Bangar. To answer your question, yes. The United Legions remain united. But that's short term. And that worries me. I wonder if after End of Dragons we do swing straight back to Char stuff. Look at Maya at the Black Citadel. Look at Kreisha in the Blood Homelands. Look at Geheron wherever he goes. As much as I hate the Geheron thing, where he doesn't set up in Ge uh, sorry, uh, Ephraim. Um, as much as I hate the Ephraim thing, where he doesn't set up in Geheron's odd digs, it does mean that we can go to a new area of the world and say, hey, look, Ephraim's here. Um, how's Maya as Iron's new Impera? Cut from the same cloth, that's for damn sure. Not surprised, considering the company Smoter like to keep. Fortunately for us, she doesn't have the same... Aspirations that Smoter had. Connor is a tricky subject. Just saying you want the job can get you shanked. She knows better. Uh, Aside from that, the rank and file like her, and she's promoted loyal tribunes. Kindleshot will do Iron proud, I think. I love that line and that reinforcing of what being Connor is all about. Greetings. <laughs> Putting a target on your head. In my Stellaris mod, if you guys would like to download it. You can be a United High Legions and be Connor. And you can take to the galaxy and cybernetically enhance yourself as the child destroying everyone else. Uh, those poor people at Evanhawk's been through much. They'll repair the damage. They always do. Yeah, they're a proud people. Survived worse than this. But even so, I hate seeing them constantly under siege. It sets the mind a certain way, always having enemies at the gates. First Char, then Renegades, and Separatists. Maybe after Kreisha's dealt with the Renegades and we've dealt with Primordus, Ebonhawk can finally, you know, relax. Uh, were you worried about uh, how Ebonhawk would react to Kreisha? Worried? No. It just needed to be handled properly. Ebonhawk. I mean, aside from the Separatists. I think they're ready to move on. Bangar was saying things that really scared these people. And Kreisha used to be his second in command. We just had to remind them what Kreisha was fighting for up in Drizzlewood. That helped a lot. How pleasant to see you. How pleasant to see you. Uh, I like how we can ask Marjorie how Kazmir is, but we can't ask Kazmir how Marjorie is. Have you been working with Kreisha at all after Drizzlewood? Yes, quite a bit. She's been working to clear up the rest of the renegades in Bangar's dominion. I spent a lot of time with the Char in Drizzlewood, so Kreisha asked if I could help finish what we started. It's important for human-Char relations that we very publicly, very loudly go after these groups. You saw today what kind of effect that can have. It's the difference between peace and war. It's worth it. So there we go. Uh, did I press F on the chest? You guys in the party are being very patient, by the way, when I do all this dialogue after the DRMs. I, I want to say thank you to that, for you to you guys for that. How many we got left? I think there's four left, and then that's. <gasps> Commander, anyone on the rotation who could head to Thunderhead Keep? I'm not too far away. What's up? Sudden infestation of destroyers, apparently. I think a bit of help is in order. I can meet you there, Bram. Great. Look for Mirren Skjelken. Formerly Priory, now a member of the Bloom. They'll have a better idea of the situation. So, speaking of the dwarves, this is it. 
I mean, look, I have an utmost respect to them for doing the dwarves, you know, for, like, for giving it a shot, <laughs> you know. I think probably the biggest question I would rather the team ask themselves, more than anything else, is this simple question, is this too big? Okay, so one of our members of our party is AFK, so the question is, oh, no, no, they're in. It's probably actually really stupid of me to say. I bet they ask themselves that question all the time. By the way, uh, Thunderhead here with the new lighting and stuff, it feels like a totally different map. Totally different instance. Also, this door dynamically opening and closing back there. I really like that about this too. Again, the DRM format, mwah, it's brilliant. It's gorgeous. So good I could kiss it. By the way, I like how much loot I'm getting. I got a lodestone earlier. I just got a T6 map. Really good. I've also been getting really lucky in World vs. World the past few days with um, uh, Ascended mats like Delgamore Steel, War related, or like um, or like Spiritwood. I've been getting loads of those coming from the drops in, in World vs. World. I think Magic Find is up a little bit at the moment, but still. This has actually been quite rewarding out there. Last I heard, the Priory had set up an outpost to guard the keep and the forge. Since Kral Katorik's defeat, these are the lucky few who escaped today. We had no warning, Commander. Between one moment and the next, the beasts flooded in from every corner. We lost good people. We can't lose this stronghold too. Certainly not to destroyers. You want us to take back the keep with the injured, the scared, and the unarmed? I don't like our odds. Strength of will and a bit of heart can go pretty far. Well then, let's lend them a little of ours and get them ready to go back in. Um, morale boost. Oh look, we're basically done already. Three more destroyers killed. Is the project M Guild Wars based? You mean the, the MMO project? No, it's, it's my own thing. It's not Guild Wars at all. I mean, it's obviously Guild Wars inspired. You know, Guild Wars is a huge thing to me and I believe in a lot of their philosophies and what they've done. So, you know, there, there are, there's a vibe of Guild Wars to it. And, you know, there's analogs to certain things like pre searing and stuff. But it's not Guild Wars IP or anything. It's just my own personal thing. In some ways, I stand very with Guild Wars. And in a couple of ways, I'm very outside of Guild Wars. Like, one thing, Guild Wars is all about, like, Be making ready, everyone happy and reducing friction between players so that, you know, no one's ever mad at each other and stuff. I, I think ArenaNet went too far with that. Like, f so like my philosophy is that you don't remove meaningful engagements between people in multiplayer games so much that there's no friction at all and people just glide past each other and never have meaningful experiences. I think Guild Wars goes too far with that. So like with my my dream MMO project thing, world building thing, Spirits. it's kind of there's still a lot Wait, of space for people to interact in meaningful one ways. And I guess we really are the reinforcements. If you've got any tricks up your sleeves now, would be a good time. That also, of course, means potential for conflict between players, but I think that's a necessary evil to have meaningful co-op gameplay. Never expected gameplay. to see so many of your people on the surface. Destroyers started rising faster than we could beat them back. Sure, Mag woke up, and that triggered Primordus. Figures. Enough talk. They get thicker farther in. Look how good this is, man. I mean, for a moment where the dwarves are coming in, I remember just having such a crazy feeling when I played this. I was like, oh my god, this is it. This is the dwarves. They're doing it. And cinematically, it doesn't even matter that we're reusing an area right now. I mean, look at this place. It's awesome. Oh, we get the Tengu arrows as well. Oh, I need a bank quiver though. That sucks. Um, so yeah, uh, there's probably somewhere around 20 dwarf lines of dialogue in this whole thing. But the dwarves will be a part of this Primordus thing. I remember, of course, when this first came out, I still didn't believe that they were really going to actually kill Primordus. I didn't believe they were actually going to do it. I thought this was just the start of the dwarves coming back to the story and it was all opening all these doors and stuff. 
Of course, it's always been confusing because we knew that Canthor was the next expansion. So it's like, how does this all map together? But yeah, I mean, look at it. I, look, it's like a brilliant screenshot. Maybe not a screenshot, maybe an active desktop. We're priory. There's the bloom. That's a jump. I'm also a Norn who sometimes walks as a bear. Lots of things can be true at the same time. Not a treatise once that suggests that the dragons of fire and ice might be twins. Didn't expect confirmation. So John Man claims. I validate the theory that the only thing that can kill one is the other. How's that square with the tale we were told? That the Norn of prophecy can kill Jormand. I mean, this makes any sense. The truth of a prophecy isn't always clear until it's come to pass. Thanks. I feel so much better. A little bit of conversation about the prophecy is good. Oh, uh, if you meant the Solaris project, then yeah, obviously that's Guild Wars related. That's bringing Guild Wars lore into uh, another game. You really need to go and finish the DRMs in the final encounter. You keep putting it off, and now you realize you're in crunch before Ender Dragons. Oh, absolutely you do. Oh, for sure. I'm telling you guys, if you're not playing the game right now, literally, you best be at work or playing the game while you've got this video on. Like, really, I mean, this is precious time. Get those World vs. World pips. Get a free piece of legendary armor. Get your legendary amulet. Catch up on the story. Refresh yourself. I mean, really, it's just a few days away. Install the game, get the download done at least, set up your graphics, get some builds ready and test them out and just get comfortable with them so you've got a bit of passion about the character you're going to play through. Clean your inventory, clean your bank. You know, get into that headspace. We're, talk we're, we're talking a matter of days away now. You know, you've got a week. If you still have a bit of outstanding story, definitely, I think now is the time. And if you, you know you're going to be playing in a dragon. I appreciate a lot of other people who aren't convinced yet, and they're probably not going to buy it until they see reviews or something. I'll have like two weeks of solid reviews for you if, if I can do it. Every day I'll review my, a day of gameplay. How many of those did I make for POF in the end? I think it was around 7 to 10. you were able to watch my streams at work. Yeah, not everyone has the luxury. Yeah, even me and myself, if you look back on some of my Twitch streams, I was like, I did a whole Twitch stream. I can't remember how long it was, but it was just me cleaning like my back. This isn't the source. What's happening down in the forge? That's where the destroyer surfaced, right? How did you think the forge attracted them? And it's changing them. If I remember rightly, the dev stronger. said that the I know that much. The Fact. dwarves are mini Norn. Extra lava. Apparently, they're just shrunken down Norn, and that's how they went with it. I mean, they look convincing enough to me. So anyway, here's a new uh, dwarf as well with a cool name, Lock Stone Healer, a distant relative of Ogden Stone Healer, or not even distant. You know, they turned to stone and became immortals. So you might okay. find. I was not expecting it to be that big. This was a fun boss too. You gotta break the eggs. I don't know if my team's with me on this. I think I should be able to break this on my own. Uh, but yeah, so you, you might think, oh, Locke's 250 years down, but that's not true, you know? It's not like a Kos Kosan thing. Locke might have been alive during Guild Wars 1. There could also be a story where after Guild Wars 1, Ogden, who hadn't undergone the right yet, had a family. And then he and his family all chose to... I mean, that's a fun story. And again, they hit at some nice dwarf stuff, at least. This thing's not going down easy! Okay, Bassy Venom. Now, the spears, by the way, can help you break his bar, but they're also just good damage. It's really cool that you get Dragon's Blood spears in this instance, to tell you the truth. WB, you got me to buy the expansion and download the game again yesterday. Long download, but you're at least back in again. Oh, dude, that makes me really happy, man. Are you still in the guilds? 
There's a few people in Spud. I'm getting a lot of guild requests at the moment, right? So I've got to kick people. Spud EU is full. There's 500 people in it. And there's a few people here that I'm just... I can't kick because I recognise their names and I just feel bad. It's so like here, for example. Um, Spud 1. This is the full one. Last online. Hold on, let me break this bar. There we go. This is me, my other account, which was last appearing online seven months ago. I think I've logged on that account more recently than that, but it doesn't appear online. But here, we've got these Ultra Spuds. We've got Reg, who hasn't logged in for six months. NGFTW, Ratchy, Sam here. Like, all these names, all these people who haven't logged on for ages. And I'm just like, I don't know whether they've quit Guild Wars or what, but it feels weird to be playing Guild Wars without these people around. But I just can't bring myself to doing it. I can't kick him. Especially not uh, Ultra Spuds. I mean, if someone's been crazy enough to get on Patch here. I shouldn't say crazy. Generous enough to get on Patreon. Please go to Patreon. <laughs> I don't think everyone on Patreon's crazy. Crazy generous enough. Uh, you know, so it's just, it's just wild, man. Sorry, I'm talking over their dialogue quite a lot here about nonsense with a potato stuff. I want to be clear, to anyone watching this video, like, way off in the future, it's very likely Spud's there and still recruiting. So just anyone, anytime should feel comfortable to pop to Discord and get an invite. So obviously there's a bit more activity right now because End of Dragons is coming out. And everyone wants to be a part of a big group and the have keep fun. Is secure. Many thanks to you, the dwarves. Hmm. We have a duty. Will we see more of your people? See destroyers, they'll see us. There's not any follow-up dialogue at the end of the one. and an honor to fight beside Orin's champion. Likewise, Mirren. Somehow, I don't think this will be the last time. I understand the weight you carry, Erson, and its privilege. The Norn of prophecy, the spirit touched. There's a legacy in your blood and loyalty at your back. Yet none of that matters without heart. So find yours. I just, the thing about the prophecy is it's just so left field and then everyone's acting like it's always been this well-known thing and stuff. I don't know. I think I prefer Bram if he's not a guy of prophecy. Or if he is, it's a self-made one because of the tooth. Which, if that existed, it was just a cultural thing. I much prefer that than it being something tangible. Anyway, the vision here was really cool. Tengu along with us in Thunderhead, discover rediscovering the dwarves and stuff was really cool. So yeah. Can I go to... I can't go to um, Ogden now and ask him about Locke, can I? I'm pretty sure I can't do that. That would be so badass if, if true. No, Alodis, you're more than welcome. Commander, Just send me a mail, man. I'll find a space. Trip. Come back to Rodasum as quick as you can. I'm in the Arcane Council Chamber. I'm kicking people. I am still kicking people from Spud. You know, if you are someone who said, can I get an invite to Spuds? And you haven't logged in for like six weeks. And you never did anything. You never got a rank. You never communicated or anything. Then those people are getting kicked. And there are a few people like that in the 500 slots. So any, I'll take anyone who wants an invite today for End of Dragons over someone who came two months ago and hasn't played in two months. So there are some still kickable slots for sure. So yeah, just send me the mail. That goes to anyone. EU or NA. NA's got a little bit more space. There's like 20 slots for NA. Before I, things start getting desperate. Um, right, sorry. Timey, where do you want us? Uh, the uh, Orion's Chamber. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me talk to Ogden here. After hundreds of years, we may be in the midst of a final battle. What a time to live in, Commander. You want to hear about the Delgemore? Where should I start? Well, our forefathers fought the walking, waking dragons ages ago. When Primordus stirred, we acted. King Jarlis invoked the right of the Great Dwarf, granting us bodies of living stone. With this gift, we fought destroyers in the depths for centuries. And now that battle's on the surface, we're ready to fight them wherever they may be. With you, with Orin, with all those gathered here, we bring it, put an, we'll bring an end to Primordus and his scourge. This is great, a guy in a Choya tonic in the center. <laughs> oh, we're going to Ratasum to meet with Tommy. But wait, is that Ratasum through the Asura gate or is it just straight up Ratasum? It's just straight up Ratasum. Okay. 
was going to say, it would have been weird to have had time either. It's funny because all those conversations with Bangar, there's kind of an equivalent of that once this patch is over with Timey and Gorik in Aureen's chamber. And it's funny because throughout the saga itself, they're not really around. They're not really present. Spirit touch sound cool, do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this. This is not a major beat, by the way. So if these party members don't pop up, I will, uh, I'll do it without them. I'll give them, like, a few minutes to... Actually, screw it. Let's just go. Let's just go. Two people are ready and waiting, at least. This is only a short little instance. We can all regroup for the next DRM. You'll be back for the next expansion, but in April, you seriously get me hyped again after almost a year of a pause? I'm glad, man. I'm glad this project's making people happy. We'll keep working to see how we can use it to our advantage. Timetable? The power readings aren't high enough to wake Primordus yet, if that's what you're asking. Good enough. Gives us a little time to experiment. Counselors. Commander. Steel catcher. I love this. We just glance by each other and it feels odd and icky and weird. Timey, what's going on? What was he doing here? Defeating Primordus will take more than just a pact or its commander. Information is more precious than munitions in this war. Jormag's champion came to receive it. As have you, I imagine. That link we discovered between the destroyers and Primordus? A feedback loop amplified by Kralk's death. Destroyers burn more, Primordus gets stronger, destroyers get more rabid. The effect is exponential. With Ryland's help, we've identified and measured the Ice Dragon's cumulative power versus that of the Fire Dragon. Jormag and Primordus are polar opposites. The scales should be level, but they're not. Not anymore. Fire is winning. We need to find a way to cut Primordus off from the flow, or reverse it back to the destroyers. Or boost Jormag's power to level the field again. That is a reasonable approach, though I question its wisdom. Either way, we need more time to understand the nature of the power flow. Perhaps your elder dragon will have some insights, Commander. Perhaps. Timey, where do you think the destroyers will attack next? Somewhere near Divinity's Reach in a day or so. Logan's preparing. Ritluck and Kresha are helping him. Good. I'll check in with Aureen before I head over there. I love this thing about Primordus having exponential growth and destruction. You know, just like Wildfire should. It's a great little detail about him. <clears throat> Would have been great to have Jormag lose to Primordus and die for two episodes. Well, we have to find a way to put Pram Primordus back to sleep. Yeah, I think having one definitive winner over another is a cool, cool place to take it as well. Look, the idea of dragon v dragon, excellent prince premise. It's, it's really cool. And if you, if we need to have a chat with Bangar. Bangar, not Jormag. I'm wondering if he picked up more about Jormag and Primordus than he realizes. Whoever's on comms, request immediate reinforcements at Doric Landing. We're under attack! The destroyers hit early? No, Ice Brood. Sons of Svanir. What? Get over here. We're not ready for this. So, I was talking about this several parts ago now when we were in Season uh, 3. Here's a funny thing, actually. Playing this like this, if you're watching every trailer, you know, each of these little sections of champions was trailer. And in the trailer, it was very clear that ice was going to be a, a, a problem. Actually, just playing it like this? Uh, I'm not going to do the instance belonging to someone else. I'm going to put my own instance. Because um, I don't know how the commander dialogue is going to work out with that. Uh, playing it like this is pretty cool. There we go. Private. Um, because it does feel like a, a bigger surprise. Lake Doric's a cool place to come back to, too. I mean, I don't think it's a crucial part of the story, really. But at least they get to reuse Jenna's bubble. Gods. And any of these We're living world maps fire, where people haven't ice. been back to for Both years. We're caught outside the walls. We gotta get them to safety. Not everyone out here is armed. We were still getting things ready. What happened? One minute it's all me. The next, everything's freezing over. People included. 
They came from the rear while we were fortifying the place against destroyers. We let them in. We thought they were here to help. But they tricked everyone. So dun dun dun. Jormag said they weren't going to fight. And now what's going on? So, um... Yeah, anything from a Living World Season 3 map like this is awesome. Like, a lot of players who were doing this in Champions probably might have never even played Lake Doric. Or hadn't done it for like four years. And they can do this cool thing, adding the ice sheet over there. They really dramatically changed this map. So, it's an A-plus from me as a location. As a crucial component of all the most important stuff to do. I don't know whether I fully agree. Um, I wonder if the devs considered... I mean, they must have, but they must have figured there was no good way to do it. I wonder if they considered Ember Bay. Can you imagine if they'd managed to freeze over Ember Bay? It's probably too hard, too much work, too challenging. But that would have been awesome. So this is actually the shortest DRM if we split properly. This DRM is very fast. In fact, um, saving all the civilians and doing everything as well, I got pretty good at for a while. So we're going to kill f some captains. Oh, the troops are already on. You guys already did that. Wow. Okay, so let's just go kill the captains. Um, the pre's are pretty quick on this. And then it's like a split, which I like as well. I love splits. So we've got five party members. You can actually go two, two and three. I think it's better to send three... To the east, and two can deal with the uh, the vacation resort place. I think. So there we go. I got word to Jenna. Divinity's reach won't be caught unaware. If they can't hit the reach, they're bound to look for other targets. Anyone not behind thick walls is going to be in some serious trouble. The two closest villages are on the other side of the lake. I already send reinforcements. We should split up. Cover more ground. You can do it independently, but it just slow it literally makes the thing twice as long as it needs to be. So we'll see. I don't know where I want to go, to be honest. I kind of want to go to the east. Uh, the lakeside. Oh, there's already three people at lakeside. Okay, so I'll go to side just over. Um They beat us here! Quick! Keep our allies a hand. So here, these are all people frozen. I remember when my other PC was completely shitting the bed at this point. Jormax forces keep trying to herd people, not kill them outright. Herd them? For what? Freezing. The spawn ear shamans work some sort of spell. Doesn't take long, but it seems to have a limited reach. Dead or turned into ice blocks. What difference does it make? But it makes a difference to Jormag. The idea, well, we'll see. Jormag will justify itself in a minute. Why this isn't a full-on attack. But yeah, uh, I had all these people culled out. So this effect just looked really weird on my PC before. But here, they're not culled. We get good footage, which I'm very happy about. So yeah. Uh, someone in chat asked, what's the Guild of 2 class most like Dervish? Should be more villagers. Not enough dead and frozen to account for everyone. Could the rest have escaped? I've seen them. Unless they've doubled back across the lake. Um, it's kind of a weird question. I often come across that question that Guild Wars 1 players that think it's not really an intelligent question because it's like, there's no energy in this game. Uh, enchantments and flash enchantments and what AoE means and cleave means, it's all so different, man. It's a totally different game. So what are you asking? Like, what's themed most like Dervish? Or oh, I don't know. There's, And what element of Dervish do you like most? Scythes? If it's melee strikes and scythes you like, Reaper is probably the closest. If it's transforms and the avatars of the gods and stuff, I mean, if human. If we can kill the shamans, maybe we can revert their magic. With a shot. Or necro, because you get lich form. Uh, if it's just like melee swirling stuff, you could play daredevil on thief, but that's just one elite specialization. It's not a class. And then you could skin a scythe Killing staff. Killing shamans but... isn't doing anything. Except stopping him from making more ice blocks. Keep it up. Oh. I've only come across a handful of Frost Legion. You think they might have gone rogue? Doubt it. Everything I've seen, Jormag's forces fall in line behind Jormag's champion. Keep an eye out. 
Ryland's got a lot to answer for. If it's the law of the Avatar thing, you know, the idea that you just like communing with other creatures, other entities. Revenant, I mean, Revenant does the Dervish thing in the like the law to the letter of the thing, but not the texture of the thing. Dervish, Dervish has a Malay stuff as well. So, I mean, personally, I did Dervish as the Rev thing before, but I don't know. I mean, Reaper has a tray, Chilling Grass. Uh, chilling Explosion or something that literally has the same skill icon as Chilling Victory from the Dervish in Guild Wars 1. It, like, if you score a kill with it in a PvP setting, it will print it on the log and you can see the skill icon of the traits. And it's a Dervish trait. But, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just a different game. It's it's the same as asking... It's like me I, I, I advising you play Dragon Hunter because it's most like Paragon. In some ways, yeah, but in a lot of other ways, no. It's just... You're just going to have to learn this game and learn to love this game based on its own merits as well, I'd say. Because nothing's going to map one-to-one. -one. The only thing that will map one-to-one -one is playing Guild Wars 1. And here's the equally thing that I'm a bit iffy about you even asking that. Is Dervish. I don't even know what you mean by Dervish. Because the chances are you're, you played Guild Wars 1 15 years ago. And what you think of as Dervish is not what is playable Dervish. Maybe you played Dervish before Flash Enchantments, right? And the big rework. They need a chance to escape. Let's give Ryland's Legion someone to punch. So what are you even looking for there, you know? If you just want that fantasy of running around with the scythe, which I think is the main thing. I'd say Reaper, Thief, or Rev. And of those, Rev is the only one that's a full class. So, like, I played a Rev with an Arcanist outfit on that made me look like a Dervish with a side skin. And that was pretty satisfying to me for a while. Oh, another thing I really like about this is getting some Logan, you know? If any of the DRMs had Logan in them, of course I was going to love them. Spells take concentration. Let's break his. Right. Bassy Venom. Wait, sorry, is there? Okay, yeah. Oh, if I remember rightly, the defining thing about this fight is he has really regular, really heavy break bars. He's also ludicrously tanky. You know, when you do this with pugs, this fight takes forever. I actually remember getting genuinely quite, like, disappointed and annoyed doing this fight. Like, because you can work overtime really doing a lot of damage and just be really disappointed because you see you've got, like, a ranger with you that's just auto-attacking on longbow at, like... 600 range, not even like a good range for his traits and stuff. And it's just like, oh man. Anyway, I'm still on cooldown for this break bar, I'm afraid. I can blind, I can weaken. That's about it. Alright, next break bar, I'll have plenty. I love the sense of a scorpion wire tipped with Basilisk Venom. And just the idea of how much break bar damage that slams in that one way. It's just the, the aesthetic of the thing is what I like. I mean, I'm not saying it's super strong mechanically, it's just a cool ball. And down he goes. So, why is Jormag doing this? Damn, infantry cool. That's enough. I've seen what I needed to. This was your experiment? You're supposed to be fighting for our world. Destroyers can't burn Jormag's frozen. This is how we destroy priorities. Get your priorities in order. What's wrong with you? These aren't fighters, they're farmers. You're cutting down innocent people. They're not dead. One day, long after you've lived and died, they'll fall up, and I'll be there to lead them. Oh, look at that, the ice block Until theory. Then, their sacrifice will help unchain your mag. Welcome to the new world. Dude, it's so inspired, this. I mean, it's presented like a cliff note, but I love that, man. And again, the ice block theory, see? We're in an ice block, guys. In Jormag's chamber right now. It already what happened. We just don't realize it. The destroyers would have been a lot worse without us. All of us here, working together. 
We okay, can't Logan. let these people stay frozen. There must be a way to reverse what Jormax done to them. And we'll find it. But now we all need to stay on guard against both fire and ice forces. Guess we're fighting on two fronts after all. Are we? Or are we just caught in the middle? That line in the middle there from Logan just totally reads like they didn't know what they had him to say. So they just had him say some generic, like, happy, yay, teamwork kind of sentiment. Yeah, man. Oh, and I love as well that connection, you know, earlier where Kreisha and Ritlock couldn't get through the ice wall and it was like, wow, this thing's getting really resistant to fire. It's like, boom, look, that matters. That matters in the conflict between the two of them. That's a nice little touch as well. Something which I hadn't really noticed until playing it here in sequence. Oh, and we had Watch Nights with us. So cool. Look at this. Lake Doric was so clever the way they did this. And these giant, like, icy um, spikes and stuff, they weren't here. This has all been added, right? And look, you get a sense that Jenna and the Mesmers are sort of protecting the place. Um, and they've even put a mastery point on one of these, which is so cool. Bronze rank chest. It had three con scraps in it. Okay. I think there's one more for this patch, and then we're done. Commander, something is really, really wrong. I know. The ice dragons showing their true colors. Not only that, there's a cry coming from near one of the Koden settlements. It's just... I think I need to be there. And I think you do too. Just getting yanked all over the place real quick here. So, uh, this is the first time out of all these DRMs that the, the vibe of the place isn't going to change much. Like, they take Lake, Lake Doric Barmy, is that what they just described it? Make it frozen. Uh, take some of these jungle areas, make them fiery, right? They've changed the vibe. This mission, we're going to a snowy area with lots of snowy creatures. <laughs> um, but, okay, so this is how they end the owl stuff, right? Owl is back now. It's corrupted. So what's going on there? And the big cliffhanger, actually, of this section of, of champions is based on L. Um, so that will conclude this section of champions. Then there'll be one more with a few DRMs. And then the last bit is just one instance. Heard about Dragon Lake Doric on my way back from Ebonhawk. Figured I'd spread the word to potential allies. Without her warning, more lives would have fallen to agents of Jormag. Our sanctuary is open to all needing refuge. When the enemy comes, we'll be ready. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see what we got. Oh, yeah. What's the mechanic of lighting the fires? It's like they go out unless you return to them or something in a certain speed. Let's see if I can remember how it works. Oh, actually, didn't they patch it and change it and just make it really simple? I, I think with a whole group here, we'll be fine. This place, I just... When I'm standing here and adventuring here, I just cannot stop thinking about the Lagos because this is one of those, like, hidden Lagos places. Someone in the party says just activate them. I love the thought that you guys are all experts at these and really good because this is like the newest content in the game. Everyone's got it fresh on their mind. You know, everyone's been grinding these. I suppose as of the last release of Champions a year ago, that all transitioned to the, the Dragon Storm rather than the Deerans, maybe. But like I said, I've still got a bunch of achievements to do here. Like the challenge mode versions of these. I've got to assume a bunch of other people are in that position. They're just trying to squeeze in those last few achievements before End of Dragons. Have a nice clean slate of things they care about having done. Super weird considering we did an achievement to spread the word of Owl being alive. Wait, what are you referring to? I don't remember. What's this? One more Ice Brew to kill, two more Quaggan to save. I like the rabbits here. Alright, we did that. One Quaggan to save. You guys are really good at this. This is a real pleasure, man. Is it me, or did this feel like a distraction? Like, not the main event. When Bram called, he said there was something else going on outside the Coden Walls. Safeguarding the settlement is my chief concern. I can be your guide, but I can't spare forces to aid your expedition. We would never ask. How about the rest of you? Time is precious. Uh, we like must find the source of this spirit in pain. Will you help us, Aru? It's nice to have the Coden. 
interested in this thing about the spirits as well. Because as they said earlier in the saga, the Coden don't necessarily connect to the spirits in the way that the Norn do, or think about them and revere them in the way that the Norn do. Oh my god, are you guys super speeding them as well? No, you're swifter. Still though, even swiftness is pretty good. This is quite a long mission, if I remember rightly. Commander, getting close to Song of Exile. We'll meet you on the path, Bram. I brought some friends. Now, I haven't talked to him in a while, but Magical Mike would test his open world builds, doing solo uh, CM DRMs. And uh, he would often say his builds could do very well, but in this mission, this is quite hard, as far as um, all the DRMs like are Doric? concerned. No, whole villages were frozen, and we fought Svanir shamans. Not just warriors. My god, we do. We have a super speed scrapper. I won't stand near the party then so that the NPCs get it, not me. If I'm stealing the super speed, I'm slowing us down. Or potentially stealing us down. Dude, what the hell? We're going so fast. By the way, the fire and the ice on my hands. I could equip the um, the amulet, which means this is here even in outposts. You made it. This way. The screaming's coming from further down the path. Screaming? I don't hear anything. We're getting closer. The pain's getting stronger. So obviously the plot point that they're establishing here Cormac's is... Cormac's not making new Frozen from the dead. So what are their lackeys doing here? I still don't hear anything. Bram, you're not sensing destroyers again by any chance. No, no. Yeah, this. This idea here. Don't let them us. Since opening that door, Bram's become attuned. I remember assessing the idea that, uh, that Elder Dragons are spirits of the wild and, and, and um, the destroy that's why he can feel the destroyers and stuff. Prophecy. What do you really think you can do in the face of Jormag's power? You're Haha, <laughs> he didn't even finish his dialogue. Dude, it's good to have a bit of dialogue from a son of Svan here, man. I heard that. Ow? I cannot move against Jorvac's champion much longer. It's a shame we only have generic combat music in this one. Is there a village ahead? There are no living out this way. Only the family is you know, one of the other things about mixing the Char Civil War into the Icebridge Saga is, you know, when I think about Heart of Thorns, all those new Mordrum varieties came in, you know? When I think about Zaitan, right, and Kor, they had a ton more undead variations and late game things like the Risen Knights and the Eyes and the Mouths and the Drag. They had loads of stuff. When it came to the Icebridge Saga and Jormag, and the Prime Borders as well, you know, these dragons never got their, their rosters expanded in a really cool way. Jormag kind of did, but they're all like char-themed because they're Frost Legion. Because the, and that's another thing that's like... They allow the honor to mold them, just as you must. Or maybe he's the Norn of Prophecy because of everything he's done. Spiritual direction, I get it. I've needed it. But it's your choices and your actions that matter, Bram. They're but what made you who and what you are. I must to keep power from your man. You're gonna help us in one way or another. Why not make it easier on yourself? There, there, there is no ease in corruption. Ryland's channeling corrupted spirit energy. He'll pull the life from her. This one promised herself to your man once. Who's or not? My dragon doesn't take promises lightly. He's too strong. We're not going to be able to bring him down. We can't leave out like this. Jorma can't have her. We don't have to kill him. Focus on the connection, Bram. Kaz and I will split his focus. I really should have shared that break bar. Isn't this a fight where you don't break the break bar too quickly? Um, <laughs> Al sounds way too much like Glyn. But again, it's one of those things. If they had like a different language that was coming out, like an audio, and it kind of sounded animalistic or something, it'd be cool. What you're doing is cruel. See, I kind of agree with Ryland, even up to this point, by the way. Oh, what happened there? We're going to take out the brute, don't we, for this phase? Everyone appears to have ran elsewhere, but I do still think this place is important to me, so I'm just I think they'll join me in this fight in a bit. Yeah, here we 
again. Yeah, and there's no owl mod. All there. Well, there's the little totem that we had from before. Yeah, like, if you even think about Kraukatorik, even Kraukatorik got a bunch of stuff in POF in Season 4. That's a big question I have about End of Dragons, you know, a huge question, and it's still, like, iffy. The Deep Sea Dragon. The devs have been not shown a single thing about the Deep Sea Dragon. Is there a whole decent roster of, like, Cthulhu-type enemies and stuff? Like, you know when they're constantly talking about spoilers and all this stuff? I'm sure it's Deep Sea Dragon stuff that they're hiding. It, I mean, it has to be, right? Unless the story's going in a really bizarre direction where the Deep Sea Dragon is is not a thing. It's a concept. <laughs> I don't know. It's an ally. Which, for it's worth, I, I'm not very enthusiastic at the prospect of. I hope it's a real thing and they just hit it. If I force a break, I won't be able to control the backlash. And we got to get a good answer to um, to S at the very least, right? We got to get a real name, and it's got to begin with S. In fact, I'll tell you what. Here's a guess I've got for End of Dragons. Something I think they'll do. Here's some End of Dragons daily style commentary for you. I think we're gonna go to Cantha, and we're gonna mention the Elder Dragons and stuff. And we're going to say, offhandedly, we're going to be like, Oh yeah, there's that mysterious underwater one. What do you think? And I think they're going to instantly turn around and say, Oh, Steve. Yeah, 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 we know Steve. And we're going to be like, what? They're, like, they're going to say the name, just super casual, super offhand, and early on. What that name is, I don't know. And whether it's like an ancient dwarven name for it, or a canthan name for it, I also don't know. But I think they're going to have a sense of it straight away. And like, you know, because there's all this question as we roll into End of Dragons about how we're the ones out of t about how they're the ones out of touch. They weren't there for the Zaitan fight. They weren't there for the Kraukatorik fight. They weren't there for this, that, and the other thing. So it's like, it seems like they're sort of this backwater of losers that have got no merit of their own, nothing going on. I think Arena Net are instantly going to turn that on their head and they're going to say, no, 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 you're the one out of, the t out of touch. These guys do have knowledge to offer. They have been fighting a fight or, or maybe it's an ally or whatever. I don't know which way they're going. And they're, they're going to do that moment where it's like, no, you're the one out of touch. Here's the name and this old hat to us. And I think they're just going to throw it away at the start. Why do I think that's what they're going to do? Because that's what I'd do. You are the harness, Lord of prophecies. Tell them. Take the weird and go home. We still have three more corrupted spirits we can leverage. Might take longer, but we'll get there. Soon, Joe and I will be strong enough to face Primordus head on and win. I'll see you in the world that comes after. Owl. She. She's gone. For good. Willing to sacrifice herself. Again. Shouldn't be in vain. I opened the gate under Jormag's ice citadel. That's what brought Owl back. Made her vulnerable. You aren't responsible for Ryland. Or Jormak. Not their choices, maybe. But I am for mine. What did Owl mean? The wild together can direct the fall. I don't know. Why can I sense destroyers? What does Owl's message mean? How do we fight two Elder Dragons at once? Calm down, Bram. We'll figure it out. We always do. The spirits of the wild have known Jormag longer than any of us. Maybe they can help. Before more of us have to die. So this is kind of a weird one where this is like a mystery. This is like a mini mystery. Because they set this up. The spirits together. The wild together can direct the fall. And it's like what does that mean? And that, that will linger until the next mini champions patch. And then boom we're into it. Um, it's not as amazingly insanely revelatory or whatever as, as this might make you might think. But we actually got the dwarves with us. What is it? Alcars alchemical acid? Yeah. Throw a vial of acid, acidic gas at the target area that corrodes their armor, inflicting severe damage in conditions. I guess this did cracked armor in Guild Wars 1. Oh, dude, the bottle animation's really cool as well. That whole bottle in my hand? That was awesome. Kazmog, got anything to catch up with us? So, yeah, um... 
So what happens to Al there? Is that what? I didn't really pay attention there. Al, she's gone, gone for good. Again, more telling, not showing. How is that true? Just because Bram says so. You know, there's so much of this where it's like, here's a thing, just believe it because the character said it. Here's a thing, just believe it because the character said it. Like, the, the, the internal logic of, of Terrier and, and all of this is just like, it's whatever they want it to be. So yeah, Al's out now. So we're back to a position where Al's dead. Released, as they say there in quotes. <clears throat> so, uh, out the instance. And that's the end of this se this section. Another another way, another trailer. And if I remember rightly, this last patch had less DRMs, didn't it? Let's have a look. We've done all of these already. Okay, so second response. So there's three more DRMs, basically. Three more DRMs. And three story instances with then the um, the major meta. Do I actually have to beat the meta? How does that work again? <laughs> How does Dragonstorm work again? Uh -oh. I can't remember. Oh, we got a party space What's if you guys wrong? want. It was horrific. Whole villages of innocent people just frozen mid-step for hundreds of years to come. I don't know what the Arcane Council intended, but what Jormag's doing, it's obscene. And it's working. Based on both Dragon's energy readings, the balance of power is definitely shifting. The Council? We got what we wanted. Jormag got what they wanted. We have to put a stop to this. Perhaps we can persuade the Persuader. Jormag, may we speak? Any time, Grand Niece. I told you I so enjoy our talks. What you and Ryland are doing, the freezing of living things, it needs to stop. Stop? Why? For one thing, you're using corrupted magic. I don't need to tell you how dangerous that is. I've been an Elder Dragon for quite some time, my dear. More importantly, it's wrong. Wrong? You're dooming those mortals to centuries of darkness. Limbo, who knows what? I confess I do not. That's the point. For all you know, they're in pain. Tortured. Their lives are preserved. When they fall, they'll be in exactly the same condition they were when frozen. Physically, maybe. But mentally, emotionally, you don't know. You don't care. You need to care. My dear, I do care. Of course I care. But you've left me with no option. Me? What do you... You refuse to help me stop the existential threat my brother poses. What choice then do I have but to shift the balance of power by whatever means I can? Not like... Your balance that chains me to an animal. No thought, no reason. Imagine my mind bound for all eternity to that. The, the balance is needed. The balance will kill us all! That's why I need you. You know the prophecy. Only Primordus can kill me. I won't risk taking him head on. So you want me to do it for you? And if I don't... Aurene, Grand Niece, I only ever wanted us to be allies, friends. I still do. 
But I'm not the one putting us on opposite sides. That was not reassuring. No. Timey, try to talk some sense into the Arcane Council. Maybe we can at least take some pieces off the board. Why do I get the feeling our lives just got way more complicated? Do they all go mad? Why do they all go mad? Such an important line that. That's probably an end of Dragon's line there. Commander, it's Jory. Just got word. There was an attack on the Silvari village of Cathal. That's Caledon Forest, right? Was it Ice Brood? And Frost Legion. I'm sending an emergency broadcast to anyone near that area. If you can help, just give me the word. And what word exactly would you prefer? Kanak. Is that Kanak? It is Kanak. I couldn't help but overhear you need some help near Cathal. Lucky for you, I happen to be in the area. In the area doing what, exactly? Well, helping you, I suppose. Don't be long, Commander. Wow, the difference in Kanak's voice is huge for me. You know, I actually really didn't detect much of a difference when I played this as they were originally coming out. Really? I'm not joking. I was completely not put off by it at all. I thought that it sounded fine and pretty much normal. But here, doing it in this format, this this series here, wow, I can really feel the difference in Canuck's voice. That's crazy. Anyway, that's ticky tacky. That doesn't matter so much. Yeah, Aureen wondering why they all go mad. Do they all go mad? That is like that's that's prime real estate for End of Dragons. Um, which hopefully I find gives a good answer. You know what I've noticed about Icebridge Saga? Uh, th when they've, they're, they're rushing and they've got to end it and they've got to do stuff. They don't have time to set anything up anymore. Um, they just constantly tell you things are the way they are because we say so. Like with Timey at the council explaining the logic of all this stuff. And you're just supposed to hand wave and not think deeply about it. They're always telling you how things are. The other thing that they're doing so much of suddenly is prophecy. The prophecy about... Primordus and Jormag, and Primordus is going to be the one to kill Jormag. The prophecy about Bram. Prophecy is like an escape valve for them, you know? It's a way for them to say, well, look, you don't have to question how we get there or why we get there or what's going on. We don't have to have our characters acting individually, operating like that. It's just this is the prophecy and this is the truth and this is how it goes. And there's too much prophecy here as well. I don't want to see Arena now. I don't want to see Guild Wars ever do prophecy again, you know? Not unless it's like mixed, questionable cultural prophecy that you don't know whether it's real or not. And I've just picked up on that about specifically champions too. I mean, I, I guess I can't blame them. Like, they're looking for anything they can. Right, so, um... But that, that, the redeemer of that conversation there. Also, the, the word grandniece. So, so, um... Jormag looks at... Primordus as a twin and a brother. We know that. But it also seems that Jormag looks at Kraukatoric as a brother of sorts as well. Would that be true of Zaitan and Morjamoth as well? What uh, uh, Their relationship to one another, their relationship to mother, the reason they all go mad, I'm sure is all the same story. And hopefully the uh, hopefully Kunavang and the Deep Sea Dragon can, can help us unpack that in the next expansion. <sighs> Kantha's got a lot to do, man. All right, Caledon Forest. So here we get Tengu. Little hint, little story about the Tengu, who are obviously going to be major factors in the upcoming expansion. I really couldn't stand this character when I played this before. I like the Tengu as like dispassionate, honourable, wise, distant, and they're going to give us like an anti Tengu here. It feels like it's been years, Kanak. It's great to see you again. A really young, rebellious Tengu. Lucky for you, my bar for better circumstances isn't what it used to be. With all these ice brood around, we need to get the survivors into Caledon Haven. Should be safe there. Except it looks like the Lion Guard were just as surprised as the Silvari. You know, the Dominion of Winds is right up the hill. It would be nice if those overgrown feather dusters pitched in for once. Yeah, and Kanak's got a cool line there. And they will, indeed. Uh, earlier she was calling her sister. Okay, so you guys think that Jormag's just using whatever frame phrase to seem familial. Like, it's just manipulation, really. It's just like a, a turn of phrase, really. It's like when we called each other family at the end of season four, right? My god, everyone's going so quick at this. 
Yeah, and look, I have problems with the characterization of this Tengu, not because I find it unbelievable. I totally believe in a young, rebellious Tengu sounding like this and acting like this and being like this. And I totally believe that this kind of Tengu would be one of the ones that leaves the wall and does something radical. I totally believe all of that. I have no problem with that. It's just the decision that they're going to reintroduce the Tengu and that's the choice they made to go with, you know? So what does that say about their ambition for the Tengu? I don't need my scope about what kinds of Tengu exist to be broadened. Can we get some quintessential normal Tengu first? We've had no time to interact with them at all yet, you know. That was kind of my, my immediate thought. We'll see them in a second anyway. I'm sort of jumping the gun on this discussion. And again, I know I don't have the right opinion on this, so to speak. But I remember that Tengu opened its mouth and my first thought was I hate this place. Please! Whee! I'm sorry. Ran very fast. Very fast! Who are you? Helmage is Sparrowhawk from the Dominion of Winds. I've been sent to gather aid. We're under attack! Under attack? By Ice Brood? The Frost Creatures laid siege to the gate and built a giant wall of ice. I barely slipped through before it sealed the path into the city. With me, please! We must break their siege! We can't allow Jormag to take the Dominion of Winds. Go. We'll follow. Kanak, with me. Commander. Oh, we triggered it already. Okay. Am I missing dialogue when we triggered those? I mean, I appreciate the enthusiasm and speed we're going at here. Well, what is normal Tengu for you then, WP? I just said. I thought like the honor and, you know, the wiseness and sort of the, the so distance. When your neighbors get attacked, the nothing, measured approach. When you're attacked, you expect us to pitch in, no questions asked. If you have questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. They're like a samurai vibe, you know. Who else have you managed to pull into this? There were some floating, glowing humans called Exalted. Not sure where they're from, but they've offered to help. I'll bet they heard Jory's broadcast, showed up to help, then got dragooned. Someone just mentioned that there's Pigeon Tengu. I gotta be honest, if this was the Pigeon Tengu model, and it was like, just I would be all over this. I'll give you a moment to plan. I love the idea of Pigeon Tengu speaking and acting like this. I love that. You know, really chirpy and energetic and bobbing the head a lot and talking like... I think that's awesome. Uh, Alright, you want to be careful. The woods are crawling with ice for you. you ready? By the way, the atmosphere here in the forest is awesome. Armor like that. Greetings. It could be just what we need to break the siege. You seem surprised that we would help you, Caladris. Quite the dim view you must have of your neighbors. I don't really know my neighbors. This is only my third time outside the walls. Never even met a Silvari before. I love that detail. That makes the world feel big. told I make a wonderful first impression. She's on the borders of the Silvari. And she's never even met her. And I know she's young, but that makes Tyria feel awesome to me. Most of them share in your naivete. But me, well, my face is basically a map of the world. Dude, does this one not scale? The tuning on this is nuts. These things are dying instantly, and there's no, barely no any mobs around. This isn't a long escort either, you know. Oh. I remember last time I was here, I was listening to the Ricky Gervais XM XFM shows. And I was listening to an episode where a member of the public calls in and talks about smelly biscuits. For <laughs> some reason, that's ingrained in my memory. Doing this DRM here. <laughs> smelly eyebrows, sorry. Smelly eyebrows is the line. That line also says how isolated they are as well. Yeah, absolutely it does. There's the ice wall up ahead. Are you with me? We're with you. Let's tear it down. I really think that moment in that radio show changed the course of their radio shows forever. Because you can tell they had a ton of energy before that. And they were really trying on that show. Only to realise when they actually called the public that none of them knew who Carl Pilkington were. None of them really cared or had a clue and they were just chances. And I think they just lost a lot of respect for the whole industry right then and there. Because they suddenly, at the end of that episode, after that phone call, they come back and they're like talking about closing it down and they go on break and stuff. And then after that, season two rapidly closes, and it will it will stop. Anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. This army in what an hour? How did you convince them? You asked for help, so we gave it. That's always reason enough. We want to extend. Behind you, beyond the bridge. 
Well, that's going to be a problem. Want to open that gate so we cannot die? And risk that thing getting inside. Not a chance. Then what do we do? We're trapped! Those bonfires! You can light your arrows and melt the damn thing! I'll work! Come on! Yeah, oh man, the Glossus wasn't spawned yet. That's so cool! They really give you the impression that you might go inside the Dominion here. Right? Do you mind opening the gate? Oh, it's gonna happen! We're only at the start of the DRM, who knows, right? But it's just a really short DRM, basically. Also, this fight is a really snowbally crazy fight. Crazy fight. Sometimes you'll do this, and this thing basically dies instantly, and it's all good. Other times, you can struggle on this for like 20 minutes, and the pugs you're with, it's just impossible. Because of the whole fire mechanic, it's going to put out this fire here, right? There, even though its break bar was broken. And what we need to do is move to the next fire before it gets too resilient or we lose too much health. So knowing this is really snowbally and knowing you guys are doing really great in the fights here, um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be over super fast. I gotta go regen at the fire here. That's funny, I don't remember that line. I don't have any friends. She's cool, she's cool. I just wish she was a fucking Tengu. Come on. Uh, oh, this one's on now. So this is unbelievable damage here. Why did I spawn? run out of fire, I know. Hopefully we didn't miss any dialogue here, because we did that very quick. We survived. I don't know what to say. We can start at thank you and navigate from there. I have to be honest. I didn't expect I'd find help from anyone outside our walls. Not after what I've been told. There is much to think on. But I can safely say you're not at all like I expected. So, thank you. The Dominion of Winds faces the same threat we all do. Perhaps there is hope of a stronger alliance between us. I have little sway over my people. But perhaps if I tell the story to enough Tengu in the tavern... Opinions will change. Anyone who wants to fight with us just has to say the word. Goodbye, Caladris Sparrowhawk. Again, this instance, this is a luxury. I want Tengu stuff too, but... Now is not the time. Nonetheless, they manage to get a lot of mileage, don't they? It's pretty cool. Like, they get all, the, like, all these ideas of, like, a, a Tengu tavern and stuff. Just imagining how sophisticated civilization and stuff is back there and how rich and diverse. So, Caladris Sparrowhawk. I don't know whether... What do you guys think? I don't think there's been any dev comments or anything. What kind of a role Caladris might play in End of Dragons? It will be a complete mind blow if the Dominion of Winds is available to play in. Um, in End of Dragons. But it would be an amazing prologue, wouldn't it? And I would expect Caladris there. I still can't believe we survived that, all in a day's work. You and Kanaka really downplaying this. It's honestly a bit unsettling. Well... Not so much because I think you're wrong, but... More because it means you've had to fight these things before. And if you fought them enough to act like this in life or death situations... What have you been avoiding? And why? You really want her to be in Dragon's Watch? I need a little something more. She's got to have. There's got to be something more to her. You know, right now we don't really have any. You know, there's got to be some darkness in her past, or some some flaw, something she can't get over, something to wrestle with. Otherwise, like, what kind of a character is she? She's just gonna linger around like rocks, or be like another bubbly entity like Timey. You know, there's got to be something else going on. Uh, before I'm on board with her in Dragon's Watch. But the idea of having a Tengu and stuff, I, I think after End of Dragons, Dragon Watch is gone. I mean, the the namesake of the guild certainly would need to change. I think we're going to totally different stuff. Um, and she could be a part of that. What do you want to do in the... Uh, sorry, what do you do back there in the Dominion of Winds? I'm a messenger. My speed is unmatched. And I know every shortcut through the Eerie. When they... What did you call them? Ice Brood? When they started amassing around the gate, I was sent to find help. I think they knew if anyone had a chance of slipping out before the bridge was lost, it'd be me. And it was. To be honest... I'm not sure how I go back to delivering mail after this. Uh, what did Tengu told about the outside world? I can't speak for all of us, but my family, everyone in the Great House, 
thought humans would destroy us. You know, like they almost did with the char. It was always safer to just stay inside our walls. There's a part of you that knows it's not all true. It can't be. The world's too big. Hopefully I can change a few minds. The way you changed mine. I wish her example there hadn't been about the char, but it had been something canthan. Because obviously a lot of the guys back there, ancestrally, were fleeing Tengu from Cantha. And that's where I got the sense a lot of their xenophobia and isolationism came from. Because of the Ministry of Purity. But what exactly would she reference that your average Guild Wars 2 player would immediately recognise as well? Or your average Tyrion, that the commander even? I know the Minister... Well, I don't know. I don't know. Alright, so there we go. Um, that's Caladris. Oh, we get a bit of dialogue with Kanark as well. What is it? Oh, I see. Greetings. So yeah, you got Kanark in Thunderhead, vanishes, and then he's back for this mission, and that's it again. So who knows what else they'll do with him, and when, or how, how they continue to utilize him. Well, that wasn't a bit of an adventure now, wasn't it? You think you could help bring more Tengu into the fight? More sure. Enough. Well, not likely. Caladris was able to fight with us side by side. Not everyone's that lucky. Or unlucky. Not even sure anymore. Like I said, my bar for what constitutes a good time isn't what it used to be. Um, what were you really doing in the Caladon Forest? Just a brief stopover on my own journey, Commander. One I'll have to be returning to. I made a lot of money off of your adventures. Allowed me to put some of my own plans in motion. Now I have promises to keep and schemes to complete. Things that require me to stay alive and far away from world-ending events. I really like all this. But don't worry, Commander. I'll always bet on you. I wonder what promises. I wonder whether they have any concrete ideas. I'm sorry, but I don't do small talk. Well, I think you do, mate. Uh, where did you go after Dragonfall? Well, Travelling with Saida. I had to go collect my winnings from every major city across Ilona and Tyria. Imagine the surprise when I showed up with the news that Krakatorik was dead. Relief. Joy. Uh-oh. It's good I had a little muscle to back up my claims. <laughs> Kanak and the Corsairs, man. They, they should have short stories about this stuff. If this was Final Fantasy, there'd be like six short stories on the website right now, and one of them would be about Kanak with, <laughs> with his adventures there. All right. Bye-bye, Kanak. Perhaps for good. Who knows? Or at least for a few years. I'll tell you that. Champion, I have something urgent to show you. I'm on my way. Okay, Aureen. How many more have we got? I can't remember. Two more, isn't it? I just can't Holy remember what crap, the instances Commander. are. There's been a spike in Primordius's power like I've never seen. Something's changed. Get back to me as soon as you figure out what. I can shed some light on that front, champion. Bram came to see me. Hear me out. It's my destiny to see Jormak dead. You understand that better than anyone. I do. But Jormak has much more power now. Owl said the wild together can direct the fall. And I'm the harness. That's a lot on your shoulders, Bram. And more is at stake. Which is why the spirits and I are going to wake Primordus. Get him focused on destroying Jormag, not the world. I just need to know where Primordus is. Why does that matter? Jormag will never face him voluntarily, unless Jormag is certain to win. So we force the confrontation. Jormag can't stay hidden from their own twin. Primordus is Why? Because we say so. Beast. There is no directing him. I'm Norn, Aureen. We're not afraid of beasts. Spirits of the wild will give him all the brains he needs. We will stop Jormag. Help us. I'll keep watch on you through the mists. You agreed to that reckless plan? I did. You'll only understand if you walk in Bram's shoes. Step into the scrying pool, champion. Bran's journey awaits. Right. So now we've got this. So there are a lot of people out there who consider Bran to be ruined in the Icebridge saga. 
Everything that happened that was, you know, all about he's on our team now, he's not crazy, going out on his own, doing his own thing, you know, all, all of that progression that came in Season 4, they kind of just twist here and, like, ignore, and Bram goes off and does his own thing again. And a lot of people don't like that, and I'm sort of inclined to agree with them. That he doesn't even go to the commander and explain or anything. Um, so, Bram's back in a lot of people's bad books, basically, because of this. Uh, but let's keep playing and see what we think as, as we go along here. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if I have to solo this instance. How does this work with a party? I'll be playing as Bram here. This is a nice moment where they get to utilize the scrying pool again. As I said, a full-fledged Ice Brood and Destroyer saga. I can imagine more visions of the past. Like where we're looking back at, you know, like properly seeing Jormag at previous rising and where it came from and all that kind of stuff. But here, so check it out. We're in the season three volcano. Down into a volcano. I'm a snow guy. There is an open cavern below the lava. I can sense the air currents. That should make you feel much better. The, the idea was yours, Erson. Are, you, Are you saying you're not up to the quest? Nah, the plan is perfect. Jormag's not expecting us. Bastard's too cocky. I, I, I do love a hunt when the prey doesn't see me coming. Exactly. Just saying, burning alive wasn't part of my plan. A good thing you're running with this pack. Channel our energy to push the lava back. I, I, I appreciate the ride. <laughs> That's nice. Isn't it? There's actually a lot of lore about the Spirits of the Wild. So when you're typing for them, I think there's got to be a lot to dig at, you know? Alright, so we keep lowering the lava here, just like in the Season 3 instance. I shouldn't be surprised there's a welcome wagon. Man, playing this with as a mace, mace shield guardian must be really cool. Uh, you know, you could actually give him Bram's mace and Bram's uh, shield. This is good stuff, though. You know, whether no matter what the context of the specific story is, I think more of this stuff's awesome. And yeah, we get the special action to become the wolf. This skill bar is like really bad though. This is the skill bar where as you attack it recharges the four and the five. When we were fit beating POF, I was using Sohothin and I was thinking, what, what, what is it I know where it chunks them down? It's the, the Bram skills. Someone's probably left a YouTube comment explaining that and I've just completely ignored them. Anyway, there's a few achievements based on this as well, but I think I have all of these ones thankfully, so. This is another thing where I really appreciate him having a party. Very much expedites things. Without me struggling on wolf abilities, I don't know too well. Also, I, that my weakening charges look pretty bad there. But I did try to steal in. I got no valid path. Hello, bear. Dragon for the other? If we end up like Ox and the rest, what happens to the Norn if we four are lost? Hundreds, thousands of us have already died because of these Elder Dragons. Something has to change. Ram's right. The Norn is every test. You know what's kind of funny here? That full damage thing. They've mitigated full damage through gliding, through low gravity, through just making you invulnerable, but you still fall over and get CC'd. In this instance, they just straight up have you safe from full damage. By the way, there's too much conversation. Spirit. But I'm an only child. Bram's right. The Northern Prophecy has lived up to its title and passed every test. Have some faith. In the Prophecy and the Mysteries, as he said, Jormag has ever overestimated their own intellect. You'd certainly know. The Snow Leopard says to Raven. Raven says, remind of us, which of us is re revered for his savvy? And Bram says, spirits, glad I'm only an only, glad, glad I'm an only child. Raven says, that sounds more like a, a, more than little like a lie. Wait, what are they suggesting here? That Bram's not an only child? Am I missing something there? Spirits, glad I'm an only child. That sounds more than a little like, like a lie. Oh, he, that he's glad. The, the lie is that he's glad. Echo in our minds already. Can 
Can you stand listening to their agony for seasons? The Spirits of the Wild are just so weird to me. They're just, they're like some Tom Bombadil shit. Do you know what I mean? They just feel like they're these supreme, powerful beings that like feel disconnected from all other aspects of lore and all other aspects of history. And as soon as they get real and they start influencing the story, I just feel really strange about it. You know? Maybe they're a lot easier to buy in all these works if you're less familiar with Tyria as a setting. I don't know, is that arrogant of me to say? Just straight up stupid, probably. Just watching intently to see when they start speaking again. If there's combat and we can't hear it or read it, I'll read it out for you guys. It's amazing how busy the UI gets as soon as you've got a party. Look at all these buffs on this guy. Look at this. Look at his buffs, bro. It's crazy. They don't seem like eerie, uncanny entities. Well, yeah, I think it's just the voice acting, though. Here we go. Being the Norna. Enjoy the drop. Uh, being the Norna property is worth something. Wish it's it would have come with wings, blade. though. There he is. Now he's actually smaller already, I think, than he was in season three. I think they've already shrunk the model a bit. And he has. Not like you don't have experience reining in rowdies. Can't think of anyone better to lead Primordis to his last fight. But he has like this new amazing texture. I will. I will say this again as we move into Dragon Storm itself. The cinematography, the visuals and stuff of this instance and this stuff is really good. Yes, you only get the dragon's heads. Yes, it's hungry, hungry hippos. Yes, that sucks, right? It does. But I still think it's a gorgeous instance. And I think the only reason that there wasn't a bigger sort of outcry with a lot of this stuff is because at least it, it feels fun and pretty for what it is. You know? So the Destroyer of the Last King. I mean, these are just such cool names. All the Destroyer names are badass. And it's good that they're using this variety of Destroyers, but oh my god, he's melting. That's insane. Can I use Wolf 4 and 5? No, I can't. He only has a break bar available while I'm in Wolf form. That's interesting. It's really, really interesting. Actually. My God! Absolute destroy. Has Primordus always been this ugly? Yes and no. Now the infection of magic from dead gods and dragons is edged across his face. Yourselves. That's interesting. I think what they're doing there is the pointing out the difference between him now and his season three appearance. I love that line. Yes and no. Now the infection of magic from dead gods and dragons is etched across his face. Okay, so uh, gird ourselves. I'm going to go to Wolf first because I'm Bram. I will tie the spirits of the wild together in our purpose. Snow Leopard. So you can see, by the way, I can hounds of Balthazar. If I was a Norn, an actual Norn, could I become the bear here as Bram? Or whatever? Strengthen the spirits of the wild, the fortitude and ferocity to remain ourselves, even within Primordus. I will lend Primordus the clarity and reason 
Galactic Record Prizes. What went wrong? The dragon felt no affinity with us. We were almost devoured. We need, we need a way to anchor ourselves. We must be tricked into claiming the connection. How do you stop an avalanche, yes? You don't. You get above it. Primordus needs a champion. A champion like Ryland. A harness. What if I become like... Why, why are you doing this? The attention? A legend? The power? No! I'm doing it so everyone will be safe. So my friends will survive. That is your spirit, Bram Erson. Never doubt your spirit. Embrace destiny. What a great cue. And again, if you put all of these bullet points, say, okay, this is what it's going to be. Bram's going to become the champion. I, I, I think this is all really good. It's just like a premise. The bit where he sort of does it behind the commander's back, maybe not so much. Maureen, I know this wasn't exactly the plan. But we will bring the twin dragons together, no matter what it takes. Tell the commander. This is my choice. We disconnect from Bram. Nice technique here as well, with the camera staying, and he walks off. And off he goes. Bram, where... Did he survive? I believe he was able to bond with Primordus. Yes. But I'm cut off from him now. Bram sacrificed himself to protect us all. How could he- His plan could very well succeed. If Jormag and Primordus are coaxed into confrontation, they will destroy each other. But what happens to Bram when they do? It was his choice. We have to respect it. No matter the outcome, we owe him that. So yeah, more about the, is Bram gonna die, blah blah blah. Look at Aureen doing an idle animation there, by the way. It's quite interesting. Wildfire complete. Commander, it's Krisha. What's your day look like? I'm sure you're about to tell me. Malice and I reached out to the Omicron. We're spearheading an alliance. Long term. Is that something they'd be interested in? I mean, with the Flame Legion back in the picture. It's a new Flame Legion. Or a new Char. A united Char. The Omicron are at least willing to hear us out. They're sending rocks as their representative, and I'd like you to join us. A kind of... neutral mediator. I'd be honored. Haven't seen rocks since Dragonfall. It'll be nice to catch up. We're meeting south of Lion's Arch. Blood Tide Coast. See you soon, Commander. So, uh, we don't even get time for another conversation there. So yeah, all this stuff about, like, Bram might not survive the season stuff, once again on your mind. Um, and I mean, you either kind of buy the power and the strength of the spirits, or you don't, you know. And if It's all very MacGuffin-y, you know. It's, oh, the spirits can do this, right? They can merge a person into the... Destroy. So here's uh, into Primordus. The thing is, as an acting champion... Uh, Bram is a very different kind of champion because it's he's now a part of a very different kind of dragon So Excelsior Where to? Um, oh, I like how he says my class name up there as well So Blood Tide Coast I now remember what the final two are the right it's Blood Tide Coast and it's um, Fields of Ru uh, not Fields of Ruin Fireheart Rise. I always get those two confused Okay, private Interesting story journal stuff on this one. Oh, does the journal expand on it? Oh, no, not again. Hey, Commander. Looking good. Rox, what the... Thank you. You too. What is going on here? We were about to start talks when all of a sudden a bunch of soldiers came ripping through from Lion's Arch. Sounds like Jormag tried to launch a sneak attack from the south. <laughs> Lucky us, huh? Can we expect reinforcements, or is it the four of us and a few Lion Guard? We sent word to anyone we could get a hold of. Hopefully they show up in time. I'll take any help we can get. Where are the others? On the shoreline. This way. 
Right, okay, so, um, it would be a very non death one for the legends. Oh, it certainly would. Let's read this. What's so interesting about the story journal here? Ten, uh, creature contacted me. Oh, up here. Wow, there's a lot to read. I travel with the eye to consult with Aurene, but before I reached her, time. No, 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 it's too far back. Okay. Bram had conferred with her previously. His connection with the spirits of the wild and also his sensitivity to the elder dragons had been growing. Al's final words in the wild can direct the fall brought him to an epiphany. He would harness the, their influence to the flow of magic uh, to and from the fire dragon. The whole idea sounded preposterous and suicidal, but he'd made up his mind, citing the spirits who could insulate him from fully becoming corrupted as a Ch prime order's minion. With that proclamation, he sought to confront the elder dragon in its own lair, and Aurene offered me to let see it firsthand. I witnessed his transformation, and he conferred with Raven, Bear, Wolf, and Snow Leopard, who instructed him to make his way into the heart of the volcano. Had he not been protected with their magic, he would have burst into flames instantly. They placed their trust and confidence in the young Norn, who was now ready to truly become the Norn of prophecy, as had been foretold. I really can't stand the prophecy stuff. It would take their combined strength not to keep him um, shielded from physical harm, but also to protect him from mental assault. He journeyed downward, conferred with the spirits. At the bottom, he faced a gigantic destroyer. He prevailed, turning the spirits for final guidance. They shared their intentions. Wolf would unite them. Snow Leopard would direct the dragon's hunger towards its sibling. Raven would provide clarity in Primordius' judgment to recognize its true enemy, as Jormag already was. And Bear would provide the ferocity and fortitude to protect the spirits from being consumed by the dragon's rage. I like these little details. They make it seem less uh, MacGuffin-y. With that, uh, Bram offered himself as the Fire Dragon's new champion, one of intellect, fortitude, and frosty. It would take all of his will and that of the spirits to retain even a shred of his self, even if it meant his untimely death. I don't know if it worked or my friends lost forever. It's our sand shifters! Get their backs! They'll summon up effigies we can use to smash the ice brood! Right behind you. Uh, but if I've lost my friend to this fire war, it's got to be worth something. So, there you go. I think, uh, retrospectively, knowing Bram will survive this saga kind of ruins all the volcano stuff to me. I don't know whether that's right for me to feel that way, but that's sort of how I feel. It feels like there'd be a lot of weight and meaning and value to all of that if he dies. If he survives, it just feels like a bunch of hand-wavy nonsense that has been given as a way to to get the two dragons to fight, you know. And it's of ill consequence. I guess we'll see in End of Dragons how, like, injured Bram is. It'll be like a blighting pod moment again, I guess. I mean, they're still talking about Farron's injury. If Farron can sprain his leg and they're still talking about it three years later, <laughs> hopefully, um... Hopefully this will mean something with Bram. <laughs> something meaningful. Why, why can I imagine? We should just smash cut now to it being 2024. And Bram's in a patch, and we get one sentence of dialogue about how his leg still hurts or something. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the main thing I want to say about all of that is what I've already said. It's that the, the spirits of the wild just feel like these very intangible oddities within lore that kind of made a lot of sense to me as, like, a part of the non belief system. But when they become tangibles like they do here in the saga. There's something about it that just doesn't click to me. I, don't, I really couldn't identify why. why. Why do I let the human gods be tangibles in the story, but not the spirits of the wild or the eternal alchemy? Or, uh, I don't know what it is. Because the eternal alchemy was kind of in that role during season two, you know? Okay, so we got five waves to defeat here, by the way. Uh, moving over to this DRM, it feels really sudden, actually, doesn't it? Like, we cut from major Bram shit to suddenly chatting about this. I like what they set up in the in this sense that Primordis attacked the north of Lion's Arch, and Jormag attacked the south of Lion's Arch. I think that's quite an interesting, um, just fun little thing. Oh, wow, Scorpion Wire can be cancelled for us. It won't fire it behind me. That makes sense. There you go, that's one wave. 
They should have Zodra in a wheelchair, brain dead, and Bram with heavy burn marks and magical meta metaphysical pain. And both of them aren't complaining, and then Farron pushes them aside. <laughs> That'll be a hell of a moment. Yeah, I really think that the, the, the Bram sacrifice transformation champion thing, I think if he's going to survive the season, they have to do some damage to him, right? And to be honest, if I could redo all of that, it's a cool enough idea, but it's too big. It's too big. I would probably stick with a bow, and I would have all this screen time about the bow. I'd have that whole story instance. All, all this time, I'd just trade into bow stuff. And I'd have Bram... Uh, I don't know. I can't write off the top of my head and pin it all together, but you could probably do it. Do it. This isn't how I wanted to reintroduce ourselves. I should have known things wouldn't go according to plan. You invited the commander after all. Yes, we really should stop doing that. I'm right here, Imperator. You know the Omicron won't shy away from a fight that needs fighting. We do. Well, now you're fighting for the future of the charm, and we can't sit that out, no matter what our elders may think. Couldn't have said it better myself. Welcome to the good fight. I had a really weird moment with this uh, this mission, I'll be honest, when I first played this. Well, because I really didn't know what kind of studio ArenaNet was, and I didn't know what they'd go for. Um, so this is a bit of a girl power mission. You know, you got Malice, you got Kreisha, you got Rox. And at the at the end of the instance, they're gonna start talk they're gonna get together and talk about like the future of the char and about the Kana and stuff. And I really didn't know in that last conversation. If what they were going to do was, hey, we'll be the, a trinity of, like, female char imperators. And us together, we'll do it much better than those stupid men. And we'll, we'll lead the char to a, a beautiful future. And there's a moment, we'll see it in a second. I was like, ArenaNet really could have just picked that up and gone with that if that's what they wanted to do. Um, but they, they, it doesn't do that at all. And I was thinking to myself, oh, I wonder if that was too silly for me to wonder if that's, that, that was something they would have been excited to do with the char. I think um, uh, Botica's here as well, right? Isn't it? Isn't it Botica in this, this episode? Well? we'll see when they go out onto the ice shelf in a second. And this is great, by the way. This is so cool that you get the ice shelf here that you can actually physically walk out onto. Memories of X2. Yeah, that was a big girl power, Charlie's Angel kind of vibe. Damn thing surrounded itself with the ice walls. We need a way to blast through them. What do we have? The cannons on that Lion Guard ship and a positive attitude. That's the... Huh, I like this one. Okay! Stay on those cannons and blast away what you can! Huge twist about End of Dragons. Canton's already discovered space travel. That's why all the maps looked empty and we couldn't look at certain walls hiding space travel tech. I don't know whether I really believe that. I mean, maybe, but there's already a bunch of weird, crazy... You're talking about, like, literal, real-world, near-science rocket ships, right? Otherwise, why would it be particularly recognizable as space travel tech? You could have any kind of crazy-looking device explained in lore as a space travel. And loads of the Jade Tech... Uh, I mean, look at the golems, man. Look at the Jade Tech golems. They literally launch off into sky, uh, into orbit, like their rocket ships in End of Dragon. And they haven't been gun shy about any of that stuff. So no, it's a fun idea, but I don't think it's true. I think what they're hiding has to be deep sea dragon stuff. Either it's something real and it's deep sea dragon stuff, or like it's just ineptitude from the marketing team. One or the other. We had a cool idea though the other day. What was it? It was some kind of reality rift thing. It was a really compelling idea. Oh my god, I guess I should just go on the boss. Wow, we're killing him so quick. This is the Crash Bandicoot boss with this, the exploding uh, pillars coming out. What stat set am I using? Uh, I'm in white gear on my armor and I'm in Marauder's trinkets. Which is why I have 27k health. I'm sure some of that's the passives from the DRM and stuff that's bumped me up. 27k is really high. It's making those ice walls again. Let's take them out with the cannons. White, so I am leeching. Well, it's only my armor, so basically I take a lot of damage when I get here. Even 
know I have that HP because my uh, defense score is very low. Glad I actually got to use one of these cannons and actually mess with it a little bit. I didn't really share that bassy. Hey, we got the break. God damn team. Look at that. They're just absolutely cleaning house. We're fine. Looks like they're pulling back. Thank you, Rox. Like I said, Omicron can't sit this out. But there's something else. Oh? What's that? Spotica's first thought was this might be another Imperator vanity exercise like Bangar's All Legion rally. The more I thought about it and your moves over the last year, I... Malice, are you planning to become Connor? I don't want it. Ash politics are the only kind I care about. I like having equals to spy on. Makes things interesting. Um... See, the thing is, if she, st if she wanted Kana, she's not stupid enough to say it, though. It's like, uh, it's like Kreisha said earlier. If you, if you say you want the job, it can get you shanked, right? And you're not going to get an Ash Legion Impera in public to announce, to c say something like that to a near stranger, you know? But Rox is, like, kind of out of touch, I guess, at this point. Spending time with the Omicron. I don't know. Uh, first Prime Orders tries taking Lion's Arch, then Jormag. By the way, this ice sheet is especially cool because the mastery point that was on this one is under the shelf. So you go on a cool little swim there that you'd never have that experience in regular Blood Tide. I just love how they've managed to change this map without actually changing the map. Just by loading a couple of assets in. Uh, they were lucky you were here to help. We all did our part. The reinforcements didn't hurt either. As always, appreciate the extra paw. Uh, what do you think about the Omicron? Whenever I had to put up with Bangar or Smolder's crap, I envied their simplified... See, it was this, this line here, some of these lines. Can't blame them for sticking their heads in the sand when we were tearing ourselves apart in Drizzlewood. But they're here now. That's all I care about. And Rox has always been reliable. I'm glad she's with us. Aww. Um, okay. Rox plus Frostbite. Always appreciate seeing Frostbite. Same as Garm, really. Never a dull moment when you were around, Commander. Thanks for helping us out. How's life with the Omicron? Simple, you know. Quiet. Nice. And Frostbite loves it too. Devourers don't usually get to retire. <laughs> Heard about some of the stuff that's happened since Dragonfall. Sometimes I miss it. Most times I don't. Yeah, it's it's a creepy, scary season. So, You uh, talked to Bram since you joined the Omicron? I heard something about Primordis and the Spirits of the Wild. Figured I'd give him some space. I'm proud of him, though. Last time we sent letters was uh, a year ago. He was changed. Even then. Do you really think the Omicron will forgive the Flame Legion? No. But then, that's the old Flame Legion. Everything I've heard about Ephraim is not that. They're fighting to save this world, and the Omicron will do the same. So... We'll figure it out. Oh my god, guys. We are so close now. It's weird weird vibes I'm getting right now. Also, is it just me or does the floppy fish seem really happy and comfortable here? I don't know. <laughs> uh, thanks for helping us, Commander. So much for neutral mediation. Uh, recruiting the Omicon was your idea? It's not really recruiting. I know the Omicon take a dim view of the Flame Legion. And now they're back in the fold. The last thing I wanted was a rift between us. Flames changed. The Char have changed. I want them to see that. Okay. And again, depending on how much you buy the big story of the Civil War and stuff, and how suddenly we're talking about the Char have changed, will depend how much you buy a line like that. You know, it's funny, I keep talking about these stories are too big for the living world and stuff. I, I wonder, though... You know, I don't think that it's... I don't think ArenaNet have ever made a mistake... I would never encourage them to try and tell smaller stories. I think they think of these amazing badass stories that look awesome on bullet points. And then they just do their best to try and make it fit to Living World or make it fit to a single expansion. Hey, Commander, really hope you're not too busy right now. Something going on I should know about? Ephraim's still trying to save the rest of the Flame Legion in Fireheart Rise. He had this whole plan on how to approach them and bam, destroyers started crawling out of the old ritual sites. It's going to be hard to convince anyone to help. 
Old Guard Flame Legion aren't exactly on our Winter's Day card list. I say let them burn. It'd be ironic, but, you know, in a good way. Does Ephraim really think that they'll recognize him as Flame Imperator? That he can convince them? I think he does. Crazy bastard. Anyway, I called out for reinforcements, but I'm not holding my breath. I'll be there soon. Can't guarantee this will end well, though. So this is the last DRM, and again, the subject material here is pretty good, because of all the char stuff in the Icebridge Saga, I think this one was actually a good fit. Um, but yeah, I think Arena now have all these ideas for these big stories, and I wouldn't encourage them to make the story smaller necessarily, but maybe it's that ne more work needs to be done on making these things feel... each Living World episode feel big enough to tell the story. Like, the conversations with Bangar at the cage there were really good, and I really am thinking, if every Living World episode had that, more leaning on written dialogue and journals, less voice acting, so that the releases can just be weightier. Maybe it's doable, you know? Maybe it really is. I would hate to think, oh, they can only tell tiny-ass little stories, you know? So anyway, maybe having a big appetite is the right thing. Um... So far, Heart Rise, this is it. Last DRM. I don't know. Nothing else to say. Let's just play it. Bit with uh, Ephraim. Thanks for showing, Commander. So far, you're the only reinforcements we've got. Are you at all surprised? Nah, these Flame Legion made their own bed. geheron has gone, whole world's changed, but they haven't. Ephraim's trying to change minds. Fanatics can't change their minds because they don't change the subject. Same old crap over and over. There's me, guys. I'm the fanatic. I needed Ephraim all this time. <laughs> It's hard for me not to look at lines like that and feel a bit meta about them. <laughs> Alright, what do we got? Repair the flame turrets, kill 50 destroyers, and plant emblems. Wow, we did the emblems instantly. You know, those are, those uh, objectives do not seem particularly equal, do they? Well, I guess actually um, a lot of these are small destroyers, so it's not so bad. Again, this is a little bit like the owl mission. Fiery vibe with fiery creatures in it. These Char think they're destined to die in the flames they once controlled. Let's show them how wrong they are. I was talking a lot a while ago to you guys about like my uh, headcanon remake of the whole story. Like if you hindsighted the whole game, what would you do and when? You know, and all the changes I'd make, even back in the Primordus arc, back in the Ice Brood arc, every change I'd make, you know, a better way of doing the story. Um, and one of the big things I really would want to do is have Geheron come back because, as a ghost because of part three, where he literally does that and you stop the ritual. I just think he's such an interesting character. And I'd love to see them interact and see him get a bit more time. I'll grab the waypoint, why not? <laughs> Anyone else I'm gonna be up here? Weird that he's using an ice bow as a fire elemental. Well, ice is good against destroyers, and he's just an elementalist. He's flame legion, but it doesn't necessarily mean he only uses fire magic. I think that actually speaks to a difference about him. Also, his staff. He promised power, but left you weak. Now Primordius breaks you. Enemies falling back. Everyone push toward the flame citadel. It's like I especially like every mention about Geheron. Similarly to why I like it whenever Logan's mentioned or if his logic gets mentioned or something. Any storyline that should be a big part of the game and the world and never quite got the full thing, you know, kind of felt a bit cut short. If they ever find the time to talk about it again, I, I'm just over the moon. And Geheron's definitely like that for me. So just hearing 2020 voice acting with the word Geheron out loud is just brilliant. And, you know, I think there's an increasingly small community of Guild Wars fans who even really remember Geheron or, or know about him or whatever. But to me, it's just music to my ears. I, I, I love it so much. That's why Season 4 was so good. Every time I managed to talk about the novels, you know. I don't... We actually got reinforcements. The dwarves fight with us to rebury the destroyers. Take up their alchemical weapons and take back the bridge. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'll grab all cars I'll come request as soon if, if I can actually find a guy to speak to. Where are they? There he is, Delgemore Alchemist. I love what is he's carrying. It's like a bucket of water, but there you go. Thank you. If I remember rightly, this was the most OP ability, wasn't it? When they were on the original balance. I can't remember. Did they do something to balance it? But this was insanely strong. It was good against Destroys and Guildhalls 1 as well. Specifically set up that way. Still looks pretty good. 9k on a tick. 9.8k on that veteran. Holy shit. Have they set up another pot? Yeah, they have. Alcar's alchemical acid here as well in the defense area. This is really going to help. It looks like it's a defense where it's kill X amount to progress. So the faster you fight, the better. Which means they're having this like super weapon essentially. Oh, look at all the boons and things. Oh, you moved out. No, that's pretty rough. I'm going to go refresh while I still can. It got nerfed, but it's still pretty OP. Okay. What was the nerf? Does it, can anyone remember? This instance is called Flame versus Frost. Go back to season one, starting with this, saga ending with it. That's an interesting idea for sure. I bet though that they've been regretting calling season one Flame, Flame and Frost because it's perfect, right? If they hadn't called season one it, they would have called season five it, right? Well, if they, ha it, I, I don't know. They called it the Icebreak Saga because I think originally it was just going to be the Jono stuff. How do I have 30k HP as a thief? Uh, you get buffs in here. Morale boosts. Increases your attributes by like a certain percent. If you want to solo DRMs, play Celestial Gear. Because that morale boost will hit every single one of your stats. You'll just be a god. Like a complete fucking god. Celestial Gear is nuts here. And any build that excels Celestial, like Selly Firebrand, Selly Tempest, they're just insane. Uh, Selly, uh... Revenant as well is very good. So when I do my challenge CMs, I've been meaning to do it on Celestial. It's probably Sally Tempest. I can mix a different build in there though. I've had a loose idea of doing a stream on Twitch of that for a long time. But Final Fantasy, second present. And now End of Dragons is nearly out. Firebrand is king yet again. It's like such a weird thing that the community parrots now. They're so obsessed with Firebrand. Meanwhile, you look at the competitive settings. People dropped Firebrand ages ago and they're on Core Guard. But nobody wants to talk about that because there's no drama in the fact that a Core spec that you can get for free is actually the best. Also, I see so many insane comments online. People saying that they've never nerfed Firebrand. It's like, what are you talking about? Firebrand has experienced some insane nerfs since when it first came out. You look at its original, like, F3 autos, its original mantra effects and stuff, it's crazy how much Firebrand's been nerfed. I'm not denying it's also still insanely strong in a lot of places. But, like, just the hyperbole people come out with, they just talk absolute nonsense. Firebrand's never been nerfed. Or, like, the devs don't want to nerf it because they love Guardian. It's like, what are you talking about? Sorry, I'm getting myself riled up for no reason. <laughs> Those people aren't watching this video. <laughs> oh, almost fell. It's okay. Let's use Alcar's acid here. So, uh, of course, it's uh, um, Ryland here. In big mode. And we're going to fight him. We're going to cut straight back into that other bit. Oh, my God. Plasma plus alchemical acid. I'm in heaven. Where's the pot? Is it really far away again? He's not actually a destroyer, so I guess it doesn't really help too much. I, I, I guess it helps a lot against Bram. Jesus Christ, 18k. All right, here we go. Half health, and then... Bram, can you hear me? Do you under... Bram as the destroyer. He's a prick. He's not an enemy. 
says Bram, champion of Prime Orders. Aren't we just supposed to break his break bar? We're not supposed to kill him, are we? Are we just supposed to break his break bar? Oh, he's healing. I swear it's just a break bar that they want. There you go, I got the skull crack. So he's lost his sentience. I love that sign of Obey Your Alpha though as well. A little bit of wolf or whatever. It's really cool. That's a great line. I think that he should have been intro in the cutscene, by the way. It's a bit too understated here, surrounded by all the other visual noise and whatnot. This is a really big, big moment. And it feels a bit weird that, I, you know, he's even pulled out over there right now. Well, he's not quite... By the way, the ice portal here is really cool too. One thing I was hoping they would do here is, is destroy this bridge we're on, because it is actually a dynamic object. But, and it, it would have been a cool thing for DRMs to play with. Oh. Ram. Come on. And look how giant he's become. jumps off. Also using fists and stuff, maybe a bit of a will bender hint, maybe a little bit. Many of us were ready to die, but you saved us. You and your friends. Allies never came to our side before. They see a chance for the Flame Legion to join the rest of the world. You caught a glimpse of that world today. The question they're all asking is, can you cast aside your hatred? Grow beyond fighting Balefire's failed campaign. Many would rather die, but I'm not one of them. And there are others like me. It will take time. But we would rather join the new world than be swept away with the old. Imperator. <clears throat> Commander, when you fight the Twin Dragons, you can depend on the whole of the Flame Legion to be by your side. Seeing Bram like that... Are you two alright? No. Not really. What Bram did... What he's let himself become... Kid's a warrior. He's controlling the pure destruction and hunger of the raging flame. That's no small feat. We need him. Is he up to it? The leash he had those destroyers on was shaky. It was a leash, nonetheless. They came to his call and followed at his heels. He's running them like a wolf pack. And what's the cost? We can't let this go on. He's struggling. And he's suffering. Yeah, he is. For us. For all the right reasons, Commander. By Mortis's champion or not, there was heart in Bram's eyes. Haven't seen one speck of that in Ryland's. Then there's still hope for Bram. Because we said so. I, I've got to say, that's a really powerful image though, isn't it? I adore that that idea. That he, Just think, just decontextualize everything. Just picture this idea of Bram running a pack of destroyers like a wolf pack. It's very, very cool. Ritlock goes and has a look out here. I can't help but think about him fighting Logan when I see Ritlock in this situation, but there's no follow-up dialogue. He just crosses his arms and looks out at the fire, which is a nice detail. It'd be nice to speak to him and he says, last time I was here, blah, blah, blah. So much has changed. You know? Um, so Ephraim, the Flame Leech has a long road ahead. Can you get the outliers to fall in line? You can't undo generations of hate in a day. To many, Flame is still the Gold Legion. Unreliable, undependable. Some Flame will refuse to step forward. I have to accept that. And as Imperator, their punishment will fall to me. Gotta figure it'll be a lot more than some. Old thoughts die hard. What would you do? Dunno. But then, I wasn't dumb enough to become an Imperator. That's on you. It's quite nice as well. I, I, I didn't realize. But you've got... Uh, the previous mission was like... 
like half of the char characters, all, all the women basically, and then this half is kind of like the other side. Um, so this one here, take, thinking about moving back into the Citadel, I get a real vibe from champions that they're all, like they're just relentlessly out with the old, out with the old, out with the old, out with the old, out with the old. And it's kind of like an impression you get as well when you watch them bring Lazarus back and kill him off instantly. And it's an impression you get when you see them kill Pal Palawa in three episodes. Now the truth is I think a lot of the time it's not that they hate all the old. It's just they they're too big stories for too little screen time. They think Living World is better than it is, all that kind of stuff, I don't know. But anyway, this sense of out with the old has been really big with the char. And so what I, what my instinct is, is I hover over this option, think about taking by the Citadel. I kind of like how, and I did that he does move into the Citadel. Like in contrast with this message they're screaming throughout Champions, out with the old. It would be nice to embrace the old for a second. And think about like this environment, but under new management and sort of, like I just feel really ready for that. And that would be just a, such a great moment. But they're still screaming the message, because as soon as you click this... No. These are the lands of false gods, dead prophets, and ruinous ideologies. The new Flame Legion will grow elsewhere. We'll find a new home, one less tainted by a reputation we hope to shed. He says no. So it's still out with the old. And I remember, I think I actually live-streamed my blind experience here, and I was so devastated when he said that. I wanted him to move in here, and I thought it was so cool that ArenaNet let me ask about it, but they went the other way. And for what it's worth, they at least phrased that really well. I love the phrasing of that line. How cool is that? Where is it? These are the lands of false gods, dead prophets, and ruinous ideologies. But hey, uh, so there you go. So that's the final DRM. That's the next... Well, Aureen will probably talk to us for a second. And this is it. This is the end of the Icebreed Saga, the end of all story content in all of Guild Wars 2 Champion, coming up. The Arcane Counselor has arrived. They've reconsidered aligning with Jormag. They're willing to work with us. Come quickly. Make no mistake, Primordus' death is our priority. Our intention was never to contribute to the atrocity of the frozen we've all made mistakes we just can't make any more commander we have a plan or the beginnings of one first bram and the spirits of the wild did help even the odds fire and ice forces are clashing with increasing frequency the death toll is staggering it will only get worse there have been sightings of bram leading packs of destroyers uh, scary stuff see they know it's good they talk about it a second with time fire, with himself he got control, but... The longer Bram is connected to Primordis, the more integrated they become. Until there's nothing left. His sacrifice is a gamble. But what choice do we have? Timey, can we count on Primordis showing up? Research shows every location where the Frozen have appeared has a powerful ley line beneath it. Pinpoint where the ley lines intersect and lure the dragons there. We do that, bam! We force him to collide. Our models reveal force? that elder dragons aren't just attracted to ley lines. They're literally magically connected to them. Not a call or a scent, but as if it's actually pulling me toward it. A tether. I suspect it pulls both ways. How can we change the direction of magic? How do you change the shape of light? If Aurene uses her prismatic powers to divert the magic... I can tap into the ley line and cut Jormag and Primordis off from any magic not their own. And why exactly have we done this before? This is a final measure. There will be no second chances. Aurene, are you sure you want to... <sighs> Get involved? Bram walked willingly into fire. This is the least I can do. This just is so... Oh. The longer I sit out, the more loopholes Jormag finds. I still believe in the balance. Just... Maybe I can give the balance a push. Our plan might even increase Bram's chance of surviving the, um... Afterclash, let's call it. Then let's get to work. 
Man, I mean, it's just a mountain. This is like Lost Season 6, man. This is just a mountain of crap that they're just like, uh... You can see them. You can always see it's it's written so chaotically and panicking. You know, like there's there's nothing to this. What? Just grasp at any straw possible. Ley lines, the magical catch-all for everything. And Aureen just has this ability, and let's just do it because we say so. I mean, I, look, I'm, I won't linger on it too much. You can clearly see the story is too big for the time they have, so they have to just ass pull thing after thing after thing. And uh, remember that big plan of jaw mags and all the cunning and all the scheming and everything that was there what like three hours ago it's all gone now Jormag is just a completely manipulatable automaton that will just go where we want Jormag to do and and be what jo we want Jormag to be there is no great scheme or big plan or plot there is nothing it, that's it it's, this is it um, also why we don't utilize any of this against the deep sea dragons another question I don't know whether the prologue of end of dragons will really talk about so head to the battlefield oh do you know what really crushes me about this patch? This was a year ago. Give it another six months in the oven. I mean, really? Why did we rush this out so fast? Was the marionette that important? And then the armory and then just months of season the dragon. Why? Why? Troops are oh. on the field awaiting your orders, Commander. I'll take you there to say the word. Okay, let's chat with Gorik. Another day, another dragon. Right, Commander? Uh, sorry, we're all a little nervous right now. Just relax. Let's go over the plan again. Right, well, Jormag and Pri This is the coolest thing the franchise has ever tried to do. And look at the setup to it. Already look at the setup. This is not just a double Elder Dragon fight. This is a triple Elder Dragon fight. This is, this is the grand finale of Guild Wars 2 right here. If things were structured a bit differently. This is the grand finale. Jaw Mag and Primordis are each other's weaknesses, like anti-symbiotic organisms or polarized holomatrices. So we get them to clash and they'll destroy each other. That's the hope. How and, and look, we're not even talking about all the magic release and whether Aureen can contain it all. We haven't had a serious conversation about what it means her is a prism and can she contain all of that magic and stuff. That all gets shunted off hopefully into End of Dragons and the madness and stuff. And for God's sake, I hope End of Dragons can do all this. That's the plan. Lure both, but you know, End of Dragons is talking to us about all this other stuff. Lure both uh, to a leyline nexus. At least they pick Amble Rock. I mean, there's some cool poetry there. Then cut them off from their magic source. Then what? Imagine two immensely powerful magnets pulling each other towards each other, combined with a reactive Balthazay. It will trigger a feedback loop that hopefully destroys them both. What about collateral damage? What are the risks? If our math is wrong, we could end up permanently tipping the balance, destroying only one and leaving the other incredibly overpowered, but it's a necessary risk despite the magic word. I mean, just compare this to how beautifully and incredibly and logically all those little pieces and facets of the Krakatoric fight, you know, with the dredge technology and the harmonizing and the Zephyrites and the Awakens contributions and the Corsair bombs and the mountain and the flying sequence and Dragonfall and, the, and yes, there's a ley line involved there, but we go inside and all the exposition with the Torment. Think about how amazing all of that was with Krakatoric. We're in a double Elder Dragon fight now, and that 30 second conversation back there is, is how we've orchestrated this one. Here's Jarvi, who's totally become a side character suddenly. We're putting everything we can into this. Let's hope it's enough. With the Arcane Council's data, our tacticians have pinpointed a leyline nexus with increased dragon minion activity. We'll engage the minions to hopefully draw out the Elder Dragon champions. That will force the dragons to intervene. Exactly. Steelcatcher and Bran will bring their forces and will spring the trap. The uh, dragons will have no choice but to intervene or risk losing their respective champion. Then what? Then we'll have to force the dragons into direct conflict. Jormag will try to avoid it, but with Aureen manipulating the ley lines, she can give them a nudge, we hope. I do not envy... Well, I don't know. Let's just, let's just get into this. Let's, let's stop bitching. You want to do it 10, man? No, no, we'll just keep going with this. It's, it's fine. We don't need to do this 10, man. We're all familiar with what this feels like at large scale. Wait, where's the chart? Here he is. Uh, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Dragonstorm. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Private squad? If I click this, will it throw a party thing up? Yeah, well. So this is it. The end of the game. And again, I will not knock the artistry here. It's not all bad. It's pretty. Don't get the whole dragon. You get a hungry hippo, but it is good. 
there's no dragons. They didn't make things easy. Clear out the firebugs and make way for the prison. They also don't actually make any real mention of the dwarves or Anvil Rock or anything, but it is Anvil Rock. So, and and the law freaks will recognize that at least. So that that's that's one thing. And there's cool destroyer names. I did a tweet last year as well. You know, if you have your combat log up, you can actually see the names of the abilities of what the dragons do. Primordus uses this ability called Apocalypse Rain. And I have a tweet of me getting hit by Apocalypse Rain. And it does like 200 damage. <laughs> Fucking hell, the tuning, man. So, first objective, get the northern staging area. So that's Anvil Rock and it's exploded and the dragon's in there. Cleared, Keith. Bring him down. Which, this alone is a really cool story. The idea that Anvil Rock's exploded open and Primordus is there. Nice of you to clear out the trash for me, Commander. Did you? Oh, you look like you broke. I'll let Dormag Energy can't be good for you. You picked a weak dragon. You knew you could control. Coward. I'll show you real dragon power. I think we have to DPS slower. We're going to miss dialogue. Dormag has not yet joined him, Champion. You must draw them out. Let him leave. We can't get distracted. Let's go slower here. Let's not miss any dialogue. He'll be back. His pride won't let him stay away long. Wonder where he gets that from. In the meantime, fire alarm! Oh, Graham, are you yourself? <laughs> so, Bre By the way, Kate is here too. There's basically no conversation about the fact that she is here. We're here to kill Primordus. We are Primordus. By the way, these ground target telegraphs were bugged for a long time at the start of the patch. Made the fight a lot harder. Look at some of these cool details. Rage Fire Wolf. So Primordus corrupted Spirits of the Wild. It's really cool. Rage Fire. I like that. That's like some Warhammer shit there. Rage Fire units and stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's good. Fire. My god, look at what they're doing with the FOV. So I believe Jormag does have one line of dialogue. I can't remember what it is. Maybe someone in the live chat can point it out or in the YouTube comments. She acts like an automaton here. You get my champion will teach you to fear the frost, she said. Stayed my hand before, brother. No more. Today I obliterate the balance that chains us together. I've stayed my hand before, brother. No more. Today I obliterate the balance. I mean, this is your plan, John Mag. What happened? John Mag was so smart before, and so sneaky and careful, and scared of Primordus, and now just this. I'm telling you, you guys seem to think that Primordus is the bigger deal. At least Primordus doesn't have characterization issues, you know. But what they do here kind of just, dis like, really as shits on... As long as is connected to the power of a champion and the Frozen, they will keep Primordus cowed. Don't let up! We've got to bring both champions down! Kill Jormag. I will say, thank God this became a really big open-world event. Thank God this became a big open world event with good rewards. Save time. One is not enough. We've got to bring Rylan and Graham down together. So it all feels well utilized by the MMO. There you go. I think that was Apocalypse uh, Rain there. 
So that's like a big plus of this patch, at least. I want to see more varieties of... I want to see, like, Rage Fire better. I should put Rage Fire things in these uh, Destroyer name lists for Stellaris. So they can have, like, Rage Fire class cruisers, probably, or something. You know? Wow, why did I just hear a, um... What did I just hear? Did I get sent a mail? A Super Adventure Box mail? What was that? Alright, Bram's down. Violence down. I'm not really fighting, but I mean... Oh, it was a Super Adventure Raptor, I see. Use the prisms now. The champions are hanging on to dragons by a thread. Good UI here as well with the red and the blue. I gotta do this mechanic fast because everyone else is gonna do it before I can if I'm not careful. Wait, 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 wait. What do I do again? Oh, I think they did it already. Oh, guys, don't do it too fast. I want to get footage of the mechanics. Elder dragons. This might take a couple rounds. Stay strong. Because you fly through the air, don't you? And you land the thing on. This is a cool animation as well. It's hard to see. Because there's so much chaos there. But those two clashing like that is cool. I'll go to Rylan this time. Yeah, I get one more opportunity to show it. Oh wow, I dodged too early there, did I? Dodging like it's NA. Here, this 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 called Beam has a cool ability. There's an achievement to dodge that multiple times as well. I like the telegraph on it as well. Oh. Get the Tengu around. It's kind of cool to see more of these Jarvis helping. I feel it, champion. The connection's weak. Right. I'm gonna get on the launch pad. That's what it is. Little line from uh, Kate here. Oh no, no, it's not on the launch pad. It's next to it. There you go. This. This is cool, you know. Prismatic hyper beam. You punch the dragon in the head. So even though you don't get the full body, I, and the scale is a lot smaller suddenly, especially in the case of Primordus. I don't know, the thing is, some people have been playing Guild Wars 2 for years on the fantasy of big, proper Elder Dragon fights. And then they got one, finally, with Kraukatoric, and you'd hope that the back three dragons have it again, but... Oh man, I wonder what they do in End of Dragons with the Deep Sea Dragon. You can hyperbeam him as well. Thanks for that, guys. Oh, I didn't know that that's the animation. He's like a dog with a ball. That's quite funny. <laughs> and he breaks it and it explodes over everyone. Champion, help me! There's too much. There's power. It's so wild. Get to the prisms. So, Aureen's on the battlefield now. Hold on, Aureen. At the start of the season, they justified her being really small by saying she's everywhere or she's in the mists and this might just be an avatar kind of thing. But... In this fight, she just looks the same. But anyway, we can heat her up. And that's it. Like, literally, that's it. A lot of people didn't like this cutscene here, too. Because in the cutscene... It looks like Jormag wins this. Look at this, see? Jormag, like, beams down his mouth. But I think the lava, pay attention to the lava spewing out. I know a lot of people that were kind of annoyed with that. Primordus fans that were annoyed with that. It's done, champion. Oh. And there you go, that's... That's your story right there. 
get three more Prismantina ingots. Oh, inventory's just about made it. Hey, guys, don't worry, though. Our reward is a legendary amulet. Got to be pretty happy. Actually, our reward from the next instance is that. So we don't even get dialogue with the guys afterwards, you know. They have a good mix of NPCs. There's sort of every faction is represented. It would have been cool to see a Janundu worm back here somewhere. <laughs> and the idea that Aureen had to launch the worm <laughs> over with the wings and stuff. That would be pretty funny. All right, Brett Harrow Flight. I can't believe it. We beat them. We'll head back when you're ready. Okay, so here's the final bit. This is solo. Take me down there. We have to look for survivors. I do very much like that they... Well, I don't know how I feel about it, actually. But they choose the actual end to not be the Elder Dragon fight, but the more emotional payoff of this stuff with Kreisha and Ritlock and their son. Anyone seen Bram? <laughs> Haven't found Rylan yet either. <sighs> if this was the dragons contained. Um. Another like, equivalent, right? You can kind of think of this precise moment. The equivalent in season four is in the auditorium after, uh, you know, Aureen and co. save you from the giant triple attack with the Balthazar, the Morgimoth energy coming from Krakatoria and everything blows up and you stagger down the hall. That's kind of the equivalent now, but obviously it's a lot thinner on the ground. Yeah, and in the story journal, there is a talk about the, the magic maybe going south to Cantha. We'll do with that in a second. So here's Jarvi looking at the dead. But unlike Zephira crying and saying we were supposed to win and stuff, it's just it's empty. And this Bram. this There he is! This did not have to be this. This is this for End of Dragons. So when you're playing End of Dragons next week, I want you all to think very carefully about the price that it paid. Okay, so here's Bram. So the question is, does he die? Now the devs openly said on one of their streams that they knew the expectation is that he would. So, to go against that, they have him survive. I can't remember. Does he come across I'm... injured? Whoa. How am I not dead? <laughs> you did it, Bram. How many did we lose? A lot less than we would have if you hadn't done what you did. I'm good, Commander. I know I did what I had to do. Just need a second to remember myself. Are the spirits of the wild still with you? They kept me from falling off the edge. Wasn't easy. They're gonna need time to recover. You need time, Brem. To rest. To heal. You are the biggest hypocrite I've ever met, Commander. You know what? I, um... Violet! Give it up! Settle down! It's over! Stay with him. I'll go help Ritlock. You know what plays really well doing this in sequence? When this was actually coming out, um... Bram felt like he was a, d a, d a destroyer champion for ages. So then when he's alive and safe under the normal original release, it felt like a big slap in the face to me. However, playing it all in sequence like this, in this one video, we just smoothly go through it all. It feels like Bram was only in that mode for the shortest little time. And so therefore... I kind of don't mind that he's, he's fine and uninjured right now because it feels like it happened so quick. The law does talk about that all that time in between with him leading destroyers like a, a, a pack of wolves or whatever, but... I don't know, I buy it better now, doing it in sequence, because that gap's not there. I can immediately feel that. That's different. Bunch more bodies. I do appreciate how they litter the battlefield here. All this magic of like a light blue color deep sea dragon, I guess. It's time to face the Legion's justice, Ryland. You look like Skrit Cub. Jormag did a number on you. You're beat. Grimordus' champion is lying in the dirt. You don't have a chance. I mean, hell, this could have been a strike to tide us over for the start of End of Dragons, right? A Ryland strike? So I can't remember his mechanics. We'll see what we got. Is the music new and different here? I, I can't tell. Is it a unique theme for him? And there's very little. Vanguard, you were just a tool. Can't you see? 
They no made... one made me. I made myself, and I will never be unmade. I love his characterization. I saw you now. She got you. You warband sacrificed themselves for this? Man, the warband dying in a meta that you can miss really feels weird. That doesn't play well, does it? Wow, I was in that. Um, 25 might. Hey, Boon Rip would actually be good here. I'm not actually running uh, the trait to steal boots. Does he talk at 50%? No. You're destroying yourself, Cub. You can still come back. My sire speaks. Like I take the advice of a short sighted burnout who never had the steel to be imperative. For a dam who's content to live and die is nothing more than Vanguard's shadow. You're nothing to me. Less than nothing. It's great, isn't he? He's so. Oh, he's horrible. Irredeemable. And I, I really like that about him. Taking someone who looks imminently redeemable and then making him totally irredeemable is a great way to do a villain, right? For a big story. Oh my god, I'm eating so many of these. 25% dialogue, no? Dude, the second I'm weakening charge, I can't. I get animation locked and that's it. weakness so there's no phases it's just the same set the whole way the 25 might 25 volume is pretty huge though major exhaustion it can't end like this attacking depletes the defines bar. Enough. Sit down and shut up you had everything pedigree talent limitless potential you never understood you're right I don't I was never some golden cub Nobody gave me anything. I had to earn it. You're just jealous. I'm ashamed. Ashamed I bore you. Better to have bled you out and spared the world. Now that's some char shit. I love that, man. Dude, and I love how they do perform all that movement in engine. Boom, remember how he said he never considers Ritlock? And in the end, Ritlock kills him. I'm sorry. Nothing left to prove. I don't mind Ritlock's sentimentality there. I think it matches quite well with the earlier stuff. I think it's fine. He gave Ryland every chance to do the right thing. Sometimes there is no right thing. Let's give them time. There you have it. Oh my god. Reset. Oh my god, it's midnight. What? Dude, I started this stream at like 2 in the afternoon. How is it midnight already? What? This playthrough has been really fun, but time is flying, man. I looked at the clock last night. It was like half nine at night. Like, I finished yesterday's video. I, I, I went for like a bath. I got out and I was like, how is it half nine already? How is it midnight? And I'm not even done. Oh, my God, dude. So, anyway, yeah, I think it's a really, really great end. Really, And I, I'm, I'm totally into the emotion with this bit of it. I really am. Hey, we got a donation. Robert K. Thank you, man. Nine dollars. I really appreciate that, man. I tried to contain the desolation, but I could not stop it. None of us could. Kresha and Ritlock saved the best future for the Char today. The Legions will remember that. All their power. Two dragons. How are you feeling? I felt such a rush of wild magic. But then some of it seemed to just flow through me. There's still so much I don't know. Wait, you're saying some of it's missing? We, we have research, have research to, do. to do. Aha! 
Champion's End complete. Return to the Dragon Storm complete. So they, they didn't ask for any grind or anything on this. It's just basically play through the story. So a little hint there about the Deep Sea Dragon, about Cantha. In the, in the journal, I think it mentions that it's going south. And if you look, you see all this magic here? See, it's drifting off. The bubbles are going up and away. And by the way, bubbles, you melt ice, you get water. I don't know. The past few days were a blur. If not for the spirits and you, I'd be another body on the battlefield. Hey, and another donation. Ark Snow with 10 Canadian dollars. Dude, that's really nice of you. Thank you. You don't remember anything, Bram? Just glimpses. The spirits did all they could to shield me from being completely overtaken by Primordus. But what I remember, the things I did, I don't think I can ever forgive myself. No one should. The prophecy. Prophecies have a way of being right and wrong at the same time, I get. I guess it's how you interpret them. I don't know. Either way, this is Norn of Prophecy and gonna waste his second chance. Can I get a Kabram? I may be exhausted in a state of perpetual loathing right now, but that doesn't mean I can't muster up the energy to knock you on your ass, Commander. <laughs> Ow. You know, this is kind of funny, actually. I don't think he's Kabram since Season 1. I don't remember. In this playthrough, have I heard a Kabram from him? Here's Jarvi. Well, so much. And again, I love the idea of future Guild Wars story. Vigil oriented. Jarvi and Loranthe's adventures ruling the, the Vigil or whatever. What now for you? For me, picking up the pieces. Almora's loss hit everyone hard. And I love how much they're still talking about Almora. They're not forgetting that. They're giving it a lot of diligence. The Vigil is still figuring things out. Everyone's still reeling in shock, including me. This feels like meta commentary. I feel your pain. How are you holding up? I'm holding it together barely. Almora left some big shoes to fill. Whether this is permanent or just for now, I don't really know. Work really needs to get done, and now I'm d doing it, but I'm tired. Oh, man, I don't like to think of that as meta commentary. It seems really sad, that one. Uh, Commander, it's probably true, though. <laughs> Commander, these magic readings are spiking into the red zone. Our equipment can barely handle it, and and it can't be good. Whenever an Elder Dragon dies, the magic released wreaks havoc on the natural order, and we just cause two to die at once. This requires more analysis with timing. Yeah, I mean, what, what? they really don't handle this well. In Season 4, it's fucking chaos. Maybe they can explain it in End of Dragons that Steve has been collecting everything for us. I expect pie charts and graphs. And finally, Gorik. This event is impre- uh, Sorry, Gorik. It's timey. Gorik's nameplate, I think, was perfectly over timey there or something. So it looked like... I don't know what happened there. Maybe I just had a brain fart. This event is unprecedented. Never in my life did I expect this to happen, much less be a part of it. I have to document everything. Glad to see at least someone's enthused. <laughs> uh, how could I not be? Commander, our friends didn't give their lives for nothing. They brought us one step closer to fixing things. I have to be optimistic about that. Otherwise, I'd cry. Oh, I feel you, Timey. It's all meta commentary. You doing okay? Are any of us? Look, at Rilok over there, Kreisha, Jarvi. We've all been through a lot, but especially them. Their pain isn't going away anytime soon. I like how Brown doesn't even get a look in there. I'll be fine. I'm just tired at all, is all. Uh, how are things with Gorik? Amazing. I'm already formulating a schedule for our research. I anticipate we'll be spending a lot of time in the lab together, working, working on things. Oh, no, no, they're very, very romantic at this point. Okay, so... We're going to do that now. We're going to speak to Tommy and Gorik. So, their conversations, like the... Co That's it, by the way. There is nothing. There's no epilogue. Uh, maybe there's a slight conversation with Aureen. There's a message somewhere where someone tells you that Bangar is fine. I can't remember where you get that message. Some must fight. Someone around the Eye of the North says Bangar survived. He's defrosted. But you don't get to see him or talk to him. But you, well, you do know that he survived. And hopefully can be a character in the future. Is it this guy, Levias? Crystal Bloom is doing what we can. Where's Bangar? Yeah, it's him. He's been taken to a field hospital. When Jormag died, he collapsed in his cell. Thankfully, uh, we got to him in time. According to the medics, the release of dragon corruption was grisly. The moment. So if, if Bram's allowed to survive, Bangar can. Uh, is Kaith here? Lady Kaith is attending the Crystal Bloom's efforts elsewhere. No doubt she'll reconvene oh. here in due time. Of course, she's going to be major in Canthus, so keep her in your mind. Bangar's not in the cage. Aureen, does she speak to us? No, she doesn't seem to. Unless there's another way to trigger dialogue. Anyone in the live chat can help me out on that? And the other thing is, Timey and Gorik. Now, this is like conversations with Bangar, but instead of every two weeks, it's stretched out over the whole year. 
And basically, slowly, as people did these return twos, more and more conversations have unlocked. And that's what I've got now. So we're going to do them, and they're going to give me a legendary amulet. So let's do Gorik first, I guess. Commander, can you believe the nerve of some people? Someone broke into my lab at Radasum, made a huge mess. Huh, you think it was Flint again? I bet it was Flint again. Wait, you didn't tell me this. Because I didn't want you to worry. See, I of the North was the right choice for the lab. If I'd been working out of my lab, I could have been kidnapped. Or worse. Don't say that. That's horrible. I'm fine, Gorik. I know you'd protect me if anyone came after us here. Well, you and Orin. Anyway, Commander, thanks for the new data. Who do you think Kralkatorik was referring to as mother? Probably his mother. Do Elder Dragons have mothers? Orin does. Yeah, I've actually heard this dialogue before, by the way, and this is new. I, I just pressed F. They didn't give me a choice of conversations, so we have to listen to the new ones, it seems. Also, yeah, so in the instance, I could have spoken to Aureen. Did Aureen have any revelations for us? Yeah, guys, if you were watching the video, I just walked up and pressed F. I had no control over what conversation played. I'm well aware that it's not the first one. Uh, but people were just a second ago were going on about in the instance, I could have spoken to Aureen. She doesn't have anything amazing to say. Does she? Um, so what else we got? Now, if I press F again, I'll get the amulet, I'm sure. Unless they give me a choice. You did it, Commander! All your adventures from these past years. Quite a trip down memory lane. The deaths of Primordus and Jormag released an unprecedented amount of dragon magic into the ecosystem. And if there is another Elder Dragon... Which we don't know for sure. All right, but if there is, wherever he is... It must be pretty bad. The most popular theory is the water dragon somewhere in the depths of the unending ocean. Not exactly a narrow search range. It's a hypothesis with no empirical basis. It's clear to me that we need to... Ow. Tiny? I I'm fine. It'll pass. Oh, that's you cool. You need time off. We both need some. There's too much to do. We don't fully understand the ramifications of the dragon cycle yet. The other shoe can drop at any moment. We have to be ready. I know. Just don't... push yourself too hard. Oh, they're definitely focusing on our illness in the expect. This is new for me, by the way. This is totally new. I've never li I've never heard that before. So they, they, they re-emphasized her, her illness there, eh? All right, what else we got? Um, That's everything up to now, Commander. You've done all you can. Hold tight while we crunch the data. We can ask him about Blish. That was... yeah... I miss him a lot. I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. Blish always looked after me. He was my big brother. I... Yeah, I really miss him. Gorik? Well, I have more friends now. Blish would be proud of you. You think so? I hope so. See, I think Blish is in the expansion for sure. I think he's, a part he's gonna be a Jade bot. And they're reminding us of Blish here. Don't forget about Blish. You could also just say, well, this is here because it's an obvious character beat to have with Gorik because he's never really had much of an opportunity to reflect on all that stuff in Season 4. Give me an update on the Dragon Fallout. Can you be more specific? Did Primordus' minions survive? Many destroyers seem to have immediately gone out, for lack of a better word. Stronger specimens seem to have persisted for a moment, though. Fascinating. Resilient creatures they are. So some are still around. By the way, in the live chat, Cossage there, the Aurene dialogue we missed was this. Aurene says, out in the wild, I braced myself to absorb it all, but most of it went elsewhere. I didn't expect that. Foresight is unpredictable. I wish I'd known this ahead of time. Now we wait. This battle is done, champion, but our work isn't finished. Two Elder Dragons dying at once. I'm afraid Tyrael will be deeply affected in the coming days. Brace yourself and be ready to act for the big finale. Um, so there you go. That was the Aurene dialogue. There you go. We haven't missed it. I don't know when this, this playthrough became 100% every word of every sentence needs to be in it, but there it is. Uh, do you have all the equipment you need? And then some. The Arcane Council has been fulfilling all resource requests. No question asked. I'm not used to this level of resources, quite honestly. Do you think they're trying to make amends for helping Jormag? I believe that's a rhetorical question. However, to no one's surprise, Primordus' death has skyrocketed the Council's approval metrics. The help could be from guilt or just spreading the wealth. Yeah, man, uh, a proper epilogue where we get to spend time with the Dwarves and the Asura in a world with no Primordus. There's so much on the table here that I want to see. Uh, can you give me an update on the dragons? I've been thinking about another Elder Dragon, the remaining one. 
Understandable, its existence has been the leading hypothesis in my models. But how have we not seen any more of it by now? Zaitan's death, Krakatorix, why isn't it active? That's a fantastic question to ask. An end of dragon, dragons will answer. I love that they've asked this question. That's cool. Very captivating. Um, any update to the flow of magic from the dragon deaths? Directionally, it went south. The distance is unexpectedly far, so it will take longer to triangulate, but we're closer to know. So, ergo, the clue is... This magic, a lot of it went through Aurene. South, unending ocean is south. Canther, down that way. Keep up the good work. Um, and finally, we're low on dragons. Can Aurene handle the flow of magic alone? Also a really important question. Something we should have asked before Dragonstorm, but there you go. The Exalted believed Glint Scions, plural, uh, would shoulder the burden. But we only have Aurene now, but we're still here. Either she can handle it or something else is out there. Or time, our time, or time is limited. Beautiful. Again, our end of dragons has to talk about this too, because you can say, "Oh, Aurene's a prismatic dragon, so she can handle them on." But Glint knew what Aurene would be, and Glint herself thought you needed multiple scions. So anyway, uh, my thinking for end of dragons is Aurene will take in too much and start going mad. Also, with that line, why do they all go mad? She said a second ago. That's totally what it needs to be about. Nice lab, planning to expand. Well, we'd take up the whole place if we could, but we just can't command commandeer the place, can we? We'll bring in whatever we need to solve this. World hanging in the balance and all. So here's the other voice conversations. Oh. In order this time. Oh, hey, don't mind us, Commander. Just setting up a lab for important Elder Dragon research. Fate of the whole world depends on it. <laughs> no big deal. Is this really the best location? Well, if we're investigating the dragon cycle, we should be near a dragon, right? There aren't too many elder dragons left in the world, so Aurene's our only bet. <sighs> I guess you're right. But we could have a more robust laboratory at Radisum. You think there might be a third scion in Cantha? Like, because the Zephyrites visited Cantha back during Season 1? Yeah, I think there could be too. I mean, obviously you've got Albax and you've got all kinds of different salt sprays there. Maybe Kunavan can actually be a, a, a scion itself. They're shiny. They're, if they're doing the Scion route, then I think that they might do a thing where after End of Dragons, Living World Season 6 is the hunt for the final Scions or something. They might do that. I don't know where they'll leave the plot. It's very difficult to predict because there's so much for them to do. It's a lot like before Path of Fire came out. Path of Fire was this huge expansion with so much to talk about. Balthazar and Palawa and Kraukatoric. And it's like, where do they end it? They actually end it in a fairly close place. They, they end it just with Balthazar dead. All that other stuff's still on the table. I think End of Dragons is going to be similar in that there's so much about the setting and the people that live there and everything. Not to mention they've thrown all this new stuff about Jade Tech and stuff in the pile as well. That I, I, I think a lot of it will still be outstanding for Season 6. Even though the expansion itself is called End of Dragons. We can always use more data to isolate commonalities among the Elder Dragons. Find a pattern. You fought them for years, Commander. Inside your memories could be clues to the dragon cycle. Ooh, do we get to poke around in the Commander's head? I was thinking we could use the scrying pool to help the Commander relive the memories of these past years. Oh, that's ingenious, Gorik. Oh, well, thank you. I feel like ArenaNet could have filled this year with a bunch of memories of the past, slowly implementing Season 1 or something, but it's been pretty much dead for content all year. Like, literally, like I said in the last part, there is not a single patch in 1334. There's not a single one. It's come and gone. We're now in 1336. Um... So, by the way, guys, kick back. This is it. Once we're done with this list, that's the whole playlist is done. This is the last. This is the most recent lore. This is it. Ugh, Commander, thanks for all the help with the whole recollecting your memories thing. It's been illuminating. We've got lots more data than we'd have otherwise. I'm learning a lot about you before we met. <sighs> Scarlet affected so many lives across Tyria. Yeah, she did. Boy, don't meet your heroes, huh? Kate's also grown a lot since then, huh? But I guess we wouldn't have Aurene if she hadn't, you know, taken the egg. I notice Flunt didn't change at all. I know, right? He's the worst. Anyway, keep at it, Commander. I remember when this came out and I, I read this one before, or listened to this one before. It was really cool. Wait, weren't the first couple of the... No, they always had voice acting. Um, 
I love that moment where we just look back at Scarlet and how far away we've come. Like, I invite you guys, dear viewer, if, especially if you're someone who's just sat and watched this whole playlist. Think about, like, part two of the playlist where we were, like, in Blood Tide Coast in the personal story and how different this all feels, you know, and how far we've come. And I, it's not just a Guild Wars thing, by the way. I had the exact same feeling when I was playing Final Fantasy XIV. It starts in such a different way to where it ends, kind of thing. In terms of, like, just everything that's going on. Uh, was that four that we just listened to? I don't know. Doesn't really feel like my scene. We could use a break from staring at charts and papers, though. Think I could check a whole Stein and Norngrog? Their body mass is much greater. I think you'd die from liver failure. Me? Ah! It does feel a bit weird to be celebrating the bashing of dragons, figurative or otherwise. Primordus threatened the Asura for ages, and Jormag wreaked havoc on the Norn. I don't agree with it, but yeah, I understand why the festival exists. So this came out with Dragon Bash, which again could have been a really big, well-updated festival given after the craziness of a triple elder dragon fight and two going down. I can't believe I ever looked up to Scarlet. You can be a super genius without being a deranged terrorist, hello? Good thing you were all there to stop her. I was studying the fascinating Alonian Sand Moth back then. Oh yeah. I forgot you had that whole, uh, bug phase. It's not a phase. Entomology is a legitimate and important field of research. Yeah, so in the live chat as well, it's being pointed out. And this is another thing. Scarlet, Scarlet sent my Trin off to the mist to do something. And just because Scarlet died, Scarlet's plan might still be going, you know. Um, and they're reminding us of Blish here, and I'm saying, well, it might be because Blish has a bit of an influence in the next expansion. They're talking about the Deep Sea Dragon and all that stuff. They're also mentioning Scarlet, so there is a case that maybe Scarlet, the Mitrin Scarlet thing is a thing. And we will get, so and if they do that and they connect Season 1 so beautifully into um, End of Dragons, it really will feel like the whole story was very contiguous. Uh, and yeah, Cossage there is quoting Scarlet, some of the more ominous stuff. The poor, uh, from the short story, the forces that push us this way and the other can be redirected. They can be set against one another to the detriment of both, and now I know how. So she might have had a premonition in Snaff's machine of all of this. She says empires will fall. Con uh, think about it, we're going to the Dragon Empire, what might happen there? Continents will burn. You might consider that to be what we just played. And when the conflagration is over, I'll be there to put my stamp on whatever new world this one becomes. So the return of Scarlet at the end of End of Dragons. I don't know how that would play with certain players, but hey. Number six. You've been busy, Commander. Loads more data. Tons for me and Timey to sift through. Speaking of busy, I heard someone other than us has been looking into dragon research. Rada Novus, the Crucible of Eternity, the Derman Priory. Someone's snooping. This is Science good. Science is the universal exploration of knowledge and open to everyone, Timey. Yeah, well, I don't like it. It feels sneaky. We're holed up in a makeshift lab in the Eye of the North. Miles from civilization. This isn't makeshift. It's a very respectable, humble lab. Thank you very much. If this place is good enough for Orin, it's good enough for us. We're in the company of Snargle Goldclaw. I'm not mad about it. <sighs> I'm getting back to work, Commander. So the snooping is probably the Aether Blades. It's probably Anka, the uh, the Asura from there that we see in the trailer. Probably the opening act of End of Dragons is going to be all that. All right, number seven. That was, yeah. I oh, this is Blish. A lot. We just I heard didn't this. I have a lot of friends growing up. Blish always looked after me. He was my big brother. I. Yeah, I really miss him. Gorik. Well, I have more friends now. Blish would be proud of you. You think so? I hope so. That's a good point in the live chat. You'd love Blish to be back, but after the example of his short sensory deprivation in Amnoon, consider he's been sensory deprived all the time since then while in Krauk. He would have gone mad. We don't know whether he's sensory deprived in there. I mean, you're probably right, but it's a thought. Okay, and now eight and nine, we'll re-listen to these, and this is it. Commander, can you believe the nerve of some people? Someone broke into my lab and probably Anka. made a huge mess. Huh, you think it was Flint again? I bet it was blunt again. Wait, you didn't tell me this. Because I didn't want you to worry. See, I of the North was the right choice for the lab. If I'd been working out of my lab, I could have been kidnapped. Or worse. 
Don't say that. That's horrible. I'm fine, Gorik. I know you'd protect me if anyone came after us here. Well, you and Orin. Anyway, Commander, thanks for the new data. Who do you think Kralkatorik was referring to as mother? Probably his mother. Do Elder Dragons have mothers? Orin does. That, that sent it, that little exchange there at the end about the mother thing reads to me as ArenaNet thinking the community's crazy for caring about the mother thing. But I don't think it's that. I think it's that they're, I think they're playing with it. That's the obvious answer, right? We all know that that's the obvious, uninteresting answer. That you, and you could leave things there, but I don't think they will leave things there. I think End of Dragons is going to talk about it. Also, yeah, the lab getting smashed and broken. I guess that leads a potential opening act for End of Dragons. Of Timey being kidnapped at the beginning. Maybe they're properly looking for her. Also, I can't quite figure out what the Aetherblades want from her research and so on. Could him instantly link it into JTEC, maybe. There's a lot of stuff that's going on here. Alright, um, and then number nine. Commander, can you believe the nerve of some people? Oh. Someone broke well, there into you go. my lab at Radasu made a huge mess. Huh, you think it was Flint again? I bet it was blunt again. Wait, you didn't tell me this. Because I didn't want you to worry. See, I in the North was the right choice for the lab. If I'd been working out of my lab, I could have been kidnapped. Or worse. Don't say that. That's horrible. I'm fine, Gorik. I know you'd protect me if anyone came after us here. Well, you and Orin. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, this is going on really long, and there's the whole mother thing as well. Uh, so hold on. Well, what about the extra NPCs back here? So Koss is there, by the way, who I never managed to show off on the playlist. Koss is standing here, who we can talk to. But what about, um, the people around the table? I thought you guys said once it was the over, there was a bit more table, in, ta table dialogue. Is that only while the thing's active? Anyway, here's Koss. Does he say anything? Ah, hi! Surprised to see me. This is my first visit to the eye, you know. In fact, there's a statue here commemorating my deeds. It's true. We've traveled far. I fought many battles at the side of a great hero in those days. Unbelievably, their legend matched even mine, but I'll save that story for the drinking halls. So at least, at least Goss comes in from some of the Season 4 stuff. I walked past all of them? It's not Eric. It's not Kim's. So that's it. So look, we're, we're not we're not missing out. Okay, so uh, there you go, guys. No, they're not gone since I was logged. They were gone before I logged. I already checked. Oh wait, they were standing in a line when you were staring at the table, and then you logged out, and now they're gone. Really? I couldn't see them anywhere. Well, anyway, uh, obviously that stuff's on the wiki. This wasn't a 100% playthrough anyway. And I don't remember absolutely anything that they would say. So that's it, guys. That's the setup to End of Dragons. Final thing to do. You click the chest. And we get the Prismatic Champions Regalia. Wait. After completing Champion's End, the NPCs move to the middle of the path for extra dialogue. It's in the wiki under Champion's End page. We'll see. So look, we got big UI here. Your adventures before we met and our struggles together. This is the strength from our bond, my champion. Because you got to remember, this whole thing starts with the season two replay, which is right when the egg story kicks up. So basically, we watch as the adventure of an elder dragon Speak. being born and created. Items unlocked in your armory are available. Blah blah blah. So I now have two amulets on my account. Transcendence. And here's uh, Aurene's one. I can put the aura on. See, and we start to glow like Aurene. And we get the unsheath effect there. And I might use this a bit. I don't know. We also get a free precursor for a legendary weapon. An Aurene themed legendary weapon when it comes out. Uh, so we can have a look at that. Um, so, yeah. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Um... I will be back. I've got videos and things coming out. I will be here right up through the launch of, P um, of End of Dragons. Jesus, PF. And, uh, and after. I don't quite know what form that content will take just yet. Obviously, I've spent a great many hours here. I kind of like that this episode's nine hours long because... Wasn't, like, the first episode about nine hours? Somewhere around there or something? So, anyway, thank you, guys. I really, really appreciate those who have regularly watched here. Um, live, as has gone along, kept me company. 
It's much more fun to do it this way than it, you know, a, a classic LP where it's just me on my own. Um, and a lot of you have rounded out a lot of the anecdotes and added extra pieces of information, which has been really, really cool. A couple of donations as well has come in, uh, which has been really nice. So thank you all. Uh, please do remember, this is a normal YouTube video, so if you would normally like a video or dislike or anything like that, please do consider doing that. That way other, you know, the, the, the community might grow, more people might find it because of the algorithm and stuff. Um, and yeah, just thank you, to particularly to those who stay more than eight minutes at a time. If you manage to stay more than eight minutes, uh, thank you. <laughs> so that's it. I'm going to go have a bath. Man, how is it midnight? Cheers, guys. This playlist might leave it here forever, or the next time you see me on this playlist, it will be End of Dragons. And that will be your privilege watching this in the future, where you don't have to do the waiting. For me, I've got a week left. Cheers, everybody. Thanks very much. Oh, yeah, I'll look into the mug warmer. Thanks for being in the chat as well, Boots. It's good to see you, man. I need to message you on Discord. Oh, I got another donation there. Eshelman, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, hell of a journey. 13 videos for the entirety of Guild Wars 2. It's really interesting having done this after just finishing uh, the Final Fantasy run as well. Really interesting. So anyway, cheers, guys. I'm going for a bath at midnight. What way to finish the series? I know, man. I know, man. It's the life. What can I say? Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye. Seriously, longest outro ever. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.